Why? Let's go! This show fucking stinks. And the fact that you listen, we are very, very thankful for it. AJ, you never cease to amaze me with your toxicity, pal. You got a couple of these? God <laughs> damn it! <laughs> what the fuck are you doing? Fuck, fuck, and cut. Hello, beautiful people. Welcome to our humble abode, the Thunderdome, on the Super Bowl Overreaction Monday, February 13th, 2023. This show starts now. Oh. It's over. <laughs> the Super Bowl was played yesterday mm -hmm. in Phoenix, Arizona, In the Kansas City Chiefs are now the reigning, defending, right. undisputed Super Bowl champions of the world. Yet again, we are in the middle of a dynastic run that we need to respect and appreciate. We'll be diving into the ins and outs of the Super Bowl from yesterday, all three hours of today's show. We're also looking for you to get your phone calls in at 1-833-432-3663 or 1-833-4-DADO. Let's hear your overreactions. Let's hear your takes on not only just the Super Bowl, but the season as a whole. The Philadelphia Eagles looked fantastic oh, yesterday. Yeah. Thought they were going to win that game. Yeah. Jalen Hurts threw for over 300 yards, ran for two touchdowns, had a fumble recovery, had a fumble that got taken back to the crib, which isn't fantastic. But in the end, a 17-point fourth quarter by the greatest player in football, Patrick Mahomes and the Kansas City Chiefs, lead them to yet another Super Bowl. There was rumors that Andy Reid was maybe going to retire. He said, uh, I think I'm going to hang around. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think I'm going to hang around. Patrick Mahomes obviously doing his thing. Travis Kelsey was celebrating to the Rocky tune last night while the chain smoke we're playing for the Kansas City Chiefs after party. Now, there's a lot of question marks around the holding call with a Jeez. minute 50 something left in the game that basically decided that game for the Kansas City Chiefs. Harrison Buckner still had to make a kick. Bad ankle, missed one earlier, had to make the kick, but there was no answer from the Eagles because with that holding call became a first down. Now, was it a hold? I guess. Mm. I suppose. I yeah. guess this was a hold. I guess you could call this on every single fucking play. Bradbury came out and said, I gave a little bit of a tug. I hope they were going to let it ride. But in that moment, 35-35, fourth quarter of the Super Bowl, one minute, 48 right. seconds left. And Patrick saw him get a little handsy. Now, Patrick has obviously pointed at things that have not been called holds in the past. But Carl Sheffers and his crew basically deciding that game was something that none of us wanted, especially in this year where the third Third and nine, third and nine situation just took place in the AFC Championship game and basically won it for the Chiefs. And then the scripted in the NFL's rig what? and all that shit in the biggest game. 150 million people plus watching will get the data and the analytics this afternoon. Mm -hmm. The refs pretty much decide the game. Don't love that. Can't oh. have it. Don't love that at all. The Philadelphia Eagles had more yards, more first down. What? What? Uh, bigger time of possession. Right. Right. Basically, everything you could possibly want to have to dominate a game, they end up losing. I think Sirianni and the boys will be back. I honestly believe that this Eagles team with two first-round picks next year, yes, they have two first-round picks yeah. in this upcoming draft. Yeah. They have everybody on contract for a while. I think the Eagles are going to be back dancing, but the Kansas City Chiefs, it's not their fault that that holding call was made. Mm -hmm. That holding call was made. They made a kick. Patrick Mahomes is Patrick Mahomes and Kadarius Toney, this Dang. guy they trade for in the middle of the season because the New York Giants can't figure out how to get him on the fucking field. Yeah. Not only does he have a walk-in touchdown on a little waggle route out to the outside, but also a massive punt return. And if you listen to Sean Payton talk off-air whenever he joined joined us the other day, he said special teams advantages heavily in the Kansas City Chiefs' favor. Not just a little bit, heavily in the Kansas City Chiefs' favor. And in the fourth quarter, 10 minutes left, Sippos punts the ball to the right that I think was supposed to go to the left. Kadarius Tony does a nice juke, keeps his feet on that ice rink that was yeah. the grass field that had been made for two years, cuts it all the way back, has a wall, basically walks almost all the way into the end zone. They score a couple plays later. This was a turning point in the game, and that is a player that they traded for midseason. The Chiefs were very aggressive. They bring in Juju. They trade for this guy. They lose Tyreek. They continue to go off without a hitch. Hell of a year for that dude and Andy Reid and all the Kansas City Chiefs. Yeah. Can't have the call, obviously. Tough. There's people out there talking about how it's the right call. We want the refs to make the right call. Then we don't want them to make the right call. I understand it's not an easy job. That was the first defensive holding they called all game. Mm -hmm. We're going to assume that there was a potential 
touch of the waist of somebody throughout those four quarters last yeah, night. Oh, yeah. Except for in the moment that it had, couldn't be called. They call it. The refs decide the game. We hate that. Everybody hates that. But it was a hell of a season, and the Chiefs are the fucking dogs of the NFL yet again. What a run. What a year. And now we wait. Mm, now yeah. we deal with all uh -huh. the offseason. That's right. Now we deal with all the litigation. Lawsuits yeah, that are taking place. <laughs> now we deal with contract negotiations and trades and everything like that. But before we move on, let's dive into this game with the Toxic Table at Boston Connor, at Ty Schmidt, and one half of the hammer, Don Cowboys, Turn Diggs. I'll start with you, Ty Schmidt. Eagles won that game, I thought. I mean, it certainly felt that way. You know, just watching it, and as we were kind of sitting here, it was like, Jesus Christ, they can do no wrong. I mean, yeah, there was the, uh, the fumble return for a touchdown that kind of like – momentarily swayed things back in the Chiefs' direction in terms of momentum because it did really feel like the Eagles were just going to run away with it. But, I, did, I mean, I said this last week at Radio Row, and I still didn't listen to myself. It was like, you know, you kind of get enamored with how good the Eagles were. We all talked by position by position, with the exception of quarterback and tight end. The Eagles are the much better team. They just are. Mahomes is just the guy. I mean, when you need him, he shows up. It didn't – I mean – Basically, how everyone was saying the game was going to go, like it kind of went. It's like, hey, if the Eagles are going to win this game, they're going to have to play from ahead because if they're behind, like it's just not going to work that way. With the Chiefs, if they get down, it doesn't really matter because Mahomes can fucking will a team to victory. I mean, he's the only guy who who doesn't hit, you know, for the same game parlay, which is crazy. Ridiculous. They scored 38 points. Patrick Mahomes did not throw for 225. We had Travis Kelsey yards, hit. Travis Kelsey touchdown, mm -hmm. hit. What? Jalen Hurts pass yards, hit. Jalen Hurts touchdown, hit. Damn. The only thing that didn't hit was Patrick Mahomes, 225 pass yards, and that's surprising. But the big play that we haven't chatted about yet – him running. Yes, yes. exactly. He, had he picked what? up like 25 yards on mm -hmm. that one big time play yeah. in the fourth quarter that set them up for the hold call uh, situation that took place. And that was after he was agonizing yeah. in pain with the high ankle sprain right before halftime. And then he's skirting with 250 left, stumbling, fumbling, high knees, driving through a Philadelphia Eagles defense that I thought was maybe going to get a sack or two. Oh, yeah. Orlando Brown said zero fucking sacks. Mm -hmm. Put it on a fucking T-shirt. Yeah. The Orlando Brown comments, I think, reflected everything that the Kansas City Chiefs offensive line had heard for the last two weeks. Andy Reid and Biennemi were obviously feeding them. Oh, you guys can't handle yeah. Hassan Reddick, Joseph, right. Dominican Sue. Right. Right. These guys got 70 sacks in the entire season. Nobody can block them. Orlando Brown puts out a tweet, zero sacks. Put on a fucking T-shirt. Love everything about it. There was a couple times where Patrick was dancing around uh -huh. the pocket and could have got sacked. He ends up getting away. But what a game. What a performance. And that ref making that call is obviously going to be the big takeaway. But we were blessed and lucky yeah. to have that Super Bowl happen just yesterday. Great game. And uh, to your point about the Orlando Brown and the Eagles defense and number one defense in sack, Chiefs were number two defense in sacks. I think there was only one sack overall last night. And it could have been, which may be more egregious than that call late is that they were playing on a fucking ice skating rink last night two years 800 grand yikes they they flew that sod in from the sod father himself mm -hmm. that's right to get it prepared for this super bowl now do they do that for every super bowl i don't know why they feel obligated to do it for this particular super bowl joe pompliano not to be confused with Joe Naro. Right. True. Joe Pompliano reads the Doppler of business. Yeah, that's right. Tweets it. Well said. Uh, in. The NFL has spent two years preparing the grass for tonight's field at the Super Bowl. The grass was grown at a local sod farm in Phoenix. It was installed two weeks ago, and the field has been rolled out each morning for daily sunshine. Total cost eight hundred grand. Now, when I saw eight hundred grand, I was like, "Oh, cool! Every NFL team can do this." Thing. Yeah, right? sure. That's what I just learned. Simple. I Keep. just learned that every, every NFL team can do this. 800 grand? That's like one veteran contract that you will cut. Sure. No problem. Right. Guaranteeing no having to do it. And then being able to take the grass outside to take a walk. Uh, yeah, to take a walk and get some sunshine. That's been happening at University of Phoenix Stadium, State Farm Stadium, mm -hmm. everything like that since the beginning. It was terrible, though. So bad. 
It was grass field. Obviously, yep. everybody loves that. They had a grass field in there before they brought in this new sod. But why was it so bad, I wonder? Why was it the worst turf of all time? I saw a lot of people switching cleats. I believe Jalen Hurts went from green, uh, green Jays to black Jays. Mm -hmm. They put in some studs in there and got his cleats a little bit more heavy duty. But even the guys with the big cleats were slipping mm -hmm. all over yep. the place. That took away from the game a little bit. Now, granted, 38-35, 73 points scored. Offense was good. That wasn't what we were expecting at all from the field. You're right. Mm -hmm. But still had a pretty high-quality product of football. Yeah, it was unbelievable. And when you're talking about, you know, the field in general, people were talking about the paint. You know, oh, everyone's slipping on the paint. Well, if we're planning That's this. That's not true either. For, no. Yeah, it wasn't true. And also, why isn't the paint on, you know, weeks ago? So that's not even a conversation. Who knows? But also, when you look at both teams, like the Eagles kind of did what we thought the Chiefs were going to do. They spun the ball all over the yard. Yeah. Hertz had 300 pass yards. Had no idea that was going to happen. And then you look at the Chiefs, Pacheco mm -hmm. ran all over the Eagles. So it's kind of like the opposite sides for both of them. It was an unbelievable game tough to end that way though yeah, Pacheco they gave him the ball a lot he's yeah. a dog I love the fact that the and Andy Reid heard about what they were going to have to do and they only rushed for like 40 some yards in the AFC championship mm -hmm. game they came out first two plays run run yep. half they came out run mm -hmm. run we're going to have to go ahead and let this D-line maybe think that there's a chance or a threat of a run Pacheco was a dog in this dog. game yeah. he was drafted in the seventh round out of the Rutgers congratulations to Pacheco Dude. American dream he runs hard through the plate then he runs hard back to the huddle <laughs> mm -hmm. then he runs hard through the end zone he is just an absolute angry runner at all times. Did not expect him to get the rock as much as he did, which is why we thought the Patrick Mahomes 225 would be as easy as the, anything on that same game parlay last night. The Chiefs were impressive. They did things that we didn't think they were going to be able to do, like run the ball against this Eagles defense. They were able to protect Patrick Mahomes. They were able to obviously just we're in a dynasty. Yeah, yeah. exactly. It's we're unbelievable. In, we're in the middle of a dynasty. Mm -hmm. We thought what Tom Brady and Bill Belichick did wasn't going to be able to be repeated. And here we are, a guy who has started for five seasons. Now he's in his sixth year, didn't play his rookie year until the last game against the Denver Broncos when it was a mail-in game. They had already made the playoffs. Alex Smith was the quarterback. He was in the MVP conversation that year. When they decided to move on to Patrick Mahomes, we were all very confused because he didn't win a natty at Texas Tech. No, no, no. He didn't win a bunch. He was Patrick Mahomes. I understand he was talented, but we had no idea who he was. He started for five years. He's been to five AFC championship Sir, games. Nuts. Every time he plays... He gets the AFC Championship game at least. They've been to uh, three Super Bowls, have two Super Bowl wins. He has two Super Bowl MVP awards now. We didn't know if he was going to win it this year because he didn't throw for as many yards. Right. But he is Patrick Mahomes, so fucking give him a Super Bowl yeah. MVP. Absolutely. Let's continue to build this legacy. He has two NFL MVP awards, obviously, and 12-plus wins in every single season that he's ever started. Andy Reid deserves a lot of respect and credit. Eric Bieniemy deserves a lot of respect and credit. But Patrick Mahomes is just that dude. He yes. is just a different dude. He looks like he's running in slow motion while he's pulling away from people. He has the ability to make every single throw. Some of them are a little wobbly. Sometimes he's kind of skirting all over the place. His ankle was obviously fucked up, was in agonizing pain, mm -hmm. and he still makes plays. I love watching this dude play football. We're lucky to be in the Patrick Mahomes era right now, Connor. Yeah, and I can't believe when you look at like the Chiefs as a whole this season, too, how many teams have lost You know, mm -hmm. arguably their number one weapon with Tyreek Hill and then still just reload, come right back and win 14 games in the regular season, go on and win the Super Bowl. Like, the Chiefs will forever be good as long as Patrick Mahomes mm -hmm. is there, and we're seeing it now, and it's kind of cool looking at it, knowing, like, hey, this is the modern-day dynasty. This is something that will forever be remembered and possibly, again, we'll say, might not happen again, but maybe in 10 years after Mahomes wins, you know, three more Super Bowls, we might be looking at the Tom Brady, two what different you, Hall what, of Fame What would you say about the Buffalo Bills after realizing that the Kansas City Chiefs are the Kansas City Chiefs? Yeah, no, I was shocked because I forgot that, you know, the Bills who have won three Super Bowls in the past, you know, five years, it was crazy to, you know, look at the Chiefs and realize they also have actually won two, two Super Bowls in the last four years. You know, it, it's just, it's mind-boggling sometimes. But don't worry because now that this season's over, we have already crowned the Buffalo Beals as the 2023 NFL Super Bowl champion. So just get ready for that, too. 2023, 2024, there's already odds out on who's going to mm -hmm. win. We need to remember. Thank you. I was going to I was gonna say, like, because we did this a couple times this year and the year before, what? where it's like, hey, the Chiefs, you know, they're not covering. What's going on here? They're not beating the shit out of everybody. And then same deal, like, leading up in the playoffs this year, it's like, well, they didn't look great against the Jaguars. No. They didn't look great against the Bengals. Why are no. they? The Eagles are really fucking good. It's like, nope, the Chief, this is the Chiefs league, okay? 76% of the money 
was on the Philadelphia Eagles one one week ago today. Bingo. Seventy yeah. percent of the money on Thursday mm-hmm. before the Super Bowl was on the Philadelphia Eagles. The whole world had forgot that the Kansas City Chiefs were the Kansas City Chiefs. Now, I did not. Obviously, I picked the Kansas City Chiefs, yeah. as did A.J. Hawks. So we ended the year completely tied. But we both won out on our sword. Now, we like fucking the Kansas City Chiefs. Mm-hmm. Travis Kelsey said, ain't none y'all give us any respect before season started. If you do remember the AFC West, the Raiders were making a bunch of moves. Yeah, mm-hmm. The Raiders were spending money. They were going all in. Holy yep. shit. Mm-hmm. They got Devontae Adams. They got Jones. They make it, they're making trades. They got a new coach. They are going to be the team. All oh, the San Diego Chargers. Yeah. Now the Los Angeles Chargers, of course. They are going to go. Justin Herbert, yeah. another year. Brandon Staley, another Khalil year. Mack. Khalil Mack, they're going in on J.C. Jackson. The AFC Mm -hmm. West is murderer's row. Kansas City Chiefs are now just another team in the AFC West. And here we are, February 13th, one day after Super Bowl, and we're going, how dumb were we all? Mm -hmm. Let's go to the phones here on the 5 Energy phone line. Let's go to Jameis, Kansas City. Jameson, what's going on, pal? Great name. Hey, and the boys, how we doing? Keep Keep it moving. moving. Respect. Driving the RV home from Arizona, figured what better place to stop and dump 800 gallons of barbecue? What? 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 Whiskeys? What? What? Beers? What? That have turned into compost and shit and dump it on every expert and pundit who said the Broncos got Russ. Oh, I forgot about that. The Raiders got Devontae. The Chargers spent $200 million and have the best quarterback in the league. And the Chiefs lost Tyreek. They're dead. Jameson, it sounds like that's what a lot of Kansas City Chiefs fans were thinking what Travis Kelsey said last night. Oh, yeah. Because although we are in the middle of a dynasty, and Patrick Mahomes has been to five straight AFC mm-hmm. champions before the season, Jameson's right. We just, touched, we just touched on it. They were just another team in the AFC West. Yeah. Remember, let's ride. Oh, yeah. Of course. Do oh, you yeah. remember Let's oh, yeah. Ride? Mm-hmm. All in on it. Patrick Mahomes said last night in one of the interviews, I think it was on NFL Network with uh, Chris Rose, Emmanuel Sanders, and uh, Maurice jones Yeah, Maurice jones He said, yeah, I might have spent a couple more hours every single day in there whenever I was here and everybody talked about every other team. It's like, oh, this team's petty, too. Oh, yes. yeah. Very. Like, not only – just like Tom Brady and the boys up there in New England where mm-hmm. they heard everything that was said, this team also feels like they have to find chips on their shoulder. And before the season started, we gave them all that they possibly needed as people that speak into microphones in the sports world. Yeah, I mean, like, it, we were kind of saying it, too. It's like, hey, this is the one team where – like, they, you never should ever give them bulletin board material or, like, let them feel like the underdogs because they're not, and they never should be. But for whatever reason, as the playoffs kind of continued, it was like, you know, they, they really did kind of embody that, like, hey, nobody believes in us, which is just complete horseshit yeah. because they are head and shoulders the best team in the NFL. Let's go back to the 5 Energy Fund line. Here's Joe in Denver, Mile High. What's going on, Joe? What's up, fellas? Yep. Uh, I'm a uh, poor Broncos keep fan, it, but uh, buck them. Buck them. Buck them. Buck them. Buck them. Buck them. Buck them up. Yeah, I'm not salty the Chiefs won, but I uh, feel pretty robbed of an undisputed finish. We had two heavyweights throwing haymakers for most of the game. You got to let the players decide the outcome there. Joe, that's a good call there. And I think that was our big thing. And I saw TJ Lang, who we have a lot of respect for, mm-hmm. saying it was a hold. Brad Barry said it was a hold. But TJ Lang, who's an offensive lineman, also knows there's holds on every single play, yes. especially with that turf last mm-hmm. night. So the refs deciding the game, I think, is what we all have a problem with, just like they decided with the push out of Patrick Mahomes. Now, that was definitely a late hit on the quarterback. Right. Got them in the field goal position. Obviously, they go on to win. But the ref decided that game, also with the third nine. Last night, the ref took any chance of rebuttal from the Philadelphia Eagles, which they had been doing all year, in an overtime game yes. in yeah. the Super Bowl. They took it completely out with that holding call we just think that was fucked up like yeah. can't have it just can't have it i don't think that's something that we want in the nfl and i don't think the nfl wants that shit either no it just would have been awesome just just like he said to see the the eagles have a chance with a minute 40 or whatever left on the clock to go down and, and try to get a field goal or, or touchdown to win yeah like that would have just been a, a super bowl that was awesome and one of the better super bowls of all time just because of how exciting it was would have been that much better just in that situation For sure especially when you don't call a uh a holding a defensive holding call like that the entire game, which 
I mean, it happened to Juju earlier in the game, and it was yeah. more egregious yeah, than they Yeah, way more egregious. Yeah. And that's what Dorlovsky said today on GetUp, was like, look at these Ooh. two reactions. But that's why it's almost even more so you don't call it, because if they were calling the game the whole time, not being ticky-tack and letting them play, and then you decide not to swallow the whistle on the most important play of the game, it just made no sense. Yeah, and I, they show that replay. He definitely has them. But it's like that happens on every play, I think. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And if you didn't call it, Exactly. Call the game consistently, the entire game. That should not be the only conversation. Let's make sure this is not the only yeah, conversation. Yeah, yes. Right. That was Kirk Herbstreit's big takeaway whenever he put his tweet out last night. He was like, hey, I'm not normally a guy that likes to berate refs because it's a very difficult job, which we all agree it is. But that's going to be the only talking point now for that incredible football game that we watch. Yeah. And he's 100% right. There's a lot of people pissed off about that call. Now, do the Kansas City Chiefs defense get a stop? Against Philadelphia Eagles, they go out there. I think we all wanted to see it. Yeah, Yeah. That's something we all wanted to see. And could you imagine Sirianni on that last drive, what him and Spike Man are putting together, who's about to become the Indianapolis Colts head coach as of today, I guess, is what's going to take place. But I would have loved to see what Jalen did on that last drive. And that's the thing, is like with how well Jalen was playing, like it kind of had shades of the the divisional game last year between the Chiefs and the Bills. Like, granted, we it was stolen in a different way because it was overtime rules, but like Everyone accepts those because those were the rules at this point. Like, Jalen had played unbelievable, probably had played the best game of his life, and it's just like you knew it was so deflating because when that got called, there was in no way, shape, or form like, oh, they might get they might get the ball back with 30 seconds and still be able to do something and get into field goal range. It was, nope, they're going to get the ball back with you know six, six seconds. seconds left, on, and, and either he's going to throw it 80 yards and they're going to catch a touchdown in the end zone and this will be the craziest ending ever, or it's just like, nope, it's going to be exactly what we expected. He's gonna he's gonna throw it, you know, twenty yards short of the end zone, and that's the end of the game. Yeah, he slipped on that yeah. too. Yeah, exactly. Which yeah. Leads into this. Reddit was talking about the conspiracy theorist in me. This is from Reddit. This is from uh, Crimson Eagle One. The conspiracy theorist in me says the NFL is doing this on purpose, as there are currently a lot of coaches and players that want the league to mandate <laughs> every every stadium use natural grass. This is the league's way of building an excuse to never have to do that. What are the pros and cons? Says Advanced Dan, and real cool data to Penn State goes the pros. Played on the field. The cons sold the NFL this turf. Great line <laughs> uh-huh. by Real Cool Dad. Yep. Shout out RCD. He is cool, Good. Good. Out of Penn State there. We are. Penn State, we are. Lighting up Reddit there. <laughs> Absolutely incredible line. But that is something that people will think about because the grass turf was a massive conversation piece this year. So much of Bakhtiari and others led an entire revolt yeah. Yeah. because of the stats and analytics and how much players love that on their joints as opposed to this astroturf turf that is just sitting on top of concrete and just beating down their joints. Maybe the NFL said, oh, is that right? Yeah. Be careful what you wish for. Oh, okay. Exactly. Maybe. Why not? Why wouldn't that happen? I have no idea. I don't know if the NFL wants a shit product in front of 150 Probably million not. people, but certainly this is going to be brought up in the conversation of grass and turf for the next, what, 10 years probably. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Sure. And the grass, you know, thumpers did go back into their hole. They realized, okay, maybe there are some things that aren't great well, with the, oh, yeah, and there's the sod father. I mean, absolute dog. But next year we get to see what? The Matrix? This fucker needs to take a hike. He does. Mm. Hey, pal, why don't you retire? Okay? What happened? Just like Walt Anderson, everybody. Mm-hmm. What He's happened? an old guy. Sorry, father. He looks sweet. That's I mean, a great name. It sure. is. Good gimmick. And then whenever your product is bad. Bad. Yeah. Worse as possibly ever. How does grass even get like that? Uh, it's wet. It had to be some sort of slickness. There had to be some sort of moisture in it. And not we were out thi- there. Like not it. enough thickness. It wasn't. It was too thin. Too thin and slick. I don't, I don't know. They needed to get Bermuda grass out there. Obviously. Or blue grass right, out there. Kentucky blue. I mean, or, I mean, whichever grass they decided to go with, I like guess sod, which is its own thing. I don't know how that whole thing goes. It seemed like it was slick, though, because whenever the studs came in, I forget who put their studs in, but they zoomed in. They were in the middle of grass, no paint, and you saw two studs stick in. And thing that was like a wet grass yes. feel. Yep. And Arizona, obviously, very dry. I was going to say, do you think it's just from them overwatering it? Or because you'd assume if they're rolling it out every day to get the sun, even if you're watering it a shit ton, like 
that the sun soaking that up, and we were out there. There was no additional precipitation outside. It's of, very dry. It was super dry. Yeah, I mean, putting chapstick on every fucking fifteen <laughs> minutes, it was that dry. What was wrong with the uh, grass that they probably used all year long at Cardinals? Stadium? I don't know. Yeah, because everybody talks about how great that stadium is because the grass can go on a fucking walk yeah. to get the sun and come back in. Come on, the sod father wanted to make something special for him. Exactly. If the sod father is over, you know, watering his grass, he ain't the fucking sod father. I mean, that is a rookie move. What are we talking about? Yeah, can we not? understand the amount of water that is needed for this grass yeah. to perform perfectly what's this grass supposed to do oh host a football game okay it's not just supposed to look as green as possible yeah. for the optics and for the vision it's supposed to be a perfect yes uh, pitch yep yeah jake elliott fucking falls on his face mm-hmm. and still kicks a touchback mm-hmm. jalen hurts on the end zone on the last yeah. play he slips. He doesn't. I mean, there's a chance he gets it there. Who knows? Uh, that would have been a 70 yeah. yard ball, maybe. He squats 600 man. pounds. I mean, maybe, but he slips, and everybody goes, Jalen, what a terrible throw. It's like, dude, this guy just threw for 300 yards, had two touchdowns. Yeah. Now we're going to mock him for slipping his foot out from underneath him. Now, when it is slick, you got to keep your base tight. Yep. And I do believe he yep, overextended right. a little bit. If we're going to break down the nitty gritty and sure. start judging for things, mm-hmm. that seems like something he shouldn't have done, but the grass was. I mean, it was obviously a storyline. Yeah. Very quickly. Where that can't grass? happen. Cannot, Cannot happen let's, in the Super Bowl. Let's go to Jason in Pennsylvania on the 5 Energy phone line. What's going on, Jason in Pennsylvania? What's up, guys? Hey, Jay. What's going on, man? What do you Good want to talk about? Hey, I'm a diehard Eagles fan, right? I don't think the <laughs> Eagles are going to get back to the Super Bowl for probably, I'm going to say, five years. What why? Five Jason, years? why? You yeah, guys are shut up, ready to go. I think we're going we're gonna to get a lot of guys who are going to retire, I think, this year. Lane Johnson, I think uh, Kelsey, I think he's going to retire. Oh, I'll be surprised if Graham me. retires. I think we're gonna, a lot of guys are going to, uh, you know, flex their cocks. You know, I think a lot of guys are going to, you know, hang up their hats. Damn. I didn't even think about that. Because that was a conversation. A lot of vets who won a Super Bowl before they go out. Yep. Sure. After losing like that, mm-hmm. was that kind of does that spur another year of inspiration, another year of motivation? Yeah. Yeah. I think so for Jason Kelsey. Yeah, more for specifically, sure. especially after the year they had with the new Heights pod, how much fun he was probably having. Yep. Sure. I assume he would want to run that back another year. But whenever you talk about Brandon Graham, who I think has been alluded to that he's going to retire, yeah. Cox has been around a fucking long time. Mm-hmm. I'll be intrigued to see how that all pans but, out. But. I mean, those guys are dogs for sure, but I mean, you got a quarterback and you got a coach, so Bingo. you always got Bingo. a chance. And the NFC isn't exactly loaded, uh, so yeah. pretty good chance they make it back. Let's go to Joe in Brooklyn on the Five Energy phone line. What's going on, Joe? Hey, guys, what's going on? Can I get a what? What? All right, guys. Hey, my right, thing is uh, just a quick question. Yep, you think you find the fact that um, the halftime, the, the extended halftime, did it give uh, Patrick Mahomes that extra time he needed to get that um, ankle rested up and, and come out and be a dog? Great question, Joe. That long-ass halftime is something that's talked about every single year. I had an opportunity my rookie year, obviously, to play in the Super Bowl, kick off the Super Bowl, and at halftime I was bombing punts over the who, you know, trying to stay yep. loose. Oh, and they yeah. had a concert that went on for, I, I assume, the same amount of time. Great show. It was incredible. It, was, it wasn't bad. Yeah. I think it, I think it wasn't baby. bad. It was That's the fucking who, Last Bravo, night, Riley. Rihanna, pregnant, does the Super Bowl. Hey, congrats, Rihanna. And ASAP. Old Stat Rocky getting her pregnant yet again and mm-hmm. them deciding to continue to build their family. She's a billionaire. Hasn't performed in five years, did her thing. No guest appearances. Was surprising. None. Certainly surprising. I heard Jay-Z's in the building, works for the NFL, booked the halftime thing. Yep. Mm-hmm. Two, three songs, I was like, oh, this is Jay-Z's coming in mm-hmm. right now. Yeah, easy. Especially after Snoop. And Dre what? and Eminem, that whole yeah, Karen, crew. Kendrick, a lot of people. Yeah, but that was all L.A. You know, that was all West Coast kind of. Mm-hmm. And Eminem came in there, obviously. Yep. They did their thing. So I was like, oh, here's The Rock, obviously, is going to come and do their thing now. jay Z's is going to come. Not a single guest appearance other than Rihanna. And I know the ladies love that. Oh, yeah. More Riri, the better, or whatever. Right. A lot of dick flopping. Uh-huh. A lot, lot of humping. A lot of dick flopping in those white sweats <laughs> everywhere. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Saw a lot of penises just kind of yep. bouncing up and flopping down. Flopping up yeah. and down. Flopping. There was somebody up on top there. I think for 10 minutes, there was like two dudes on each one yep. of the floating things. Yep. They just, they were fucking the yeah, sky they were hip in rusty. Arizona for awesome. fucking uh, like seven minutes or so. Mm-hmm. So a lot of dick flopping around there. Rihanna has bangers. I think we have to remember that. For sure. That they were all heaters. But I was very surprised that there was no... Sir Paul was in the building. Yeah, yeah. Paul McCartney. That, that's what was so weird. Yeah. 
Yeah. Is, yeah. is immediately after she was done, they showed all the people who she's made songs with, like, they're just drinking it in as well. They're just yeah. hanging out. I was like, I don't think they should show them right now. Yeah. You know, because obviously there was reports that Jay-Z was in the building. He works for the NFL. He's obviously going to be at the Super Bowl. Uh, Paul McCartney was in the building. That was when we were like, oh. Here we okay. go. Here we go. So Simple. Paul's in there now because obviously Rihanna and he and, you know, a guy said something about Adolf Hitler was yeah, in there. Right. So serious. we didn't expect him to be a part of the no. conversation. Oh, Although right. a couple of his songs were played they were. Mm-hmm. at the halftime show that he's a massive part of. I think he made the beats for mm-hmm. and also... Nonetheless, no, no, that was surprising to me. It was. Especially because she was pregnant. So, like, she's pregnant, obviously. I got called an asshole whenever she came out, and I go, oh, she's pregnant. My wife goes, you cannot say that. Why? <laughs> well, because then you're basically saying, like, uh, uh, she's fat. Listen, I've had this happen. Okay? I didn't understand this. So we were playing uh, Flip Cup <laughs> mm-hmm. for three hours. This is one of my favorite stories. At a Pittsburgh <laughs> Pirates game <laughs> in the parking lot. Sure. We're having a good time, and we're the team I was on. We were on a run. We we're on a run. We had won like no shit, maybe forty straight games of flip cup. A lot of beers, mm-hmm. right, a lot of beers right. in the parking lot during the Pittsburgh Pirates game, and it was in that moment that I learned a lifelong lesson because the girl that was playing on my team mm-hmm. for forty straight games, mm-hmm. I thought we had gotten comfortable, and I was starting to conversation. Hell with her. of a player. She was a great player. She was a dog. This lady. Yep. Her boyfriend I had known, so I was trying to get to know the whole crew there. Sure. I don't know, 36, 37 games in. Uh-huh. I said, are you guys pregnant? You know. Sure. And we had just played Flip Cup with beer. <laughs> for three yeah. hours. For three and a half hours. She was not pregnant. Oh. Obviously, she had a beer gut. Right. Uh-huh. Because she plays she Flip Cup. a lot of Flip Cup, right? <laughs> she was great at it. Yeah. She was chucking full beer. She was doing the whole thing. And I was asked to leave the tailgate, sure. you know, because it was Come there. Come on. It was uncomfortable. It was about the sixth inning, <laughs> one into the Pirates game anyways. But that was like a moment of clarity. I'm like, you fucking idiot. She's been drinking beers with you. This is either worst future mom of all time, yep. or obviously she's not pregnant. You asshole. Felt terrible. So for the rest of my life, I will never do that. As soon as Rihanna, though, came in with the open, obvious, you know. Yeah, yeah. gut baby obvious, bump. Obvious Jesus. baby bump hanging. What? And I was like, oh, this lady's pregnant. My wife said, you can't say that. And I was, I immediately went back to the parking lot. I was like, oh, my God, I did it again. How did I forget that? That was the most uncomfortable position I've ever been in my entire life. Turns out she is pregnant. So yeah. the internet's yeah. saying that by her doing that was her Special announcing guest. she's pregnant. Yeah, whenever she was yeah. rubbing her stomach. Yeah. yeah. And then afterwards, I think she took a photo uh-huh. in the red onesie yep. with the thing with her hand on there. So her and her next child performed in the Super Bowl. That's fucking awesome. Pretty yeah. Cool. That's fucking awesome. That's yep. ridiculous. In, in your defense in that story, though, a lot of us built our grit. And who we are because our moms drank a lot of beer while we were pregnant in Pittsburgh. Okay, what? that's just how you fucking. Yeah, and this lady was from Philadelphia. She was not from Pittsburgh, okay. so yeah, even more I, so. I think that added into like maybe you yeah. know, never know. Maybe, but that is don't do that. We should not do that. Rihanna put us put us in a position last night, though. She did. Yeah. Very uncomfortable position in that particular uh, facet, but no guest appearances was. That was surprising. It to was. Me. Yeah, especially when she played the Hitler song by that guy. Dude. I figured all the lights to the here he comes. You know, well, they I, had I like they, were gonna... they had like the different points too, where like she we was all are. Over. Yeah, I said yeah. it. We yeah. are. They, like, yeah, I mean like Jay Z was coming. They had the stage Run this set up with the band. It was like, okay, like Jay Z's gonna pop out of nowhere. Yes. They're gonna shoot him out of a cannon and he's gonna land and it was just he never did. Now, ladies, Rihanna did great. Riri she did it. great, and she was pregnant, which makes it even more A lot more of people impressive. say she didn't sing any of it. I think you could clearly hear when she was singing. Yeah. So I guess what happens, I read into this a little bit. I got sent a tweet. I forget who did. Maybe Nick sent it into the group. I read into it. I dove into it a little bit. So I guess there's a rehearsal where they sing, where they actually, like, sing the thing, and then they run that particular track because it's in the stadium with oh, it as like sense. an assistant track. That's smart. And then they can sing over top if they choose to, or they can cut their mic completely. I believe Rihanna was singing over top mm. while the background track was going, because you could clearly hear a couple different times she was a little winded. Yep. And also there was clear sound being added when she was singing into it. There's been other performances. Red Hot Chili Peppers, all their instruments were unplugged. Yep. That's cool. why Flea was doing yeah. the fucking... Yeah. Yeah. Right. Flea was not even worried about a thing. He was just doing it all but they recorded that 
in the rehearsal beforehand for it's the same thing. Beyonce, I think she sang it, but there were some other aspects where she didn't. Maybe it was a national anthem like a couple weeks beforehand that she did. Or for Barack Obama, had her uh, President Obama had her come do something, and she lip sang mm -hmm. that, and then instead of this. So that's a whole conversation piece. I think Rihanna sang last night. Mm -hmm. I do think she had the assistance, though, of a backtrack, which seems like the smart move. makes mo sense. Yeah. Yeah. It seems like the smart move. The other good. interesting piece of that, Pat, was it said in that article that it's NFL policy for that to happen. I'm assuming because they don't want anything to go wrong in their massive halftime sure. show that everybody on the planet is watching. Yeah, the NFL yeah. is like, hey, 150 million. Okay, let's just get these songs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I, I mean, wonder if Roger Goodell was like, you going to have Hove come out? What do you think? Is Hove, <laughs> is Jay Hova? It's a good idea, Riri. Oh, he's not. Hove, Hove is not coming out? We got Sir Paul McCartney. He, Paul's do, here. do you want him to you fucking left-handed? Do the four or five mm -hmm. song? Mm -hmm. You know, Ree, if you do that, all the old whites will be pumped. I love like, it. Sir, yeah. Sir Paul McCartney. Cool. He's like, is this my have? Who's? Yeah. Oh, okay. You don't have to. Hey. You guys paying me? So no Hova? No Hova? Roger Goodell? And no Paul? Or? What about, what, no, definitely no Kanye, right? Yeah. Can't do him. <laughs> Drake's going to be there. What did Drake? Drake had a forty thousand dollar table. Yep, Taco Bell. Taco Bell. Taco Bell cash Crushed. out concert. Yep. What was that? Friday night. Uh, yes, I believe so. Because it was as we were going. It was to like the, adjacent to the airport we left out of. Where we when we were flying out, the Drake concert was happening. Actual pitching wedge. Yeah, for could sure. Have, could have probably just walked right in it from the FBO side mm -hmm. and in there. I guess that was a pretty good concert. People were saying, "How do we feel about Drake?" You know, yeah. love Drake. Used to be good. Yeah. Do you still? I'll say it. I love Drake. He was awesome. He carried music for a good 10, 15 years. Got to respect that. 10, 15. 10, 15 years. I agree. Yeah, been, I agree. He's yeah. been around for a while. He's yeah. got bangers. I, I just think we're so, we're, we're so used to this new Drake. Maybe it's just kind of. Yeah, I'm out on the new Drake. I'm, I'm cool with anyone saying I want that. the old Drake, the yeah. straight from the go Drake. Yeah, yeah. bingo. I think Carter, that happens to every maybe. artist. Carter though. 3 was 2010. Hey, how about whenever he just dropped a fucking mixtape and then had a world tour and signed yeah. to Young Money? Sorry mm -hmm. for the way. That was back in the day, dude. Yeah. And I don't condone if you're reading this. what he says at all or what he stands for, but Kanye had a lot of good songs Whoa. from 2010 to now. Not till now. His last three to albums. like 2015. Well, yeah, he, he had a decent one. Now, that little mountain one that came out seven months late. Trash. Which mountain? Bad. One? Trash. Oh, Real the bad. mask concert one where he wore that fucking mask and went around from stadium to stadium and performed? Huh. No, that wasn't the mountain one. That was after the mountain one. Oh. The, the mountain one with Kid Cudi, right? The mountain one was when we were we were at Sirius, I think. Yeah. Oh, yes, yes. I know what you're talking about now. There's a couple good ones on there. I don't think so. Ghost not, Town? not a single one of them are played by anybody ever, and I think that's how you judge it. I think that's how you judge it. Yeah. I enjoyed a couple of them, and this last album <laughs> had a couple of them. Rihanna, though. Yeah. Bangers. Yeah. She's a billionaire, too. I mean, yeah, she is. She can do whatever the hell yeah, she wants. Yeah, she doesn't mm -hmm. have to do it. Including having another child. Congrats to her and Stat Rocky. Let's go to Mike in South Carolina on the 5 Energy phone line. Mike, what's going on, pal? What's going on, Pat? Boys, happy overreaction Monday. Uh, look, there's been a lot of talk recently about Derek Carr being the Saints' new quarterback one, but let's be honest with each other. It doesn't matter who's under center in New Orleans next year. As long as Pete Carmichael's the offensive coordinator down in the bayou, the Saints are doomed to fucking stink. Okay, so Mike, Hell not yeah. a big fan of Carmichael's playing, <laughs> play calling. Uh, Derek Carr has opted out of going to the Saints. This is break news, uh, breaking news from Tom Pelissero. The Saints and Raiders had the framework of a trade in place for Derek Carr, but his contract, which would fully guarantee him $40.4 million as of 4 p.m. Eastern Tuesday, was an issue. Carr's no trade clause gave him power to veto any deal and effectively force his release. So they wanted him to take much less money, we assume. We thought there was a chance maybe they'll do cash over cap, which is what the Saints have exhibited over the last 10 years, I mm -hmm. think, to keep people on their roster. But then there was other reports that they were going to ask Derek Carr to take a pretty significant pay cut from that $40 million. Derek Carr says, why would I ever do that? Why would I not just want to become a free agent and hear what other people want as opposed to just the Saints? It appears that's going to be the case. $5 million dead cap hit is what's coming to the Raiders whenever they cut him before 4 o'clock tomorrow. And then Derek Carr is the bell of the ball mm -hmm. as a quarterback free agent. And allegedly, the Jets have already peeked into the Green Bay Packers to see if they can get Aaron Rodgers. We'll assume they'll call Derek Carr as well because they've said they would like a veteran 
quarterback. Yeah, and there are five teams right now that would probably take Derek Carr and think that they could go on a run. I mean, even in that division, like, it, I wouldn't rule out the Panthers and then also the Bucks. Like, yep. if the Bucks obviously, you know, they don't have a great draft pick, who knows if they're going to go with the quarterback after the Kyle Trask decision. But you know what scares me? Huh. When we start talking about these quarterbacks, hmm. if we're bringing in Spikeman, yep, yep, who had a hell of a year, sure, he did. great year, Colin plays. I don't think he's. I don't think he's on Aaron Rodgers. No, no, I don't think so either. Uh, definitely not. He's C.J. Stroud though. There, sure, that makes a exactly. difference. You know, with old Spikeman and the way he has had success with Jalen, I think Spikeman was calling plays last night. I believe he was. There was a lot of moments where old Shane Steichen was on the headset yes. talking a lot. So unless he was just kayfabe in that and just fake talking, I think Shane was potentially calling plays. As a Colts fan. Massive fan of that. Yeah. But I don't think the Colts are going to be in the veteran quarterback market if he is the guy, strictly with how that offense has succeeded, with a player that is not going to be available in free agency, only going to be available through the draft. I was, I was just thinking the good news is Matt Ryan fits that offense perfectly. Like, he could do everything Jalen Hurts does. It's, what's what's his deal? What? Yeah, he did great on CBS. He did. Great. Yeah, he did, but he, he's got so much game left. I mean, I don't know why you'd walk away now. Chris Ballard was able to move another contract with another quarterback. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. I got faith in the uh, Houston, Texas man who's building a new house to potentially be <laughs> on the move. But look for Derek. I'm excited to see where Derek Carr ends up at. Like, he, very excited oh, yeah. to Made see where sense. Derek Carr ends up at. I was going to say, because it seems like right now, I mean, like, really the only thing people are talking about is the uh, the Raiders, the Jets, and the Niners. But it seems like the Niners are kind of okay with either, like, the, a mixture of Trey Lance yeah. and Brock Purdy. The Jets are obviously still open. But what about, like, the Titans and even, you know, like, Carr's brother played in – uh, at, for in Houston, like, is there in in any world like could he maybe go down to Houston and then they draft a quarterback and they sit behind Derek Carr for a little bit? Like, I feel like there are more options than kind of we've been talking about because it gets whittled down to like the same three teams every time. So Houston, I believe, is bringing in Cliff Kingsbury for an interview for yeah. offense coordinator. Mm -hmm. He went to fuck it Thailand for yep. a while, said hurt. fuck it, got away from everything. Now he's back and he's in Texas again. He's a Texas boy, mm -hmm. so he's going to interview with the Houston Texans. That, alongside D'Amico Ryans, could be a hell of a tandem. Now, has Cliff had any success in the uh, offensive world in the NFL? No. Not really. I mean, they went to the playoffs that one year and got their asses beat, but not really. Because they're – he didn't have much success in college either. I love Cliff. <laughs> yeah, he's the man. I love Cliff Kingsbury. I'm a big fan. Him just – I don't know. I mean, the Colts have nobody. We have no offense coordinator. We have a defense coordinator that we're kind of holding against his own will. Yeah, it doesn't want right, to be right now, currently. I mean, it's an interesting situation. But I thought Cliff would take a year, maybe do the whole rounds thing, see some other stuff, take in some stuff like Doug Peterson did after he left Philadelphia and went down to Jacksonville. Him just getting right back in the game is fascinating to me. So he must be held in league circles in high regard, not his fault, quarterback fault, mm -hmm. much like Nathaniel Hackett was with Russell Wilson in Denver, and we should keep an eye on that. Do you think maybe him as an OC like could flourish a little bit where he doesn't have nearly as much on his plate he can kind of just focus on? But again, like that's what – I mean, I don't think – I mean, like you said, he's very well respected in league circles, and it's not like uh, the, the Texans couldn't be good, but if he goes down there and kind of like flames out and they suck over the next three years, like – Who's going to be knocking at his door to, to give him another opportunity for we a job? Would, we would love to have him here. In the football absolutely. world. Cliff, you just sit right here and look <laughs> yeah. cool and just let us know what you're thinking. We would absolutely love that. I thought he'd take a year off. Jumping right back in seems interesting, especially in Houston, but he's a football yeah. fuck, I guess. Yeah, he loves football. That's the way it is. Let's go to Spencer in Cincinnati. Big Dick Daddy from Cincinnati. Old Spencer Hattie. How you doing, pal? Hey, what's going on, Pat? Hey, how Shout you doing? AJ Hawk in the next hour. Hell yeah. Uh, I'm just a high fuck from Cincinnati. Uh, took me a couple weeks, you know, to get over the whole NFL being rigged thing. Thanks to you guys helping me out getting through that. Hey, we're but happy to be a part of your uh, recovery there. Happy to be a part of your recovery. What's going on? Lo and behold, Goodell uses the same script from last year with a holding on Logan Wilson. And then he's partying with Chris Jones on right on the field after the game. I saw that Chris Jones big hug for with Roger Goodell. Yep. I assume Roger Goodell would have hugged an Eagle fan too if they would have gave him, or an Eagle player if they would have given him a hug. Logan Wilson's penalty was bullshit. Yes, yep. changed that game, decided oh, yeah. that game. Yep. Uh, also third down. That play last night, that call last night, bullshit in our eyes. There's people that don't think it's a hold or or, or think it was a hold. Bradbury came out and said he held him. 
And Juju said, oh, yeah, I was definitely held. Now, Juju didn't react as if he no. thought he was going to get that call because, once again, third down, fourth quarter, two minutes left, Super Bowl, yeah. probably not going to get that call to decide a game. So Juju, who had a hell of a night. He mm -hmm. did. Free agent. Yep. Wins a Super Bowl, bets on himself one year. He said last night on NFL Network he wants to go back to Kansas City. Let's make that happen. Excited to see how that whole thing pans out. But, yeah, that, was, uh, that is not how we wanted the season to end. Not, Not at one, all. I mean, especially after come the AFC on, dude. It's the fourth quarter of the fucking Super Bowl. One fifty-four left. Can't call that, especially with that throw. I mean, come exactly. on. Yeah, I mean, if the ball comes down, they said before the throw. They, they well, were the flag came out after the throw hit the ground. Yeah, but Sheffer said, um, Sheffer said before the ball was thrown to get rid of the uncatchable yeah, right. conversation, oh, which is still bullshit because even if he doesn't hold him there, like Juju's not catching that ball. He's just not. Let's go to Dom in Canton, Ohio. Dom on a five energy phone line. What's going on, Dom? How you doing, boys? What you doing? Keep it moving. Yeah, yeah. nailed it close. <laughs> love yeah, it. Absolutely. What you doing? Keep it moving. Okay. Respect. Love it. <laughs> My bad. No, uh, don't worry no, about it. Say, this, this game was rigged from the start Whoa. for the Eagles. Okay. Juju was held on that crossing route, and Miles Sanders did, in fact, fumble that ball. Okay. Oh. So is he talking about the catch tackle? Yeah. Yes, yeah. the second defense. <laughs> Live, that I saw close. that. I saw that, that as a. I saw that as a catch fumble. He didn't have his feet down though, because he was jumping when he caught it. But he, I think he got that ball. Looked very comfortable with it. Ball spin stopped completely. Full possession in the hands. Bang bang tackle fumble. That's another Dick Bolton with another touchdown. Maybe winning MVP. Yeah. Oh, that see, was bang bang. They came out quick with the ruling, though. He oh, did yeah. not catch that. Mm -hmm. We do not want this to even be a discussion. Let's move along. That's one of those where <sighs> it's hard to watch in slow motion because in slow motion, it definitely looks like it. But live, I think it looked incomplete. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you watch in slow motion, I feel like he has possession, two steps. <sighs> Does he make so a football close. move? Like, if he's in the end zone, they call it a touchdown? Prob eh, probably not. I mean, I guess if by that know. logic, no. Yeah, this year, I mean, the catch is in the end zone. They're like with the Philadelphia, too. the Philadelphia Eagles fans are bitching about that not being a touchdown if he catches that in the end zone and then is hit like that. For yes. sure. It's close. But that's the type of bang bang thing that you can't expect them to get right in real time because of how fast it's all taking place. But that was something, I guess, that we kind of all forgot about from earlier in the game. True, but then also, like, I mean, they got it back because there was that, that catch later on where Devonta Adams, or I mean, uh, Devonta sure. Smith on the sideline absolutely caught that ball. They called it a catch on the field and then overturned it. Like, I think he, he came down in the red zone. Like, they're definitely probably scoring on that possession. That doesn't happen. So it kind of, like, early on, all the, all of that type of stuff kind of got canceled out. How about uh, Devontae Smith's catch? That's yeah. right. Yeah, like, that yeah. one was, on the he caught that. They called it a catch on the field and then overturned it. I think he clearly caught that. Yeah. Knee down. Ball touches ground, I guess, but there is not a single angle that we saw, unless they saw it, that it seemed like that Correct. bobbled or changed at all in his hands. And I think he did do the – this thing, just because I'm, I'm not sure he knew if his feet were down with possession. They were. This was an insane catch. Yeah. He, you see his ankle wrapped. He had a hip drop tackle earlier in the yeah, night. He, I thought he was he done did. for, yeah. kind of limped off the field. He gets back out there. It's the Super Bowl. I thought this was a catch. So there's a lot of things that happened last night that I think we could disagree on. And we just have to know that going forward, that football, mm -hmm. with how fast everything's happening, we're never going to be able to agree on anything, except for the fact that that definitely shouldn't have been called a hold in 146 left in a game. Yeah, night. absolutely. I think, yeah, well, everyone doesn't agree on that. But how, how many people would have been – pissed off if they don't call that and that game goes into overtime. Like everyone Nobody. would have loved that. Mm -hmm. Nobody would have been upset. Yeah. Yeah. Including Juju. Right. Patrick Mahomes pointed because Patrick yeah. Mahomes ultra competitive person mm -hmm. and oh, oh we could get it if they don't call it Patrick oh, and then walks off the field, sees the replay and they all go, all right. Mm -hmm. Close there for the fucking Super Bowl. But they call it and now we have to talk about it. Yep. That's the NFL it's thing. Yeah. It's ridiculous. Let's go to Joe in Philly. Joe, what's going on, pal? What's up, boys? How you guys doing? Keep them moving. I, just, I know it's overreaction Monday, but this is not an overreaction. I'm a big Chiefs fan. I was in Philly last night, and all these fans are bitch-made. 
No one said nothing, mm. and they all took the L. That's all I have to say, boys. Thank all you. right, Joe. Joe's walking around as a Philly Jeez. fuck in Philly as a Chiefs fan. Keep your head taking on the it all in. Yeah. Who uh, Sheed? Rasheed Wallace? Yes. Yeah. He said he's going to have a Kansas City Chiefs parade in Philadelphia. Oh, really? That's right. Yeah, yep. he said he was going to do that maybe today. He, he wasn't 100% sure. Uh, I will say that I think that's a bad decision because mm -hmm. we've seen some videos out of Philadelphia, and it might not be the Eagles fans that are bad about it in Joe's eyes, but there are people in those streets of Philadelphia that are about it, about it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and be I don't careful. know I don't know if we should be celebrating another city in there, but she could do whatever the hell he wants to do. Let's take another phone call here. This is from uh, Natalie in Indiana. What's going on, Natalie? Hey, what's up, guys? Hey, Natalie, thanks for calling. How are you? Pretty good. Um, I just want to say RIP to um, Jimmy, AJ, Haw AJ Hawks, uh, Alligator. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, last night was, I had fun watching the Super Bowl. It was the first Super Bowl that I actually sat down and watched. Oh. Um, and this is the first year because of you guys that I got into football. Natalie, oh, yeah. we appreciate right. that. I hope you enjoyed the hell out of it. Sorry it ended the way it ended, but it was a great game, don't you think, Natalie? Oh, yeah, no, it was uh, very intense. Um, I'm still kind of iffy about that call. I mean, the holding call. Yeah. Okay, Natalie's on yeah, our side, it sounds it. like. All right, she thank knows. you, Natalie. Appreciate that. How about Natalie, first Super Bowl? Good oh, let's go. Start on. How about it? 38-35. This first time a team has scored 35 points and lost the Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. That is a stat that came out. Philadelphia Eagles are going to have to sit on this all offseason. I don't like hearing people talk about them not making it back. Oh, Joe and Philly said, these, these bunch of bitch-made cats, these, yeah. uh, these fans out here. I feel like, I feel like we're going to see Philly in the Super Bowl within the next two years again. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I mean, I said it earlier, like the Niners, uh, they have equally as good as a roster probably, but – I think Hertz is better than any quarterback that's on the Niners roster. And then who's who else is in the NFC? Yeah, it's wide open. Green Bay, maybe we'll TBD. See. Minnesota. I may. I mean, got to stop somebody. Minnesota. Your Kirk Cousins. Uh, Kirk Cousins is awesome. Uh, Eagles, DC. Jonathan. Gannon. Gannon. We'll interview today for the Cardinals head coach job while Eagles OC Shane Steichen. Shane Steichen is going to Indianapolis to finalize his head coach deal with the Colts. Eagles are losing at least one, maybe both coordinators. Still have Sirianni on the offensive side. Yep. In defensive coaches, I feel like are in abundance right now. Yeah. Not that that is a knock on any uh, defense coordinator, but it feels like there's a lot of D coordinators right now that have been on the move. Vic Fangio, who helped the Philadelphia Eagles, he just signs with the Dolphins. Rex Ryan is getting an interview with the Denver Hell Broncos, yeah. and as somebody that has talked to Rex Ryan both on air and off air about him returning to coaching, I think the only thing he's ever talked about is like uh, a check for coordinators. I don't know if the time is worth the money. Broncos exactly doesn't matter. The Broncos mm -hmm. have the richest owner in the NFL. Obviously, Sean Payton's getting sixteen to twenty million. Has not been discussed the exacts of it. We will find out because Bill Belichick has a clause in his mm -hmm. contract that when a coach signs a new deal, he gets one million more dollars because he's also the general manager for the ball mm -hmm. club. So we'll find out what Sean Payton's deal is worth via Bill Belichick's next deal if the Broncos don't announce what Sean Payton's making. But they can certainly pay Rex Ryan. Could you imagine Sean Payton? and Rex Ryan yeah. running that team over there, the Denver Broncos would be must-see TV even if their team fucking stinks on offense like they did last year. Yeah, and pending the money, we'll see. But even that defense, the defense is unbelievable too. So he's walking into a great situation. And the Belichick deal, I believe, is at 21 right now. So we'll see what happens. Oh, so Payton. maybe not. Sean Payton not even getting more than Belichick. Okay. Oh. Hey, what's going on uh, there? Sean knows football. He told us off air. Special teams, Kansas City Chiefs, yep. heavy favorite over the Philadelphia Eagles. Then whenever the Chiefs are making that return, all I can think of about is like Sean Payton actually told us yeah. when the Chiefs make a massive special teams play, I want you to say that fucker knows what he's talking about. Mm -hmm. He told us that off stage yeah. as he was leaving. So as Kadarius Tony is doing that run, I'm thinking to myself, Sean Payton, a fucker knows that what fucker he's, really knows knows what he's talking, talking about. about. It was a huge return, and let's talk about this. Let's break this down. I think we have the all 22 loaded onto the Piero, and I don't like doing this to punters, but I do believe. This is like one of the most important punts in the history of football. Yes. Yeah. So we should talk about it. If you watch both gunners, okay, they're both releasing obviously this way, right? That guy clearly mm -hmm. going inside and that. Now, is he just trying? And obviously, they're, look, they're based on his outside too. So the smart release, if this was just an any go, any two way go for the returner or for the gunner, would have been this way because he already has an angle 
on this fucking guy yeah. right out here. Plus, if this guy is to push him at all, he'd be able to utilize the sideline to get down the field. Mm -hmm. So the fact that he fights through this inside leverage uh, corner to go this way, and this guy releases this way, obviously with this guy like that, you're going to do that anyways, makes me feel as if they thought this ball was either going middle left. Okay? So let's watch the punt. PP is a free release because they have, uh, if you start counting people here, that's a six-man or five-man box or five-man rush. Sippos could have taken his time. There's no real block coming. Ever setting up for a turn clearly. Uh, this guy has eyes on the punter to make sure he punts it, so he's going to be late down the field. This is clearly a return setup. Um, and if you look at the PP, he's running this way as well. Mm. So everybody is heading this direction. Feels as if this ball was supposed to go left. Just feels as if the ball goes left. It goes short right. And really, the only people that know are the people that are laid off, which is the wing, and then the tackle who are supposed to get there with was a little lane integrity on this half of the field. That is their job, their responsibility. They are not going to the ball. They are keeping their lane integrity as if they're a kickoff. So they know it's going that way, and these dudes are all stopping and heading back now because the returner is going that way. So I think this was a miss by Sippas, pretty bad. It obviously was short and low liner. Kadarius Tony said uh, on SVP last night, I saw him shanking. I said, oh, shit, I'm going to get a chance to return this and then as i was running and i saw the wall i go oh fuck i almost scored a touchdown it's pretty much what <laughs> yeah. Kadarius tony said as looking awesome and what because everybody was going this way this way this way and the ball goes this way the kansas city chiefs um return team is able to get incredible leverage uh -huh. on everybody as the eagles are all huffing back this way they almost makes their block for them so this is just coverage team and a punter being in the same page. Obviously, Sippos did not mean to hit the ball to the opposite direction, and he inevitably is the one that ends up making the tackle. If you watch him, he makes the tackle. He knows he fucked up. Mm -hmm. That is something that I would do as well. You get very upset. But all signs are pointing to this ball going this way. In my eyes... Yeah, and that guy yeah. gets as Snapper as going this way as well. Uh -huh. Snapper goes to ball. PP goes to ball. Gunners go to ball. So that is the way you can read where the ball is supposed to go. All these other positions are supposed to have lanes. So you, lo you look at the long snapper. He did not think that ball was supposed to go. Mm -hmm. Let's just watch the long snapper here. Lovato, I believe, unless it's a new long snapper. I'm not sure. Obviously, that's the long snapper. Watch him. Yep. Oh, yeah. Going to his left. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And then he, once he makes eyes on the returner, he goes, whoa, 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 where the fuck is he? <laughs> he's over here. You can actually see him going, whoa, 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 he's over. So is that gunner. Oh, shit. Yeah. Oh, shit. Canaris Tony, if he gets, I mean, that'd be very difficult, obviously, with where those guys are. But, yeah, I mean, you got everybody just setting up the wall for the Chiefs. Yeah, and that guy on the right for the Eagles, is he supposed to be like the outside contain? This and guy? He, yeah, way up there because he breaks out yeah, the widest. Yeah, he's supposed to – they're supposed to stay over here, yeah. right, at least on this side of the hash. Because he's damn near the sideline when the ball – is when he right after it's kicked. Oh, my God. Just nightmare yeah. of a punt rep. Remember, they did sit and bench Brett Kern – who's a punter, longtime punter for the Titans, all pro, pro bowler. Wasn't having his best year with the Eagles and fill in for this guy. They bench him, bring back Sippos. That punt becomes a massive part of the story, mm -hmm. and I believe it went the wrong direction. Well, that's, not sure. that's kind of what we've been talking about, too, with like in, the, in years past with guys like Tommy Townsend and some of these other punters who aren't really required to punt very often because their offense is so good, but when they do need to punt, matters. they have to hit a good one. And it's kind of been the same deal with the Eagles. Like Their offense has been so dominant this year. They've scored so many points. They really haven't been in very many positions where it's like, hey, we need you to fucking hit a great punt here. So just, just like we say about a quarterback, how at some point he's going to have to make a throw. Yep. At some point, there's going to be a third and 11, third and 12. There's going to be a throw that's going to have to be made by a quarterback if you want to win the big games. So they can disguise it and everything like that, but there's going to come a time when it matters that the quarterback's going to have to make a play with his arm. It's kind of the same thing with a punter. Like, yeah. There's going to come a time mm -hmm. where you're going to have to fucking hit a ball. Even if you don't punt, we almost – 
there's a couple. There, there's one season where if we would have played three more quarters, I think we would have had most punts in NFL history. Then obviously when Peyton and that offense is going, I'm near the Wait, bottom yeah. third of how many punts per year. But if you go back and watch, there's a couple fourth quarter up to yeah. Got minute add. 20 left. Like, hey, uh, you haven't punted since the first quarter. <laughs> it's been three hours literally since the last time you've been on this field uh, doing something. Fucking need a good hey, need a good one. And it's like that's when you know Aaron didn't hit his best. Tommy Townsend, his rookie year, whenever he was in the Super Bowl yes. for the Chiefs, he hit a bad one yeah. as well. Yep. Obviously, a lot of eyes and everything like that. I think Aaron will come back, the punter for the Eagles, and be great and do very well. But that is a big miss at a big time. And hopefully this will drive him to become even better, like it did to Tommy Townsend, who's now all pro, obviously. And you mentioned with Kearney and have his greatest year, but do you think having a you know more veteran guy who was at least getting reps in before was almost a smarter move to go with maybe i personally would put brett kern in over anybody majority yeah uh aj cole of the raiders Mm -hmm. murders footballs johnny hecker still johnny hecker i think his net was like number one in the league Tommy Tons, and I like him. He had a couple of misses last night as well. I wonder if there's a little bit of a breeze in there because it was wow. windy as fuck. Yeah. Slick and they had the roof too, open, and it was slick, so you're scared to kind of take a plan. Tommy did not have his best night hitting a ball, but I would still pick Tommy over him. You think Kern is definitely in there if he doesn't hit that Fox Skycam <laughs> cable? That's what, that, 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 there's Tension. a chance. But also, he was hitting a lot of lower ball. He was hitting a lot of low rockets. I, I don't Which, for Tony, that's like... That's exactly what he's looking yeah, for. Yeah, but Brett's going to hit that thing 70 outside the numbers. Spot. He's going to hit that thing outside oh. the numbers to the left. You yeah. know what I mean? That's what, what Brett Kern does. Sure. Brett Kern is a jugs machine. Mm-hmm. And also, the way Aaron punted that ball, it's like the safest way to punt it. Obviously, he's an Aussie, and we know how Aussies feel about American punters. I have respect for the Aussie punter stuff for that one fuck, whatever I From forget. Kentucky. It. Yeah, but yeah. The, um, it, he hit this ball very controllable. Like, the reason why everybody hits this ball is because your sweet spot gets bigger. It's, like, easier to control. He hit that thing, and I thought he was clearly trying to pull it. And just I didn't even know a ball could do that. I had no idea that you could hit an end-over-end ball, swing through it to the left, and it goes short to the right. I assume that was a surprise to Aaron as well as he was watching it go through here. What the f- – how does that even <laughs> yeah. fucking happen? I don't know. It turned out to be a big play. Let's get to a break. Hour two will be on the other side with A.J. Hawk. Excited to hear his takes. He was not with us last night no. for our watch-along. We enjoyed the hell out of that football game. Yeah, it was awesome. Unbelievable. Honestly. Got a little tight there third, fourth quarter. Oh, yeah. It did. Mm-hmm. I got a little tired, too. I think it was a long... Oh, yeah. It was a long week. I mean, there were some of those second-half drives, too. I mean, what was it? The 17th play? Philadelphia at, Eagles? The yeah. Eagles drive, yeah. Their yeah. first drive of the second half. Took All right, a long so let's time. get A.J. Hawk's thoughts on the other side. we got Ian Rappaport joining us in the third hour. A lot of people traveling today. Mm-hmm. Sent out a lot of requests. And everybody's basically on a plane or incredibly still boozed up from last night. What? Right. I believe we'll have an Aaron Rodgers Tuesday tomorrow. Here we go. Even though Ian Rappaport was reporting... That he went into the darkness today. Mm-hmm. That was not what our sources were telling us. Mm. Ian Rapport will join us in an hour. Excited to hear what Ian has to say mm-hmm. about himself. Yeah. Aaron going into the darkness. I watched a 15 minute video mm-hmm. of somebody that did this in Oregon. Mm-hmm. I, I, I don't know how. I don't know how. Mm. I don't know how you do it. Yeah. The video I watched for the guy that did it, ADD, obviously sensory overload all the time. Bah, da, 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 give me mm-hmm. the phone, you do this whole thing, content maker. He went in there. I think an hour in, he was freaking out. But by day five, he did a five day, he was very thankful for the experience. I assume it is good for everybody if you were to be able to accomplish it. And Aaron will be able to because he's incredibly strong will. I would not be able to do it. No, no that is chance. not something I'd be able to get through. As I was watching this person do this thing, it would have been probably an hour in, I'd be like, Okay, uh, there has to be something I could be doing with my life instead of this. Mm-hmm. Like, that is kind of my issue. But I think that's the purpose of it is to make you slow down, take in yourself and your life and find you. So I'm happy Aaron's doing that. I'm happy he'll be able to successfully do it. But the more I learn about it, the less I think I'd ever be able to accomplish it. And that's bad for me, not for everybody. I'm, I'm, the, I'm the weak one here. No. Excited to hear what Aaron's thoughts are. I mean, I just don't know if, like, you. As humans, we're just not meant to sit in darkness and do nothing for days at a time. You know, it's gotta be a so better, I don't think it's better like way you to go about it. You know, 
What, Tone? You're smarter? You're smarter than all these people that have been doing this for thousands of years? Who are all these people that have been doing it for thousands of years? Thailand. It started in Thailand. I think it's a monk thing. I think it's a meditation thing, mm -hmm. one of those uh, situations. Well, I'm just saying there's got to be a better way to clear your mind for a couple of days than fucking sit in the dark. Oh, are you talking about bopping? Okay. I mean, you do that, that how many times? Way. How many times do you bop, I guess? 10, 12. Probably. Right, right. Yeah. Multiply those in the dark, too. The guy uh, had cameras on him, infrared cameras on him the whole time. They didn't show a single bop. He was in there really? for five days. Oh, so he cut it out. He was doing a lot of singing, a lot of rolling around, a lot of stretching. <laughs> Sounds fun. A lot of, I was born in the dark. Yeah. A lot of him yep. saying that. Yeah, I think he said it like a hundred times in the first two days. Yeah. I assume that's a natural thing. All right, let's get to a break. AJ Hawk will be on the other side. Hit a coin toss last night for 20K. No let's go. Deal. Come on. AJ sent me a text yesterday. He said he likes tails. Okay. He said, I like Tails tonight. So did I. I think we all kind of like yeah. it. Yeah. Especially after that Pat Tillman yep. Bingo. entire oh, yeah. storyline, which. Yep. Let's get to a break. Yeah, people were split on I read a lot about Pat Tillman last night mm -hmm. on the internet. Really? Oh, yeah. A lot about Pat Tillman. Pat Tillman's a fucking dog. Mm -hmm. His death, though, there's a lot, oh, yeah, a lot of, of. A lot of questions surrounding it. He was in the book club last year. On the hows and the whys. I obviously read that book. I just forgot about it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. For Bersha? Yeah. Great flip. Unbelievable flip. Perfect. She stepped right into the batter's yep. box. Yeah, yeah, motherfucker. Boom. Yeah. Better than Billie Jean. Yeah. Yes. Better. She's Fabergé. Better than Fabergé? Yeah. Incredible name. Yeah. Like the egg? We did yes. not have a sound on whenever she was introduced. That's on us. Mm -hmm. She flipped that thing. As it was flying through the sky, Tommy Townsend calls tails. Yep. For the Chiefs, I'm like, all right, here we go. This is good. Then, as that thing's flying through the air, there was like this feeling of like, it's tails. tails. It's tails. And then when Sheffer says, "It is a tail," man, that reaction we had right here. I wish we could bottle that. I know. Genuine excitement. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. I almost fainted afterwards. Exercise. I mean, that's a that's a major demon exercise. Yes, it really is. 50k lost the last two years on yeah. coin tosses. <laughs> Twenty thousand, thirty thousand. This year I did 20,000 and just kind of reset the cycle. I'm not going to keep going. For us to hit that, save the whole night for me gambling because our SGP obviously doesn't. I mean, genuine excitement there. I started seeing stars. Oh, yeah. I was so, ah. It is a different tank top, too. Don't judge me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're back and forth with AJ Hawk. Be a friend, tell a friend, take five. Bye. Bye. Why? Let me tell a tale about this little blue can Inside there's a nectar love from here to Japan It's a vibe, it's a time, ice cold over time So sublime, this shit is divine It's the beer of choice when you wanna rejoice Hey yo boys, what's the noise? Why? Hey yo boys, what's the noise? Well, us and Bud Light have made it a fish we bring the stoogery, they bring delish Feels like a genie just granted us a wish Cause for all of us, it was love at first sip Now be a bud, tell a bud to grab some bud lights Go and drizzle coat is what? Five dollars off tonight Go and drizzle coat is what? Five dollars off tonight Cause if you're living life right and you're drinking Bud Light And you wake up in the morning and you fight the good fight Then you're doing A-OK, -okay, doing A-OK -okay. Matter of fact, you're doing great no matter what they say Now be a Bud, tell a Bud to grab some Bud Lights Go and drizzle coat is wide, five dollars off to nine Five dollars off to nine Wide How'd you choose college coaching? I was coaching on the backside of the desert for a long time. I started off with youth football. We have one of the biggest uh, programs in the country with ages five all the way to 14 and several teams of each age group. Name was Truth. Trust in God, respect myself and others. Understand I have unlimited possibilities. Try my best, never give up, and honor the truth in his creed at all times. Oh, that's that was a good one. And we took the whole state of Texas and we went and played all around the country. That's what I was doing for a decade. Then I got into high school football. Then after high school, I'm just sitting there, all the kids about to go, you know, Shiloh. Bucky had graduated from SMU. Shiloh was at uh, South Carolina and Shador was getting ready to go play for Coach Taggart. You know, I started getting the call. Phone saw right. You know, let me really consider that. So I interviewed on a couple of interviews and knocked him out of the park, but it wasn't the time. <laughs>
and I accepted the, the Jackson State challenge, a tremendous challenge, tremendous challenge, because I'd never been to Jackson. I'm like, HBCU, I don't really know a lot about it. Let me do my homework. And I accepted the challenge. Then Shador said, you know what, Daddy, I'm riding with you. And Shallow, like, Daddy, I'm riding with you. So now I got both my sons there and the mother son doing all those social media. And it just became a, a wonderful thing. And being able to grab those guys, you know, when the Bible says you're riding that staff, they come from me. Without the guys around you, you're not going to be confident. So I learned to put some pretty good guys around me, just like when I returned part. If I didn't have 10 dogs in front of me blocking their butts off, I wasn't going to be proud. So I've learned to always keep some dogs around me to make sure I could go do what I'm blessed to do. And that's the formula of coaching, man. Just having some good coaches around you. That And we're not friends of the kids. You know, everybody talking about these kids are different. The kids ain't no different. Their coaches have changed. Kids ain't no different. They the same old kids. Coaches have changed. Put pacifying these kids and they want discipline, man. They want structure. They want to be told what to do and where to go and how to do it. Colorado was the biggest job, biggest offer. Why? No, 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 no. Colorado was the best job and the perfect job for me because of Rick George, because of the AD, because of his spirit and, and, and what he spoke to me. He touched me, man. I was offered more money, of course, but money don't move me. Connectivity and the spirit and, and being in the right place and doing the right thing, that's what moves me and motivates me. If money was it, Shoot, I, I, I'd have lost this a long time. You don't come to work because of the money. You come to work because you love doing what you're doing and the money seems to follow you. That's been my formula. I've sat in all three seats. I've been the kid on the couch. I've been the parent right next to the kid on the couch. Now I'm on the other side and the coach that you're talking to. So it's not nothing that I don't understand about this process. You want it prime, you, that's what you're going to get. I don't know how to dress it up and flip it no other way. i got to be me. i got to be me un unapologetically. I'm going to be me. Hey, we have issues with that with some companies because of that. I see you've run yeah. into that case as well yeah <laughs> i'm right back out of the door they should have googled me did your homework and asked a few questions because i'm gonna be me Why? Let's go! This show fucking stinks. And the fact that you listen, we are very, very thankful for it. AJ, you never cease to amaze me with your toxicity, pal. You got a couple of these? God <laughs> damn it! <laughs> what the fuck are you doing? Fuck, fucking cop! Oh! Hello, beautiful people. Welcome back to our humble abode, the Thunderdome, on a Super Bowl overreaction Monday, February 13th, 2023. Hour two starts now. Football is over. That's why you hear the sorrow <laughs> in the boys' voice of the toxic table at Boston Connor at Ty Schmidt. One half of the hammer, Dad. Dad. Cowboys Tone Diggs is here. And joining us now, live from an attic in Ohio, is a man who's a college football national champion, a Super Bowl champion, a Ryder Cup champion, a father of 10, and a COVID survivor. Great pickleball player. Yeah. Very good. Ladies and gentlemen, AJ Hawk. Good AJ! Yeah. How you doing, AJ? Good. How about that game last night, huh? Hey, <laughs> how about them Chiefs? I hated the way it ended. I didn't love that that call was made. I guess if you break down, he did grab a hold of him. It was a hold, but that can't be the deciding factor of the Super Bowl, I don't think. That's me personally. We don't know your mm -hmm. thoughts on it. I don't think you tweeted ever or about that, so I haven't got a chance to hear it all. But what a track meet, 38-35. Patrick Mahomes doesn't throw for 225, but rushes for like 40 on a high sprained ankle. Jalen Hurts has a coming out party to the whole world. This guy is a dog. Throws for 300, rushes for two. What are your thoughts? What's your big takeaway? And congrats to the Chiefs, obviously, AJ. 
Yeah, obviously, congrats to the Chiefs. And obviously, the Eagles played very well. But, man, Andy Reid, the enemy, what they did. The, what do they call them? A little corn dog play? The, the fake jet motion come back like return. Waggle. I think they're calling a, a waggle, waggle, corn dog. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, yeah. A yeah. Hot dog twice. on a stick. It, it worked twice. Yeah, wide open. And it works twice. <laughs> That's what's unbelievable. All those things. Third and one, they get in split backs, and they run a sweep, too, to, to uh, convert, like, just some masterful stuff, I feel like, especially in the second half from the Chiefs. Touchdown, 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 right. game-winning field goal. Those are the four drives the uh, Chiefs had in the second half after stalling and being down 10 at halftime. Before half, too, mm -hmm. we saw that picture of Patrick Mahomes' face after that high ankle sprain got a little bit. I remember a little Kurt <laughs> Angled, mm -hmm. a little bit of Ken mm -hmm. Shamrock. They kind of locked that thing up a little bit on a tackle. Standard tackle, going to happen. Foot got twisted sideways. It was grass, so yeah, maybe it was good in that moment. Really good grass, too, at the same time. Talk about it. The sod father fucked this one up, AJ. How do you mess that up? Two years of planning for that sod. It's a Super Bowl. Sorry to cut you off. No. Okay, that's what infuriates me. It's the Super Bowl. I understand they did all this stuff, spent all this money, installed the turf a couple weeks before, whatever, spent two years growing it. Then you paint all over it. It somehow has all this moisture. And you have dudes, you should not have to wear screw-in, three-quarter inch screw-ins in the Super Bowl without any elements going on, with no rain, no snow, nothing like that. Like, that's just, I don't know how it happened. In a dome. In a desert, yeah. mm -hmm. guys had to wear yeah. three quarter inch stud. Which is what you wear when you're like you're in the mud bowl. That's what you put on. Well, that's what it looked like. Everybody was talking about the paint, and obviously on this one play, there's two DNs that slip and a quarterback slips, and this is a pretty vital play <laughs> of the game. Everybody is slipping and down. <laughs> Looks like whenever the trainers have to go on the ice and there's a chance yeah. it's a new one, whoo, in hockey they kind of lose their footing. Or you walk outside after a fucking snow globe kind of hits your neighborhood and maybe a brrr of ice mm -hmm. hits all there, and you accidentally get onto the sidewalk, and oh my God, the right foot the grundle starts to pull a little bit. That's what happened to Patrick Williams like three, four times yeah. last night while he's in the pocket. Shouldn't happen. Why? How does it get too wet? They watered it too much. The sod father fucking watered no, they try to get too. They try to get too cute with it. They try to like do something special. What's Arizona has a great field from what yeah. I've known when I got to play on it years ago. I don't know what happened, but why do all of this when you already have great grass, great field, and you just try to do something extra? Well, the sod father wanted the finest of green grass to be yeah. displayed to 150 million people. They grew it in a local sod farm in Phoenix. Okay. Don't think we should blame them. Not sure it was necessarily the grass. It seemed to be very thin's fault. I think it was the maintenance. I think it was the actual shoot maintenance of the grass mm. that made it the problem. And to your point about the <laughs> grass that they have out there, as we see the sod father through the years, of course, to, to your point of uh, of, um, like the Arizona's grass, if it wasn't green enough, paint it. Literally yeah. happens in a lot of fields, a lot of sports. Maybe they were worried about how green it was. Is that is that what it is that the problem? I mean, uh, whatever it looks like, you hope you have good footing when you have grass. And I know the whole conspiracy theory with Reddit saying they did this on purpose so we can get the old everyone can go switch to the whatever new field yep. turf it is. I mean, I guess you can't put anything past them, but I don't think that this is not a good look for the NFL. Yeah, the NFL in front of 150 million people say, you know what, let's fucking make this a slip and slide. <laughs> it looked like they were playing on, like, uh, a golf green. If it, they were playing on a wet golf green, like, you know how, like, it's very, very thin, like, and if you were to ever, like, slip on it, that's exactly what they were playing on. Yeah, I'm very fascinated in the whole process and how they thought that was going to be the right play, the right grass. You know, because I assume day before, they had to have some people test it a little bit, yeah. right? And day before, people were like, I'll tell you what, Sawfather, father, not your best work. Yeah. Dry this out. I'm not wearing, I'm not wearing three-quarter inch in the Super Bowl, but they better dry this sucker out overnight. Like, they're probably saying that. This ain't your best sod, sod father. Have you lost your fastball, sod father? Hell, sod father. Have you no, lost like touch this. with the actual grass? Let's not let that steal it. Let's talk about yeah. the hold at the end. Let's not let that steal it as well, but has to be addressed. Mm -hmm. No other defensive holdings were called the entire game. And I'm sure there wasn't a single moment where any DB on either team grabbed somebody, especially no. in that grass. Especially with right. that grass. I'm sure they never just put their hands on a wide receiver, and that's why it wasn't called. Is that what we're assuming the rest of the game? That won the game for them. I would have liked the opportunity to see what Jalen does. I would have liked the opportunity to see what Steichen and Sirianni dial up. Now, obviously, to tie it, because we think Bucker would make the kick, especially with that game winner. He hit that fucker 
so pure. I'm so proud of him. Mentally, the demons that had to be going through there after he misses in the first plant quarter. Foot, plant foot in the, uh, in the paint, paint, too. I thought that. Yeah, there's so many demons that could be going through Bucker's head. Mm -hmm. He hits that thing pure. Great operation to win a Super Bowl. Not easy to hold. Not easy to snap. Congrats to that. But we would assume he would have made the field goal that would have put him up three with a minute 40 left in the clock. And now, all of a sudden, we have the Eagles with a chance to answer for a tie or a fucking win. Could you imagine Jalen Hurts oh and Sirianni down three, no timeouts at that point, right? Yeah. Because no, they, they had two had to burn yeah. all of them. Yeah. and the two-point or two-minute warning. Yep. So they already got rid of them. They go down and win that. Could you fuck? What if the Chiefs get a stop? Imagine that Chiefs defense getting a stop when they had to. So many storylines still that we never got to see, AJ. Yeah, I mean, my biggest issue with the call right there, and people can say, well, if it's a – if it's a flag in the first quarter, it isn't the fourth. Well, this game, it wasn't a flag in the fourth or the first quarter. Apparently, that's that's what I have an issue yes. with. If you're calling it, you always know what the crew is like. Are they hey? Are they letting the boys play tonight, or are they calling everything? You know that, and you get a feel for it as the game goes. I think that's part of football in the NFL. Are you guys talking? Yeah, it's kind of like a uh, strike zone. Yeah. Uh, where yeah. the ump is. Yeah. Are, you, are you guys talking about that on defensive sideline? Yes, absolutely. You say, hey, hey, they're they're letting us get after it a little bit, or you come off and say, hey, man. Don't even get your hands on these dudes because they are throwing the flags. That's just how it's going to be today. That's how we have to play. And I think these guys know, like, hey, they're letting us play. And th another telling thing is that Juju isn't asking for a flag. If the receiver's not asking for anything, then you that's when you're like, all right, well, that's definitely a questionable call. Patrick Mahomes saw it, and Patrick yeah, Mahomes is going to complain for every call. I, yeah, I think I've but every Juju didn't feel that restricted, I'm guessing, because of he didn't sit there and throw his hands up and yell or do anything. Patrick Mahomes immediately mm -hmm. looking Smart. and then looking Smart. at the ref. And then seeing that flag, he had to be like, mm -hmm. just, no, won just won a game. Just won a game. Yeah. Just won yeah. the game. That ended the game promptly. Promptly ended the game. Bradbury came out and said it was a hold. Does that change anything for you? I give him credit. I give him credit for, for owning up to whatever. He didn't want to sit there and he knows it's over. It happened. What, what can I do? I don't know if he's seen the replay too yet. By the time that yeah. he talked, you know, if he had seen the replay. Yeah, he watched on the Jumbotron at least. I, I think if I'm him, I'm trying. Oh, yeah, you're right. I didn't do it. Uh, yeah. Uh, well, shit. and he yeah. he might have been alluding to like how they weren't calling it in the first quarter because he was like, yeah, I held him, but I, f I I thought they might let that one slide, you know. So he might have been thinking like, same deal. Hey, they haven't called this all night, so. Yeah, the interesting thing, yeah. these refs know we're playing on an ice skating rink, right? So they know that <laughs> yeah. there's a chance that we might, you know, slip, fumble. That's why I think that Patrick Mahomes' run was so mm. impressive, you know. High ankle yeah. sprain. He had to dance around the pocket without falling. And, you know, when you have a high ankle sprain, you're obviously not as stable as you would have been. Yeah. So you put it on a slick surface, you think it'd be much worse. Mm -hmm. Him scooting for whatever this was, 25 yards, to put them in field goal range. Like, this dude is a dog, bro. Yeah. Half, yeah. We, we have to remember this. And a lot of his teammates, Chris Jones, Travis Kelsey, any other chief that has ever gotten onto a microphone has basically said, put some respect on this fucking man's name. And I think we have. Everybody's just kind of put him in the pantheon, the Mount Rushmore of quarterbacks already. So I think everybody feels as if, what are you guys talking about? We did put respect on it. It's like, Joe Burrow was the best quarterback in the NFL just a couple yeah, yeah. weeks ago. Yep. Going into the season, Russell Wilson has come into yeah. the division. And all his teammates are like, what are we yeah. fucking talking about here? This is yeah. the guy. 17 points in the fourth quarter of the Super Bowl. Hello. How you doing? Biggest stage, biggest moment. I'm the biggest fucking star, and I'm still here. Wins the MVP and still has an ability to – Put a chip on his shoulder, AJ? That's awesome. The whole team. The yeah. whole team does. I think the whole team kind of has a chip on their shoulder for him and for the rest of their squad. And obviously we know their offensive line played very, very well, and they had heard everything about yes. Philly's defense and what they were going to do to them. And that's it's a real thing, man. They band together and say, like, no, how do people not believe us? Like, we're the Chiefs. This is what we do. Just to break some news here, uh, off of your point there, going to have to stop this convo to go to another convo. Orlando Brown will be on the program tomorrow. Here we okay. go. We will be having a program tomorrow uh, mm -hmm. because it'll be the final Aaron Rodgers Tuesday of the season tomorrow. Hell yeah. Although it was okay. reported just yesterday uh, that Aaron Rodgers was going into darkness uh -huh. today. Mm -hmm. Our sources have told us much different news than that. Our sources did actually said, hey, want to have another Aaron Rodgers Tuesday next week? Yeah, we'd love to have another Aaron Rodgers Tuesday. And then yesterday I wake up after sleeping in because of travel from Arizona and the week it was, and all of a sudden Aaron's already in the darkness, and I go, Wait a minute. So we're not having Aaron Rodgers Tuesday. <laughs> That's literally what I was looking at. The, I was looking at the TV going, 
oh, so we're off Tuesday. I guess we're off Tuesday. We're, okay, vacation starts after Monday. So then, you know, I do a little digging in my sources. Aaron Rodgers Tuesday will be happening tomorrow. We will chat with Aaron about the darkness that is coming, I believe, in a matter of days. And we'll also talk to Orlando fucking Brown. Tomorrow's shaping up to be a big show when we didn't even think we were going to have one. Very excited about it. To your point, zero sacks from Orlando Brown, that offensive line against Patrick Mahomes, against that Philadelphia Eagles defense, which was being talked about. 70-some sacks already in the year. Four different guys have over 11 sacks. This Chiefs offensive line, uh, questionable, suspect. That's where the game's going to be run. The enemy, Andy Reid, and the O-line coach. We're just shoving that down the <laughs> offensive lineman's faces. Don't you think, AJ? Oh, no question. And they're, they're, I'm sure when they speak to the media, too, the two weeks leading up to the game, every question any O-lineman ever got was, how are you guys going to slow down this unbelievable pass rush? Like, they have so much talent, and they're so big and strong and fast. How in the world can you ever find a way to stop these guys? And that's just... Think how much that pisses those guys off. Hey, Orlando, um, are you are you having trouble sleeping this week? <laughs> Hassan Reddick, you saw what he For did to Purdy. You're not that far off, though, from how guys will pose questions like that. Oh, I know. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. In my head, I just saw Orlando Brown sitting at that press conference that he has to sit at in some young fuck, some sports fuck that's never played, going – uh, Orlando, I was wondering, how's the sleeping been thinking about this Philadelphia Eagles defensive line that has four different guys that have 11 sacks, 78 sacks, five sacks away from an NFL season record? We are wondering, how's the anxiety of all the offensive line that has proven not to be great, sometimes Swiss cheese this year? <laughs> Orlando, shut the fuck up. What the fuck? Who are you? Who the fuck are you? And also... Fuck these dudes. Yeah. There could have been a couple sacks. Patrick Mahomes, you know, made some plays. Yeah. He extended yeah. some plays. But that offensive line, how about Pacheco running? Man, I love – yeah, obviously I think you guys have talked about it, but just watching him run even – we had some my, – my, some of my kids had some of their friends over and we had a little deal at our house. And a couple people that were there are watching this dude run almost for the first time it seems like. I was like, no, every single time he runs, that's how it ends up. Like he's trying to run everybody over and then he gets up. And he just, the dude just has endless energy. Yeah. And just, I look how, like, he's Sod just father. always so, uh -huh. he's so violent with it. Look at that. He's so, well, and this dude's awesome. I think that's a Jersey thing right there, I believe. Yep. If I mm. read it out of, he was doing this dance in a locker room uh -huh. after the AFC Championship. That video was tweeted, and then I saw everybody going, Jersey, 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 uh -huh. all that time. So I think it is mm. a, I believe that yeah. is a Jersey movement mm -hmm. remember jason kelsey yes. also yep. did that uh did it a lot, yeah. uh, alongside miles sanders mm -hmm. so that's the jersey gritty i believe no i don't want any offense taken uh -huh. by anybody but yeah here's him in the locker room after the afc championship <laughs> i don't know what there it is there it is there it was bam pow pang hey, hey, bam hey, hey. Bam. there it is there, there it is and we're dribbling our hips i believe <laughs> i believe you're throwing your hips back and forth hey speaking of hips how do you feel about Rihanna and all these dongs? And I, I mean, there's a lot of donging. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, that. that's what she does, right? She's pregnant, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Hey, congrats mm -hmm. to True. ASAP and Rihanna. Rihanna. Rihanna's got bangers. We enjoyed the hell out of it. She's a self made billionaire. She is a badass. Thought there was going to be some surprises. We all, yeah, I said it. We mm -hmm. all, you know, like Jay Z coming in. He's in the building. Paul McCartney, sir. Sorry. He was in the building. Bro. Thought he was going to come out. Kanye's, Kanye's with that song, though. That's why I knew the McCartney wasn't happening. A lot of Kanye songs. Yeah. A lot of them. Couple. You know what I mean? I know. And a, lot of good, them. a lot of good songs out there. Rihanna has, she has tons of hits. Her catalog is legit. Banger. No Eminem either. Could have had Eminem yeah. come mm -hmm. out. I think she has a couple songs with him. Yeah, mm -hmm. we're in this town. Hmm. hmm. Great performance, though. Yeah, I'm a Rihanna fan. I said, I, I mean, I give her credit for singing that high up in the air, too, or I guess yeah, shouldn't dangerous. say. I don't know. I know it has cool. to all be tightly scheduled. Well, there was one time gotta... they were showing it. That fucker was shaking. Uh -huh. Yeah, big time. Oh, well, yeah. I, they, they were zoomed in right before the big zoom out, I think. That thing was going back and forth, and she was in the middle of hitting, like, while pregnant. What a fucking yeah. dog yeah. Nope. Rihanna yeah, is. That thing's ba bouncing back and forth, and she's just whatever in her – whatever – brand she owns who knows what fancy is that shoes with makeup what is makeup it? i know it's definitely everything, makeup right? i think it's clothes, I think clothes it's everything. yeah I think so it's as she's wearing her own shoes okay wearing her own makeup that has made her a billionaire at whatever 30 40 feet in the sky it's shaking and it's like a glass thing and she's just fully exposed it's like that's a dog right yeah there. Mm -hmm. that is an absolute beast right there 
Nobody's going to talk about this being a top five Super Bowl performance, halftime performance. No way. Right ever. I don't think ever. Because you got to have like you got to have like fifteen feature acts come up for that to happen, right? Yeah, you just got to go all in. in uh, is that Rihanna's decision? Whose decision is it? You know, like Jay Z mm -hmm. works with the NFL. Mm -hmm. Jay Z redid the entire halftime performance interview process. This was a fascinating thing to read about when Jay Z came to start uh, working alongside the NFL to figure out all the shit that they potentially were fucking up in numerous different things. Jay-Z said the way it would work for the halftime show, they would interview like six performers, and then they'd say, uh, we'll call you if you got the job. And then they would pick one, and then if that person said no, they'd call somebody else. And then you would still have like four to five pissed and off. And you pay for it too. And by the way, you don't get paid and you pay millions of dollars for the production. Yeah, but they would piss off like fucking four to five superstars that they were talking mm, to yeah. about doing the halftime show. Oh. And Jay-Z said, there's only so many superstars in the world. The NFL says, hey, need you to do this for free. And also the need to come interview with us and audition with it and then we're not going to fucking call you back either and then we're just going to pick somebody else jay-z was like the process was a little bit like hey superstars have egos you know yeah. superstars have like these things we were pissing the nfl was pissing off i guess just fucking everybody just like completely so jay-z you know kind of changed the way they're like we will go pitch to one person and then if they can't we will then go pitch to another. We're not going to have them pitch to us right. and then tell them to go fuck them. Now, granted, playing in front of 150 million people is an incredible platform. Every single artist that has ever performed at halftime, their streaming numbers are more than they've ever been. The money, the ticket sales are more than they've ever been. Like, it is a catapult back into your prime, pretty much. If you weren't in your prime currently, it's a catapult right back into it, so it's very valuable. But that whole process, I guess, has changed immensely over the last few years which leads me back to jay-z probably didn't want to do it you think he was like i'm not i don't want to In interrupt her moment your moment yeah. like you think that's why that happened i don't know that's an interesting maybe thing. maybe she didn't he maybe he was just waiting for her to ask and he's like i'm not going to volunteer my services i don't want to do that well you got to remember there was a billion dollars on an elevator true yep. you know what i mean yeah there was that moment that all took place you know it's going to go down when there's a billion on an elevator but Jay Z was having a good time. I didn't realize Strahan, Strahan and Rihanna are tight. Like he was, he congratulated her afterwards. They showed it. Oh yeah. Well, I guess he. Did. A lot of people were talking about Strahan running. What? What about how, it? how he looked after? A lot of people were saying look a little thirsty there afterwards oh. while they were oh. rushing. But Strahan uh, had the interview. With, I think he had a big interview with her pregame, yep. full interview, and he's fucking Michael Strahan. Yeah. yeah. So he's. He's everywhere. He's icon. He is. He's everywhere, dude. Yeah. I mean, the guy is... Good morning, America. He has his own, you know he has his own clothing line, too. Like, nice clothes, I think. He's like a monster. big and tall. Is, is it? it? Yeah, I think so. It's like suits for dudes who are huge. At yeah. Like, yeah, like at Macy's and different... It's all over the place. I mean, that dude's making so much money. He's a monster. Yeah. yeah. Let's awesome. go to the five energy. So. We take a lot of phone calls today, AJ. Really? How, how we're, uh, what's the, like, the mood of people? Have you got any people from Philly? Um, we had one guy, we had a couple people from Philly. One guy, Joe from Philly, he's a Chiefs fan, and he said he was walking around last night in his Chiefs gear, and all the Eagles fans are bitch made cats. Yeah. That was his yep. big I'll takeaway. Take right. him, yeah. Yeah, what, did he want to beat him to a pulp? Is I think so. Yeah, you, you said unsafe. I thought that as well. I think that's why Joe went out. He was like, <laughs> let's see what these fucking birds fans got to say yeah. now. Mm -hmm. Will anybody punch me? Is what he was looking at. And then he calls into our show and goes, not a single fucking person blindsided me. Nope. nope, they're soft. Philly has changed. What a place. And then that other guy said, I hate it. Birds ain't going to be back to the bowl in five years. We're done. <laughs> Dead. Fl Fletcher Cox. Gone. Mm. Lane Ke Johnson's retiring. Kelsey. Kelsey's retiring. Brandon Graham. Brandon Graham's retiring. We're done. Lost two coordinators. Mm -hmm. Still got. Still got Sirianni. And. Jalen. And. Dallas Andres. Dallas Andres will always be here, luckily. <laughs> he didn't mention that, but I could tell that he was thinking it. It's probably at the restaurant. Uh, we do not have anybody on the oh, line. No. I believe our thing just broke. Mitt. Mitt. Well, I'm Mitt. Mitt. What? Oh, 15 seconds Mitt doing? behind. I don't know. It, like, the only thing that it says right there is that our phone line is in use somewhere else. Oh, that makes sense. Yes. I so thought that's why we that, reserved that number. Took the dump? So we just got our number Oops. stolen? Yeah, someone How does that stole it. Somebody no. just pirate our fucking number? How? This is the first time we're really using the phones. What, what the is hell? that deal? Mitt! 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 
Mitt. Mitt, the head of the cybersecurity for the program? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck the call the draw. He said they all just dropped out of nowhere. What the hell? What's going on? Oh, no. We what? Attack? Uh -oh. This is the first time we've really uh, tested this system, isn't it? And someone else is testing I see Zito it. shaking his head. Yeah. We just crashed What's their wrong, thing. What's wrong, Z? Yeah. We just crashed their thing. This was a fear. Uh, they said it was better, uncrashable. Mean their thing. So it's a, you know, it's one of these servers that we're using. Yep. Outside party. And if you get too many calls, it shuts down? Yeah, this happens. This is what it's happens. Happened before. They were told they could handle our load. <laughs> oh, no. Good Zito. luck. Zito got a good pop out of that. Mm -hmm. That was good. Zito, this is not our first rodeo in this world. No. We've gone to podcast platforms before. They've crashed immediately upon going there, which is a compliment, I guess, to us and mm -hmm. our people that follow along. And then that same company gets like $800 million two months later. That's right. It's like, wait a minute. How does that work? How does that how does that happen? This thing just fucking crashes, and then they get paid a bunch of money. You're welcome, it feels like. But also, this system's fucked. What's going on? What's so then we fun? have another phone. I think two years ago, we had a phone system that was internet web-based. Trashed. Mm -hmm. Then we got hardwired into the old office. We would have been able to do this, but we were told we didn't need it. Because mm -hmm. once again, this particular server here is the top of the line, can handle your load. Cram, Del, cram. Here we are, first day, fucker crashed. Jeez Louise. Just can't handle our loads. Man. When you got those big football loads mm -hmm. that we've been having uh -huh. all year, especially on this overreaction Monday, it's going to be tough to handle the load. This is what happens when you call. Yeah, it's dead. I mean, what, we six, have nine $6? lines. We have nine lines. What the hell? Nine lines. Hey, thank you all who support this show. Mm -hmm. Who do you call? You. Who, who comes to fix that? How's it oh, work? Oh, so, so we got to call the people that told us it was going to be okay. Uh -huh. So they're coming in with something must have broke in our end. So uh -huh. there'll be like uh -huh. an hour and a half of all of our wires getting checked. Right. Because obviously this is our fault. And then it'll go to the answer. Oh, there was a bug. It'll be something that was undetectable and has never happened before. Ever. This is how this goes. And you don't know, because have I ever gone splunking through their server? No. Never. No. Mm -mm. Never. We've never known. It. And then there's no real other thing. So then the person will leave. We'll pay them for a couple hours they came in. Yep. And then they'll say, the algorithm will figure it out. Yeah, hopefully this doesn't happen again. I've never seen this. And then we're off and running. That's, that's how it goes normally, AJ. That's normally how it, it goes. Sounds, I mean, it sounds like we could, you know, it's a lot of steps. It seems kind of inefficient, I think, for fixing things. Yeah, no. you got to remember, though, everybody that you hire is the smartest person at what they do. And we, you know, we got like, if you were to hire Patrick Mahomes to come in and play quarterback for you, mm -hmm. there's a chance that like Patrick Mahomes is not necessarily going to listen to somebody else who doesn't play quarterback mm -hmm. at what quarterback is. So when you hire these tech people, some of them have the same egos as like professional athletes. That's right. Sure. And when they come in, why am I somebody that knows nothing about the world that they're in? asking any questions about the world that they're in, even though their world just completely fucking shut down and didn't work at all. That's what it's like building a studio, I've learned. That's what it's like. Yeah, all facets of it. I mean, the light people, the studio people back there, there are a lot of different... Phone people. Yeah, and they're all different people. It's crazy, dude. Mm -hmm. This is life. This is the world we're in, but much bigger problems. For instance, three UFOs have been shot down in the last three days. Sure. Yeah, what what are we doing? Yeah, what's, what Think is happening? That? I don't know. They said it was like the size of a fucking Hyundai up there, the one that they, mm -hmm. uh, the most recent oh. one they shot down. Was it a car? Or um, a Hyundai? I don't know if they said a hatch mm. or a car. Okay. Hmm. Mm. That's pretty small. But it's a car. What would make you, what would you make you pick a Hyundai? Like anything, because it's small. Actual Hyundai commercial on right now on that TV right over there. <laughs> and they said it was a car size. But Ooh. this was from Daily Mail. The same people that told me I was getting sued by Brett Favre. Yeah, right. They released this thing. Uh, Saturday, February 11th. Radar anomaly detected object found in Montana. Saturday, February 11th. Oh, just the second UFO shot down. How about February 10th? Oh, that was the first UFO shot down mm -hmm. in Alaska. And then Sunday, February 12th, Super Bowl Sunday, third UFO shot down over the Great Lakes where there was a no-fly zone over, I believe, Lake Huron and Michigan mm -hmm. for a certain amount of times yesterday. And then obviously this all started on February 4th with the Chinese spy balloon. So a Chinese spy balloon flies over town. If you're in the Midwest... Look up, mm -hmm. there's a spy balloon from China <laughs> going, was pretty much how it was being talked about. And then a week later, all these flying objects are just getting shot down. I'm very confused by this all. And uh, I'm fascinated on what the truth is and if we ever know, if we ever get told.
Have we? F have they claimed to find any of these things they've shot down? I know they were looking. So I saw the uh, national security something gave a press conference, yeah, and yeah. he said General. that they do believe they'll be able to recoup some of the stuff because it fell on frozen land a couple different places. So oh. they think they'll be able to gather and see where it's from. They said, is it state-owned, corporation-owned? Oh, private, yeah. Didn't even think about corporation owned. Then you can deny it. If it's corporation owned, then whoever is behind it can deny it. And also, you can just pawn it off on the corpse as opposed to the aliens. That's right. Yeah, man, I want to see one of these crafts. Really octagonal do. shape was the one, but have we seen any of it? No. No. Yeah, how do we know? I mean, is the Daily Mail saying it's octagonal shape? Who, do, who is the one that's No, so, that? uh, somebody of importance okay. reported yeah. that it was octagonal. Somebody in front of a, in front of a podium yes. with some sort of government seal. Yep. Said that it was that. It's a wild time. You it's guys happening are... right now. Shout out to the aliens letting the Super Bowl take place. Shout okay. out to aliens. What's going on? You guys are what? Huh? What? You well, no, AJ brought up the Nile, which is kind of basically what his state's doing right now. Oh, what? yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Then Ohio. And that's in Ohio. I mean, that's right on the border. That's basically PA. No, no, no. That's Ohio. I think that's the burb of the bergs. I think that was oh, yeah, it is. how it's, it's being close. described. Train crashes. Nuclear did the site. train crash, or did they do something on purpose? Did they Who do something to release something? So it depends on who you're listening to. Allegedly, <laughs> okay. there was a protest in, like, December from these train companies to the government asking for funding to fix the brakes and fix the Civil War technology that was still being used on the trains that we see every single day here in the middle of America going across the country delivering shit. Trains are still very fucking active. Oh, yeah. If you don't know that because you don't live in a place where trains are, there was a time where I was getting stopped by a train every single time I left my house. Now, I don't longer live in that area, so I don't have to cross said train track, but there's a lot of activity with trains. In Palestine, is it East Palestine, Ohio? What is it? Saint I guess that, yeah, East Palestine, they call it. East Palestine, Ohio. Allegedly, some of these trains were not able to stop. They derail, they crash, they blow up, and it's a bunch of, like, nuclear stuff pretty much and they're mm. they're saying chernobyl mm. is happening in ohio all the Whoa. fish in the creek and the river died i guess there's cancer looming in the air they gave a statement that you could go back to your homes and obviously this is not being talked about a lot but you put this on top of these ufos yep. on top of this chinese spy balloon yeah, yeah. which like what the... the fuck is going on right now in the world that we're in we don't pay attention to the world much we've had our blinders on we've been fucking punxsutawney field down in the hole before groundhog's day because because football has been taking place. That's right. It's just, I'm just starting to snoop around in the real world. What the <laughs> fuck is going on, AJ Hawk? And the, that tweet, it says the local police blew it up like a beached whale. What does that even mean? <laughs> yeah, so this is uh, this is obviously an account. Did, did they have to? Was it, was it a runaway train? They had to blow it up? What was the thing? That was a Denzel movie. That was right. Yeah, was great unstoppable. Movie. I, I have no idea. I have no clue what happened. There's obviously conspiracies around everything going on. And will we ever find out the truth? Probably not. No, definitely not. And uh, also the green lights coming down from the sky over the Hawaii Yes. Yeah. Oh, I didn't see that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. That is real fishing. On top of that as well. Yeah, surveillance camera catches these green lights come down from the sky. Whoa. They did not come down yep. at the same time. It was one, like from this side, and then one, 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 yeah. one, and then they pieced them all together oh. for a photo. There's a video of so it. So it was a scan almost. This green light comes through the sky in Hawaii, scans something, and then it just kind of leaves the screen. And this is on a surveillance camera that's always shooting. That's why it was caught. Fucking freaky. And they said, oh, it's just a... Uh, Chinese satellite coming down, shooting a little bit. It's like, why has China got this balloon over the Midwest? Mm -hmm. Why are they shooting lasers over Hawaii? Yeah. What the fuck is going on right now, AJ? How come the real world news I, people aren't telling us? I, I, it, is, it is a bit alarming at how, I mean, I mean, I guess there's a lot going on with the Super Bowl and everything, but yeah, this is really flowing. Fine under time the radar. for it. Last there's night, too much out there. There's too much info out there, I guess. So it's like whatever. Way, way too much. Yeah, so yeah, the disinformation, whether it's real, whatever's not real, it doesn't matter. There's so much out there that they can, anything can happen. Oh, so you're thinking the world got desensitized to all these types of news. And it's like, yeah. da, da, ba. Super Bowl's on. If you're a full believer, yes, 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 yes. If you're not, bullshit, 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 yeah. bullshit. That's how everybody views it, I guess? I guess, yeah. It's, it's very, the, the fact that it continues to happen is what's weird to me. I'd say typically maybe if you're just like a pessimist or not even like a pessimist, but you just don't buy any of that and you think it's all bullshit. I mean, when you have this many different things happening in this short of a period of time, something's going on. Yeah, what's going something on? Something fishy is going on. I don't know what it is. I just know something. fucking look into China.
China's doing something. Oh, well, maybe. I, I mean, come on. Or it could be aliens. Could be UFOs. Maybe. I mean, but something is fucking China. going on. Could be anything. I, I don't know. Has this been happening in the real world all football season? And obviously, we just had our <laughs> sports stooges and didn't know. It seems because I feel like this is something that should be on at least the nightly news, which I catch every once in a while because my wife loves watching NBC. So I'll see Lester Holt to give me the news. Is this something that's been happening? This seems to be very rare, very new, and very loud. It seems like the UFO stuff, especially like the sightings, that that has really picked up over the last like two months or so. Like we had the one in Guadalajara, and mm-hmm. then there was another one. Like, but for five different events like this to happen over the the span of, I mean, shit, yeah, it was over the span of like eight hours. Let's go. Sunday. Let's go to a press secretary briefing okay. uh, about what the situation is and what's happening. Obviously, press secretary Karine Jean Pierre, who mm-hmm. I have seen on the internet. Yep, she does good work. Not everybody agrees with that, <laughs> but once again, she's in the politics world. That's right. Never going to get it right. Uh, here's her talking about the. Air- these people just lie, though, don't they? Like, press secretaries, that's their job? I hope not. Pretty that's much, the I mean, thing. I mean, you can slap a government seal on I'm not going to fucking believe it. Why would right. I? Let's play this. Let's hear what she has to say first before we judge it. I just wanted to make sure we address this from the White House. I know there have been questions and, and concerns about this, but there is no, again, no indication of aliens or extraterrestrial activity with these recent takedowns. We have it. Again, there is no Who's indication laughing? of aliens or terrestrial activity the with marks these recent the takedowns. Wanted to make sure that the American people knew that, all of you knew that, uh, and it was important for us to say that from here because we've been hearing a lot about it. Um, hey, I, ask I, them not. about the propulsion, <laughs> lack thereof, uh, and I'm it just, just hovering. You know, I ask them. I E.T., the movie, but I'm, I'm just going to leave it there. Um, I just oh, come on. See, see. Good movie. E.T., I guess, is a good movie. Obviously, I never watched it, but I remember that ugly little fucker doing a thing Mm -hmm. on the bike with the kid off to his planet. Um, (laughs) That's worse. Tell me I'm dumb. So if a foreign country, then, one of our enemies, has the capability to do these things, that's worse news. That is not not good news. We're shooting them down. Yeah, we're shooting them down. Ain't no fucking problem. Yeah, but what's that mean? Is that an act of war? Well, well, no. Is that, or what well, are they, they just, doing? They're in, flying into our, in our airspace. Yeah, airspace. So. That's what I'm saying. Which, it's an act of being a dog, okay, and shooting them down. Now, yeah, we're talking about them coming in, the, though. That, yeah, that yeah, might be side. an act of a dog, too, right? Yeah, Because exactly. they're saying, no, they try oh, not fuck scared. your airspace. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. What they tried saying. to sneak in, okay? Still. They don't understand airspace. Who? How, how, if these are aliens, how do they know what that's, airspace is theirs? Well, that's what we're saying. We're taking about the press room that was laughing right there. Yeah. About, hey, we don't know shit about fucking your world, Okay. But I don't like knowing, just as my conversations I've happened across, like with some military folks and some pilots, you know, and things like that. If they have the capability to do the things that they're saying, that's not good for our national defense. Yes. No. Against other, if we were to potentially get into a time where people would want to fucking attack us, which could happen. I, I think we forget about that because the world that we're in, 2023, 2022, we're all striving for a better place. feels like we're all much more understanding of a society. Still assholes, mm-hmm. always going to be assholes. But I think people forget, like, hey, war is a, a thing that has happened throughout humans existing and will happen forever. And we haven't had a stateside war mm-hmm. long time, right? Yeah, well, yeah. the Alamo. I mean, Really, at never something like this, you know. I mean, we're always going elsewhere. Like, we like 9 11, I guess, happened, right? Right, which was an attack on our country, but it wasn't a war no, in our country. Exactly. I mean, this is, you know, like not very often. I mean, yeah, like you said, Pearl Harbor time. and, and 9 11, but, but that was an attack that wasn't a war. No, either. exactly. That wasn't like a full boot. civil war. You're talking civil war, civil I war. guess, right? That would be the last time that war took place or revolution. Over here. Or Can you imagine, like, yeah, that's a crazy thing. Like, it's possible that to have war here, which is nuts to think about uh, in I, the U.S. I don't think it's possible. I hope it's not. Possible. I don't really either. I mean, I really hope it wouldn't. But it could. Yeah, it would be like, bad. It'd be a really bad deal because it would be involved nukes and stuff. Probably. Ukraine folks were just chilling. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they were just having a day. Right. And then all of a sudden, yeah, tanks started boom, rolling in. Tanks and, coming in. I was yeah. like, holy fuck! Right. Yeah. That's what we learned from that situation. Once again, have not been paying attention enough. But there was somebody much like us, maybe streaming a podcast in their apartment in some town <laughs> in Ukraine. And just sitting there, boom, 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 and then all of a sudden, oh, we have to go hide. Where? Yeah. In a bunker. 
in a bunker. What is it, 2022? Yep, there's bombs yeah, falling there's from the sky. fucking missiles everywhere. So we got to remember that type of shit. Like, honestly, yeah. this is th that's why I think I'm so freaked out by it all. Uh, Lee Hudson here, breaking Air Force Chief of Staff General. CQ Brown says on the Chinese high-altitude balloon, it was something that got all of our attention. As we looked at over the course past week or so, better scrutiny of our airspace, also the adjusting of radar sensitivities, which means we're seeing more things than we would normally see, but we don't fully appreciate and understand what we're seeing. What are we fucking talking about? What does it mean we don't fully appreciate? I understand that they claim they don't know what it is. What do we mean we don't understand what, what we're we, seeing? We adjusted the thing like a television? Is oh, that shit. what we... No, uh, we, we, uh, we look up here. Holy fuck. We didn't know these things. Is that what happened? What are we doing, dude? Hey, real world people, figure it out. Okay? Seriously. We're over here in the sports world. We've only seen your shit for like the last 48 hours, and we're really confused about how you let all this shit fly. It stinks. <laughs> it fly literally and figuratively. How is this what's taking place? I have no idea. I also don't love that. Like, I understand, you know, like not everyone buys the alien stuff, but like you don't need to just make everyone feel like an asshole and be like, yeah, I saw E.T. I loved it. It's like, you know, what? And then, I mean, what, what's everyone seeing? What's this stuff we're seeing on Twitter? Like, you know, there's there's got to be some sort of explanation for it, not just, hey, nothing's fucking going on. Yeah, because I'm heading to, you know, an island that is very reachable by numerous people that hate America. The green yeah. light. Get some footage. Get some good footage while you're there. I'm hoping. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I'm hoping. Hopefully you come back alive. Isn't that what like, you're saying? Like, you're worried you'll be attacked while you're there. My inside voice was saying it. I, I think hearing you say it was a little bit different, though. Just in case, bring a fucking M16. Boy, I hope you. this wasn't another Mad Mike situation where we had some amateur been. aviators taking flight up there and they just got plucked out of the sky. I'll that tell you what, if these amateur aviators are able to create something that can fly without any propulsion thing mm -hmm. visible and just kind of bounce back and forth, we need to make them professional, yeah. not amateur. Mm -hmm. We exactly. need to be hiring them stat. We need to hire them right now. Right now. Let's get Mulligetta. Yep. Let's get him negotiating, yeah. Yeah. and let's get these amateur aviators that have defied our science, physics, our physics, yep. everything, and let's get them involved. Let's do that. Yeah, let's just some Jerry that. and Joe getting shot down. All right, let's move along. Someone figure it out. I don't love this. It's, it's nuts. We're supposed to have a good offseason. We're just supposed to enjoy the offseason. Because I usually, when this stuff comes out, it's like, all right, whatever. Like, who cares? When... There's, like, ten different things that get sent in the group in, like, a span of, like, six hours. Like, oh, boy, something else was shot down in our airspace. Like, okay, well, what the fuck's going there on? There was now? some aero tanker, I think is what they called it, flying over Green Bay, Wisconsin, yep. yesterday for mm -hmm. a few hours. They were tracking it. It was just flying over, and then they had the airspace shut down over the Great Lakes. It's like, we're shutting down airspace right now in America? And then, boom, yep, just shot something down. It's like, we got fucking Tom Cruise above us right now? Is I that? wish, yes. He might be. We don't know. I'd, I'd sleep much better at night if we did. I started doing some uh, jumping jacks and jump rope last night Smart. at the house. Nice. I'm like, are we going to fucking war? <laughs> I know there's one generation that ain't going to be able to go. Yep. And it's the one that's probably the age True. group that we would need right now. Don't you think, AJ? Yeah, who would not be able to go? Why? The TikTokers. I'm not sure no. they're ready for war. No. Oh. Yeah, you never know. Some of them. Some of them might be. Yeah, there's some dogs out there. Yeah. We'll record couples. our battle plans. And send it out they to everybody. Would. Yeah, they would want us to lose almost. Kind of. Well, yeah, like, I mean, this country. They'd be making TikToks. Did Gronk make that kick? Which is spyware. So let's move on. You're right. It's, not, let's not do that. Close. So he did not make that kick. No. I don't know if you guys have addressed it or not. We have not. We have not talked I about just it. I was confused. Yeah, I don't know. I just confused because it, how it went, played on there and then played on the internet. I, I don't know what happened. So I saw the video on the internet from the side angle. Clearly a miss. Mm -hmm. Tough wins, though. I mean, that was tough wins right to left. 25-yard mm -hmm. field goal normally doesn't get affected that much by wind, no matter how strong the wind is. Who would have thought building a field in the middle of the desert might be windy at night? <laughs> I'm not, I, I don't know. They should have maybe built a wall there. But I thought he hit the ball pretty solid. Them coming out and celebrating, obviously, this is at the time where they realize, oh, everybody still won $10 million in bets because if Gronk makes it, we're doing it. If Gronk misses it, we're doing it. So there was really no pressure at all on the kick of destiny. No. I do like the fact that Gronk was seemingly pissed off. Mm -hmm. Vinatieri wants to give him a high five, got left hanging. But I think as it ran on the Super Bowl, a uh, bit of a clusterfuck, I think, if we were to describe it. Like, they showed a camera in Ghana. And uh, they showed a camera in, like, Germany. Yep. 
and they showed a camera, I think, in Australia and, like, all over the place. Did they all know exactly what was going on whenever they showed a clip of a zoom-in shot of Gronk's face in a helmet? I don't think so. I don't know if it was explained enough. And by the time they said, you still win, it was already the next commercial, and everybody's like, what the fuck just happened what out was there? That? Yeah. We knew the kick of destiny pretty good. We were not asked to be a part of it. I was surprised by that. Kicking, Fandle. Kind of goes hand in hand. NFL. You would have thought, but we were not, we had no clue about it. We we're not asked about it. Heard Vinatieri was involved, was pumped for Vinatieri, was excited for Vinatieri. So we didn't really know what this was. And every time we like asked for information, felt like we had a pretty good grasp of it. Yeah. Then whenever we watched it all unfold, we're like, what the fuck was that? I, I, I think we were all feeling the same way, but I unfold, we're like, what the fuck was that? I, I, I think we were all feeling the same way, but I thought Gronk kicked it well. And $10 million in free bonus bets was given out to all the customers of FanDuel. Uh, I, I put $20,000 on a coin toss last night. I got uh, $5 in bonus bets. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Wait, what? Excuse me? $5. 10 digs got $5 as well. Connor. I got $20. $20 in bonus bets. It's a tiered system, I guess. I don't know. But we all won bonus bets. And Gronk hit a hell of a ball that didn't go through the uprights, I think, is the big takeaway. Your thoughts, AJ, as you watched it unfold in Ohio? Man, so, like, honestly, my, my kids were waiting to watch it because of how it was hyped up and everything, and they ended up missing it. Like, oh, it was man. happened so quickly, Ooh. all of a sudden, boom, they went and watched it back later. Um, but whatever it was when they cut to it, I'm like, oh, this is it. And then I'm like, oh, it's gone. There it, it came and went, and it was so fast. But also, whatever camera they were shooting on, whatever it was, looked like theatrical. It just looked different. Yeah, it was the zoom-in shot. You know, now, people at FanDuel are telling us that it was live. Okay, right? well. Yeah. yeah. If it was, well, they made it look on the sports book. Yeah. yeah, because the way the live thing in the corner was like out of a movie. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know what I mean? Yep. It, as opposed to like a sport live. Right. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, like that they have it on, in game like that. So it was like out of a movie, almost looked like it was post-edited. Yes. And then the zoom-in artsy shot. Of Gronk's yeah. face to start it, and then rig, which could this all could be live. Yeah, but I think everybody thought that the production value was too good for it yeah. to be live. Yep. yep. And then thirty seconds was seven million, right? What was that? Did they pay for a ten-second ad? Like, how did that? Why was there so much significant? It definitely pain? wasn't thirty. Yeah, no. we know it definitely wasn't thirty no. seconds. So how's that work? I wonder. The like, whole thing was confusing to me. It really was. Me too. I mean, we didn't even. Well, we think, honestly, yeah. didn't even get a chance to digest it in here. Like it, it literally was blink and you'll miss it. And like you yeah. said, like we, if anyone kind of knew what to expect and knew what was going to happen, I feel like we kind of knew the layout, knew exactly what we were hearing it secondhand. Yeah, but but we weren't but, in the preparing yeah, planning. Yeah, exactly. Process. But you know, yeah, ha had been hearing about it uh, for for how long now? There was just like. There was no setup when it first happened. So a kinda, host could – like, they have K, right? K is a part of the FanDuel sure. TV team. Like, a host there – She was watching from the Super Bowl, though. Yeah, she was yeah. in the suite with the FanDuel suite. Looked like a great time. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. they all were watching on their phones and not the TV. Good question. Huh. There's, like, three, four TVs on the wall interesting. behind. That's interesting. the same thing. Do they not play the commercials in the stadium? Mm. Pro probably not. Interesting. That's a great question. Who knows? Good observation, and I like the fact that that's how your brain works. As soon as you see it, well, they watch this tiny little screen. There's fucking four of them in there. <laughs> I like that you did that immediately. But in the FanDuel suite, Kay was videotaping somebody's phone while the whole, the whole FanDuel team was there pretty much. Yeah. And so they did the same. They all thought it went in, and then they cut the clip whenever it was said it, it did not go in. Yes. So I, I, don't, I don't fully know how or why. Like, that was quick. The 30-second spot, because if they did Why buy Why does it Kay just host that, though? Yeah. You know, just have somebody, it. hey, welcome to the Kick of Destiny. We built a field in the middle of the desert. We are currently live. The score is boom, bang. Right. Right now, 24-14 or whatever it was at the time. Yep. And now, if Gronk makes this kick, $10 million of free bets, and then it's just like an easy boom, figured out. But I think a lot of people were just very confused on it all. Because the kick itself took five seconds, maybe. Like, I didn't know that part. I thought I, I didn't know if it would just be one kick. I thought they'd put 30 seconds on the clock, and maybe he'd have, you know, like, if he missed the first one, he'd, he'd set up and, and try to kick it again. But if they did pay for a 30 seconds, but, like, it was. It was, it was 10 to 15 seconds. Hey, and we're talking about it, though. I guess that's the key. True. Is anybody else? 
Not on like TV. On the internet, there's a lot of yeah. Dirt they're talking that. on the internet yeah. for sure about it. <laughs> the internet's going to let their jokes. It looked like it went in too. In real time, it looked kind of like it went in. Yeah, and then the shot it also looked fake too because the camera, the ball looked fake. Yeah. I don't want to. I don't want to burn any bridges or make anyone upset. But I'm just. Like yeah, it's the, hard not to. Like the cameras were too nice. This. Like it was. It Tough was a movie. Angle. You're right. It looked like a movie and not like a live shot. Yeah. So your cameras were too good. You used. You had too, Your technology was just great. So I guess that's a problem. Yeah. So it was. There's the rig. That was shot right there. Looks. That makes it look. Yeah, it looks like a movie. Yeah. Yeah. And that shot yeah. as well. Yeah. It's very windy. Why do you want to do one step? You thought it was in. <sighs> Gale Force wins out there. Bro, from 25 yards to like. So it wasn't. You would fireworks. think the wind. Oh, Vinny. Oh, no. I just don't know. Hold on. The people we can judge are the people that come running in. Right? Because we have the cell phone video from behind the scenes. I think one yeah. of the back says Putnam. One of them says Fox. Man, I can't believe he got it that high and it got that affected by the wind in a 25-yard span. Honestly, that does not happen. You kick that thing pretty well. So all these people come running in. There's a back view. Yeah, they're pumped. We should count. pause at the end of that thing. Here's how we could just easy. Let's just go ahead and... Uh, I guess it is 30 seconds, though. Look yeah. at that. Yeah. yeah. Just seems so quick because I'll... Hey, time flies when you're having fun. That's right. Hey, True. Man. <sighs> Looks get, good. Get to the end of this thing. There's a curveball. And then let's pause it. Keep going. Keep going. Pause. All right. Ugh. Fuck. It's going to be tough to count those people, huh? Yeah. They're all dressed like Rihanna's dancers. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh -huh. right, yeah. Go to the cell phone video from FanDuel. Uh, there. Yep. Here. Now watch the after. Fireworks are coming. Boom. And Boom. then everybody runs. Pumped. Okay, so we got to find this. They're all kind of running to the right there, huh? Mm-hmm. Is that right to Gronk's back? They run right to Gronk's back. Let's watch that video back, yep. right? There was like, what, two people in front yeah. of him? Yeah, Putnam and Fox. The Putnam fire, and Fox. The fireworks right? and the celebrating does confuse you because he did miss. Yeah, but everybody still wins. True. So True. there is a little bit of a... Yeah, so there's the back. So they'd be coming from that mm -hmm. side, right? I think it is. I think it was. Hey, there's, I think it was. Huh? Do you not think so? Because all those people would fuck up if they sure. do this yeah. numerous times. Well, right? No matter different. what, that just proves that it was just taped, right? No. no. No, I think there's a chance it was live. They're saying it was live. Yeah, it could have been. Why would, how could they... They couldn't lie about that, could they? Why would they? Yep. Anybody could. What do you mean? Yeah, but all those people would have to keep a secret, including Vinatieri, who will just get in here and get boozed up. Yeah. Like, can we right. just say, too, the halftime show and had to be recorded because they don't want anything messed up? You could say taped it live. Yeah. Just same reason why they, they lip sync all the national or all the halftime performances. And this is what we were saying going into the Super Bowl. Like, a lot can go wrong when something is live. But they're still adamant that it was live, though. Mm -hmm. You know, so like, Very. like Kay Adams has come out and said it was live. Yeah. And then she was quote tweeting people that were saying like, nah, that ain't live. Pretty much that ain't live. CGI. And, and then she like Kay Adams was with the FanDuel people at the Super Bowl. She still, she, I think she's in there. Yeah, she's still in Arizona. In mm -hmm. their sports book right now. Yep. So unless she's just doing the job for them, which would be an interesting thing. Right. They're very, they've been very adamant that it is Also, live. why wouldn't you do like score the game or something like to show? That's well, that's what the host. There had to have been, they, yeah. they should yeah. have had some sort 24, of. 24, 21. They must have really practiced that thing because those were fucking perfect camera shots and camera cuts. And Vinatieri knew that he had to give the head nod. Right. Because right? yep. if you watch it back, go back to the uh, camera, the, the commercial <laughs> angle. Watch Vinny in the back still nodding. So they obviously said, we're going to go Rob Gronkowski, Boom. walk out, Vinatieri, then back to the wide shot. Gronk knows that shot's happening. Vinatieri knows the shot's coming at him. Head nod, yeah, yeah. Then he's still head nodding, then he stops. So he knew that he was going to be on. Yeah. Oh, I mean, man. if you're spending that type of money uh, for a 30-second Super Bowl ad, you're going to rehearse right. the camera that, shots. That's pretty times. executable. 
and like an AK, a couple AK cameras can make it look very good. Yeah. yeah. Putting up a graphic, <laughs> knowing if he misses, still win. That's two options, right? You yep. just got to put yep. one yeah. or hit the other one. Yep. Boom. I don't know, AJ. Oh, maybe, Jim. Well, I don't know. AJ <laughs> looks live, might not be live. What do you think? Yeah, the live thing in the corner makes it look fake. Yeah. Yes. And the guys, I guess I'm just seeing the refs down there say it's no good. That's the first time I've really seen them. Yeah, that's how we found out that it was a miss watching live mm -hmm. because the ball looked good. It did. Yeah, I thought it was in. Look at the wind blowing that smoke and oh, those yeah. fireworks, too. It was whipping. Yep. Look yes. at the people's Let's hair see when, that. when Vinny Let's see that again. Are there flags at the top of the field goal post? Let's see the wind. Yes, flags, Ooh, yeah, on, windy. Top, flags on top it of the post windy. are breezy. Look at the, look the, the, the brush in the back. It is windy. On the uh, oh, cell phone yeah, camera, yeah. you can see the flags better. They are directly yeah. sideways. Was that Camille, you think? Yes, next to Vinny. Oh, uh -huh. Yeah. And th when she's standing Ooh. directly next to him. His girlfriend. Gronk's fiance. fiance. I thought, oh, I, I don't know, married, fiance. Wife. Wide. 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 Whole crew. Wide. Oh, yeah, Gron it's Gronk's family. Didn't he say he's with Gronk's family? And that's his yeah. agent, I think, right there. And that's his dad to the left of Vinny. And uh, okay. his agent on the right there, I Who's believe. Who's the guy in the sweet glasses in the back? Is that Chris? That might be Gronk. Uh, Gordy. It's Gordy. Gordy, Gordy okay. Gronkowski. <laughs> where's Chris? where's uh, Chris? Is that Mojo on the right? Huh. No, I think that's his agent. Oh, uh, over from the Gronk Beach Or is that party, Danny probably. Boy Hustle Hard? Could be. Yeah, it could be. No, I think that's his agent. I believe that's his agent. The Br Cats Brothers, I believe, is who that is. Oh, I man. I might be wrong. Uh, huh. That's a shit. Damn. Vinatieri got left hanging. Yeah, that was the hardest part for me. Oh. He was going to spank him. Yep. Yeah, should have. <laughs> He's going to spank him there. All right, let's go. Hey, the phones are back. Okay. Nice. Also, there was no lag from commercial to commercial. So, like, it was completely like someone just hit play and played the video. That'd be another sign. Whoa. Of Whoa. I, think, yeah, I think it's very easily executable to make that live. But I'm just saying if you're really looking at this thing. The only thing you're easily executable in theory. Yes. Live tech, anything can happen. True. Yeah. All you need is one, and that thing is delayed, blurry, yep. standard def, you know, something like that. Would have taken massive, massive gut sap to do that actually shoot live. For right. sure. And they're saying they did. Concept, we think good concept. Kick of destiny, $10 million on the line, good idea. Execution, we think there's obviously some question marks. People were very confused while watching it. And also, middle of a desert. Gonna be a little windy. Yeah. People are saying they should have had uh, Jack Black because of Pick of Destiny. Oh yeah, maybe he's standing on top of the upright. That'd be cool. Yep. <laughs> maybe <laughs> maybe he's on Could've top of the upright doing his thing. What a time! <laughs> That's being scrutinized though. A lot of people. Oh, talk. Yeah, big time. A lot of them. You start doing the math too. Seven million for that. Ten million in bets. Yep. Mm -hmm. How much? Seventeen million. How much was it for Grant to kick it? 15 to 20 million. <laughs> I don't know about that, but Whoa, probably a couple a million. Yeah. Let's assume. Vinatieri they had to pay, and then yep. had to pay him more to get him there to do that. Right. Mm -hmm. Remember? Then the shoot and the setup and the tech of all that. Yeah. I mean, they had to build that field. They in built the, the, the field. Yeah. Those giant cranes with those huge lights, too. Yep. Fireworks. That's probably 20 it's plus operation. million dollar operation. 25. Yeah. How many? Did it get a lot of people to sign up, you think? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, your kids are pumped for it. In 10 yeah, years. your kids are yeah. looking forward to it. Yeah. They can't gamble, yeah. but. Yeah. yeah, they said 10, 12 years from now, they're going to sign up now. Yeah, they'll still have a $5 free bet waiting for them. The Bush Light one was awesome. It was. With yeah, Sarah yeah. McLaughlin. Yep. For just 20 cents a day, you can give these blah, 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 and then push. Mm-hmm. Relax. You like, the dog one? you like the dog one where they show the dog grow up with the girl? Yeah, I love that. Very oh, crazy. Yeah. That was very, I, think, I was like sad. Well, was yeah. Sad. So I oh, saw yeah. like Val, you know, I saw yeah. our dog as that video was taking place with our baby on the way and that whole thing. It was, that one certainly yeah. was a hard, the other dog one too, where you got the dog a friend. Yep. When the dog was tearing yep. up the whole house and mm -hmm. then he bring home the dog a friend. And I think that was for some crate company, a uh, kennel crate company, mm -hmm. I think, or maybe far, I don't remember what it was. That one got us a little bit. Um, big pop out of John Travolta. Ooh, yeah, that was great. John Summer loving. How about when he did? Oh, <laughs> and then he does <laughs> in the middle of the road. Yeah, I mean, still he got still, still got it. Good. Yeah, still got it. John Travolta alongside the Scrubs guys. That was a good one. Oh yeah, yeah. That was a good one. It was good too. Uh, he looks good. John Travolta's like sixty-five. Breaking Bad did one. Great. 
Breaking Bad had yep. one. Yeah, they're poppers. Tony Romo didn't let us down. That was yeah, Romo. That, Michelob. That was great. Yeah. I thought he was a Corona guy. Turns out, fucking right over to Michelob. Mm-hmm. He was in another commercial, too. Yeah, he, he made was. an appearance. He threw a football with Coach Snoop. Yes. Oh, what yeah. was that one? Oh. Skechers. Skechers. Yeah. There yeah. it is. Snoop. Skechers. All right. The uh, okay. <laughs> the Blue Moon one was, was pretty, pretty good. Well. Oh, the Cores and Miller. Miller Coors. Yeah, where those guys were fighting oh, and blue just moon. put the fucking Boom. Blue Moon. Actually, it's blue, blue Moon, moon commercial. commercial. That was pretty good. Pretty high society of Blue Moon to come in at the end. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Let them scrap it out. That's right. Tubi. Tubi had the one where they thought someone oh, hijacked yeah. you or something That was, was good. That was a trend. It so, certainly Stop got me. some attention. Mm-hmm. No Budweiser horses. No Budweiser at yeah. all. No. It's no. the first time they came out of They got out of it. Yeah, they got oh, out of the Dor- game. Doritos, major miss this year, unfortunately. Jack Harlow, the triangle. Yeah, that yeah, commercial. Yeah, that one was tough. Sweet. Doritos Sweet. always yeah. has a good commercial. Did Budweiser drop out because we got the 500 coming this weekend, and they know we're just going to fucking dominate that? I think Bud Light had a commercial. <laughs> they did. Yep. Yeah, it was just my, the my, my tie. tie. It was Rooster. My tie, dancing. Oh, yeah, yeah, him yeah, dancing. On hold. Yep. Also, they've sent Bud Light what? to Kansas City. For the uh, parade, oh, free yeah. Bud Light from Jamal Charles and Bud Light what? for the city of Kansas City. Remember, the last Super Bowl parade had actual drunk driver stolen car yeah. take the parade route mm-hmm. about 30 right. minutes before they did the parade. That's yeah. right. Pretty electrifying start, honestly, to a parade. And now they got free booze, and they have one under their belts. Let's assume this Super Bowl parade is going to be pretty epic over there in Kansas City. Yeah, after a loss, too, and all the talk, I assume there's going to be even more people out there, you know, letting everyone know. Still got it. think it's going to be loud on Wednesday? Yeah, I think it's going to be louder. Bigger than the first one, for sure. What if they get boats, too, just to mock Tampa Bay's boat parade? They should do the duck boats. A couple of those duck boats rolling through town. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, joining us now, ladies and gentlemen, is a insider for the NFL, the league, the network it owns, uh, the website it owns, and the streaming service it owns called NFL Plus, which has been a smashing success. Yeah. This man is a host of a podcast called Insiders, where he, Pelicero, and Garofolo talk in t-shirts about what they know and what they think. Oh, yeah. They did a eight and a half hour pregame show alongside Rich Eisen, Mooch, Kurt Warner, what? Emmanuel Sanders, yep. um, Panetta. Panetta. Brian Dawkins, yeah. Cynthia Freeland. No Michael Irvin, who's filing a $100 million lawsuit against a person that kept him out of Sunday's coverage. Yep. But nonetheless, ladies and gentlemen, the host of the weekly wrap-up with Rap Sheet and Friends, us being a friends, he being Rap Sheet, Ian Rappaport. Hey! Hey! Ian, safe travels. Safe travels were had, it appears. Congratulations on getting back home after an incredible season out of you, pal. Hey, Thank you. I appreciate that. I'm, I'm not driving, by the way, just so people. Yeah, you never drive. We don't think you actually have the ability to drive. You are a child who happens to be a great insider uh, for the NFL. You had an incredible year, Ian. You did great. Congratulations. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Uh, Let's talk about some things. Uh, Aaron Rodgers going into his darkness retreat starting today. What else do you know? Yeah, so I was told Monday to Thursday is his darkness retreat. Um, And then I saw he's coming on your show Tuesday, which is tomorrow. Um, so maybe he's doing your show from the darkness or perhaps he's delaying the darkness for a day or so. Um, oh. the timeline is unclear, but I was told imminent darkness coming decision for Rogers looming, uh, and then all sorts of different ways. So basically the way it was explained to me, and I know we talked about this in the past was he will tell them what he wants. He will tell them where he wants to go, whether it's with them, whether it's back into the darkness of, or I guess the light of retirement or to another team, and they will accommodate and facilitate him. So if he wants, if he tells them, like, hey, the Jets are my team, they will say, okay, we will now work with you to work on a trade with the Jets. That is where it stands. Okay, and the Jets have inquired already with the Green Bay Packers on what a trade would potentially look like for Aaron Rodgers, allegedly, and they might have done that in other places. It's Aaron Rodgers, so I think it gets made a new story. So you're saying he delayed the darkness, this thing that he is – you know, committing to to make a massive life decision, feels he needs to do. He's delaying it so he can do Aaron Rodgers Tuesday? Is that what your sources are telling you? Uh, I I don't know. I just know it was supposed to be Monday to Thursday. It was very, very specifically told that timeline. By, so by now, who? The Rogers, darkness retreat guru? Who who, who told you, you know, that name? Uh, Jordo? I, I, like I had a really good I had a really good darkness source on this one, some you know, close to Rogers' darkness situation. Um, I felt good about it. Um, I still feel good about it. Um, now, it has been happened in the past where Rodgers has changed his plans. Certainly, he is a fella. 
Um, but that is my that is my story, and I'm sticking to it. Darkness and Monday to Thursday. Okay, tomorrow might be a rough day for you and your sources. I just have a hunch. I'm not 100% sure. We okay. di- I think we did announce a few days ago that, Aaron, that Aaron Rodgers Tuesday was happening. I think, didn't yeah, on we? Friday. On Friday, we said Aaron Rodgers Tuesday is happening. So our source says, had never said anything about a Monday darkness, but your sources right. might know better than me, and there's a lot around this particular retreat for the future of the NFL. Derek Carr, he's going to be a free okay. agent. Is he going to the Jets, you think? is that he, They're also going to look in to Derek Carr. What do you think happens with him, Ian Rappaport? Well, with the Jets, so, you know, obviously there's interest in Aaron Rodgers. I think for with, – with Derek Carr said to be a free agent, you know, it had he been traded, which he's not going to be now, he would have been the first domino. Now, I think there are some teams you – know, like, and I know the Saints are still interested. I know he's still interested in them. Now, when he's a free agent, he could potentially just negotiate his own new contract with the Saints, not have to worry about his old contract. Hold on. Did he, that might d- still, doesn't he want $40 million? He's not going to get $40 million on the open market, is he? I don't think so, but it wasn't forty million. It was forty million guaranteed, spread out over two years. So it was thirty-three this year. Mm. Now, might he get a little less than that? I think that's possible. But free agency sometimes dictates different things than what we expect. So we'll see what the market is. But I think with the Jets, you know, and a lot of teams, Aaron Rodgers is first, right? I mean, he's he's Aaron Rodgers. So regardless of whether or not he's going to go in the darkness Monday or Tuesday or Wednesday, he's still the best quarterback out there. And I think. Many teams, including the Jets, have him at the top, as he should be. And when he decides, they will go to what is essentially the next. That's one thing you get when you're, you know, multi-year MVP and one of the best quarterbacks who's played. So you think Derek Carr is just going to have to wait that one out then, right? Wait the darkness out? No, because he could sign with a team that is not into Rodgers based on all the different factors, right? Like, Rodgers is clearly the best quarterback but you don't know how many years he would be committing to. It would be more expensive, right? Like $60 million in one year cash. Now, cap is spread out a little bit, so you can you can deal with the cap hit, but it's a lot of money for one year, and you don't know how much you're getting. Whereas if you're getting Derek Carr or you're signing Jimmy Garoppolo, then, you know, it's probably three or four years. He said he restructured his contract. Go ahead, AJ. <laughs> Ian, what do you he, think there? He, he's going. He's going. Sorry, he's going to restructure his contract. Uh, I would highly doubt take a pay cut, but restructure for cap. Probably whether he stays or goes. I oh. think with the Packers or with a new team, he would. Rest- now you could talk to your sources about that Tuesday. Those sources. Sis would probably know better, but that is what I was told. The sources told us. Sis has told us. Definitely will not understand for cap reasons. There's ways to restructure contract. He yes. already he already said that. Go ahead, AJ. Yes, 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 yes. Ian, uh, if uh, if Aaron is in fact traded, what do you think the compensation will be for the Packers? God, it is so hard. I mean, I would imagine a first round pick would be included. It's, yeah, it's Aaron Rodgers, but yeah, I'd say, but. But it's just, you know, you, it's a lot of money, and you might be only getting one year or two years. So I'm sure it's, you know, more than a one, but is it like the Russell? Like four years ago, Rodgers almost couldn't be traded because the, the, the compensation would be too high. I mean, it'd be, you almost couldn't do it. Um, now it's like it's going to be a lot because he's still a great quarterback, but because of all the different factors, it might not be quite as much as you think because you have to pay the money as well. How's the Jets cap? It's okay. Um, and I have to look at like how much money they have now, but definitely something they can do. Definitely okay. like the, the cash is not an issue and the cap they could figure out without much of an issue. He's going in the darkness on the other side. He's going to be seeing gangrene, I think. Uh, that, that, that might be uh, – that might be tough, obviously, for Packers fans to handle, but who knows what the darkness will tell Aaron. Aaron well, might want to go well, live his life. Might want to retire after coming out of there, which he, is a very real thing. He might, but, uh, you know, I would say this. For Packers fans, who I'm sure I, – I don't I don't know what Packers fans think, but I can imagine they could feel all sorts of ways about this because it's been a couple off-seasons of this. I highly doubt that he will be traded in the conference. So either way, you're probably not going to have to see him except on TV. 
Or on a, in the Super Bowl, obviously. Or Aaron right. Jordan right. Love and oh. the boys make it to the Super Bowl, and Aaron does right. as well. Let's move on. Let's talk about a Super Bowl offense coordinator who's going to become the head coach for the Indianapolis Colts. Is that right? How'd this take place? They did a couple Zoom calls. They liked what they saw out of him. And had he traveled out to Indy to meet face to face with Jim and Ballard and everybody, or is he just uh, getting the job because his resume and a couple good Zoom calls? Old Shane Steichen, new head coach of the Colts. Uh, one Zoom call, and they flew out to him last Saturday, I believe, Welcome, um, to go sit with him in Philly. Uh, he is a really impressive young coach, and he's actually one of the more interesting figures. Um, so last year, you know, the Eagles were struggling. They were one in something, five or whatever it was. And kind of quietly, he took over play calling. And I know that, you know, this was not something that he wanted public. I know he didn't want it to be like he was going to come in and, Hell you know, yeah. fix things. Like he wanted... I think it was important that, you know, Sirianni's doing an incredible job, and I think it was important that that was very well known. But he did come in and really fix things play calling wise, and they went on quite a run. Great run this year. Yes. Uh, a guy. He has done. We got a dog. Found a guy. I, look, I'll say this, Pat. We got a dog. You never, know, you never know what's going to happen. You never know how a coach is going to turn out. I think this is going to be a good one. Yeah, I think this so, too. Coach. It probably takes us out of the Aaron Rodgers sweepstakes, though, if we look at what the Philadelphia Eagles offense is and put us right into the C.J. Stroud. Yeah, I mean, I would be a little surprised if it was a first-year coach and just his first thing was, here's Aaron Rodgers. Like, I would imagine the Colts want oh. to develop a quarterback rather than, okay. uh, rather than trade for one. So, I, I mean, mm -hmm. whether it's C.J. Stroud or whether they – I mean, could they trade? I mean, could they get aggressive and trade? Ballard hasn't quite done that, but oh, it's certainly soon. possible. I mean, it's you know, it's going to be a really interesting April. CJ Stroud is this big. Yep. Like when I'm standing. Yeah. Yeah. He's a big guy. He's fucking massive. Massive Huge. hands. Huge hands. Bryce Young, not as big. True. Bryce Young, though, Steph Curry of football, they're saying. That's right. Steph Curry, 6'4". It's a big deal. Oh, CJ Stroud is this big. Mm -hmm. and, and against Georgia. Yeah. He ran people over. Mm -hmm. Has massive legs. Yep. Threw for 350. Is he fucking Jalen Hurts? AJ, AJ, is this is a spike man about to get actual Jalen Hurts here? And we already have the most expensive offense line in football. Let's hope they remember how to do that. Hey, let's let's hope they remember how to play football on that offensive line. That'd be great for all parties, including yourselves. Uh, that's something that maybe gets yeah. forgotten about. And I think the offensive line coach, real shame going to Houston. That's a real shame. Yep. Yeah. He got an interview down there, I think, right? The Colts offensive line guy got an interview down in Houston? Uh, I think so. Yeah, he did. He did great in that interview, that's too. Right. Hey, Houston, you're going to okay. love him. You're going to absolutely great. love this yep. guy. He's so good, dude. He's so good. As soon as he gets a the job, they uh. suck. I don't know what the fuck happened. Interesting. I, I, you Weird. Know, get, oh, he might get hired in Houston. Thank God is what all Colts send. <laughs> Chris Strasser is his name. I think he's getting off. For whatever reason, he did not work here. They, they spent a lot of line, a lot of money on that offensive line. He did not work. But we, the Colts are in the Super Bowl next year. We got the third worst odds to win a Super Bowl. Yeah. Just know that. We got Spike Man coming to town. Really? And, yeah. It's yep. bad. Plus 25,000. Houston Texans right there below us. And uh, Cardinals. Yeah, and the Cardinals, Cardinals plus 28,000. Nice. That's weird, though, because it's, like, it's not like the Colts aren't talented. I mean, the defense is still really talented. The offensive line's talented. They got some weapons. Like, Matt Ryan still. Just, I don't know. That offensive line, a lot of question marks. You got a, pre Matt Ryan. Yeah, got yeah, a pretty good are, running back. What are we doing with Matt Ryan, you think? What do we do there? I would be extremely surprised if Matt Ryan is on the Colts by the time the what? 2023 season begins. Now, I, think we owe I know that might million. surprise you. Yep. I think we owe him like $20 million, don't we? I think we owe him a lot of money. Uh, I think the guarantee, I'd have to look, but I thought the guarantee was 12 Oh, okay. I'd have, so to, the dead I'd have to check on that. 20 uh, Now, he also, he's got a decision to make, too. He's 37 or 38 years old. Benched a little bit. You know, I think he's got probably got a decision as well, but. Uh, I would be very surprised if he's back. Zito just, and I hope you're safe over there. Sounds like traffic is really starting to heat up. Zito just said I'm in my ear, good. which leads us to our next event, our next conversation. You're telling me Spikeman and Lamar Jackson 
are going to be Indianapolis wow. Colts. Is that is that what's going on? Ooh. And what's Lamar Jackson's story? Have they not got a deal done? Are they planning on franchise tagging him? Non-exclusive, exclusive? What do you think happens to him? And how, what have you heard? So uh, that was kind of an interesting thing that we I ended up uh, reporting some of that over the weekend. So basically, you know, they have said John Harbaugh has come out very hard and said two hundred percent chance Lamar Jackson is their quarterback, our guy, and uh, right. And I'm saying I'm not so sure about that because I, I mean I know they're going to tag him, and they could base they could do a non-exclusive tag, which is if someone signed them to an offer sheet, they get two first-round picks. They could do an exclusive tag, um, like you know you just end up signing it a more, much more expensive contract. No one can negotiate with him, but you still could trade him. He could sign it, and then you could trade him. Then he could work out a new deal, um, and that would probably get you more than two first-round picks. That would get you more like the Russell Wilson, you know, package. Um, but there is a possibility that the Ravens could be tempted with a windfall of picks. And Lamar Jackson is awesome. He's the kind of talent you, you know, weigh your whole career for if you're a head coach or a GM. I now think, based on what I'm reporting, that a trade is, is possible. I mean, wow. it, expensive, but possible. We got Spikeman and Lamar Jackson. Wow. Are you kidding me? Tw- plus 25000 right now on Super Bowl odds. Go ahead and, uh, go ahead and hammer that. Go ahead, AJ. Uh, Ian, with Eric Bieniemy and his whole situation going on, uh, do you see him becoming a head coach soon? And why is he really supposedly going to, uh, I guess, try to get other offensive coordinator positions when he's the offensive coordinator for the Super Bowl champs? Uh, so I do not see him getting a head coach, uh, becoming a head coach soon. So he obviously he's out of the Colts, and that's and that's it. So he's not in the Cardinals one. So he will be an offensive coordinator next year. He's got interviews this week, I believe, with the Ravens and the Commanders. Date coming because they have a – they got the parade. So Why would he leave Kansas parade. City? Yeah. Uh, he is not the play caller. He does a very good job. He is very well respected, but he is not the play caller. So he would go then be a play caller for a was. defensive head coach. So if it's Ron Rivera or if it's John Harbaugh, you know – there is the thinking that it's a better chance of becoming a head coach if you step out from that system. You're your own man. You run the offense. You don't have to worry about Andy Reid there. And then, you know, if that impresses people enough, maybe then you become a head coach next year. And I do think one of those things happens. Rap, all of us are living and dying by the information that we get. Okay, so I understand this is going to take place. Okay. Didn't you tell us he's calling plays? Didn't you say he calls plays? You told us he calls plays. That was a big he, deal. He, he, he helps with play calling. He's involved with play calling. But Andy Reid is, is ultimately – the guy. Andy Reid ultimately has final say on play calls and everything else. Which I so thought... that's why, like... Go ahead. No, I was to say, that's why, like, there's been, for better or worse, some debate over that, his effectiveness, whatever, because Andy Reid is still the guy, and everyone knows Andy Reid is absolutely incredible. So stepping out from that shadow, doing it kind of on your own might help him become a head coach. McVay's had a few guys that have gotten out from underneath him calling plays and had success. Kevin O'Connell, Zach Taylor, a couple others to be named. A yeah. few. Sirianni, though, handing over the play calling to the guy that's going to be our head coach feels really good. Yeah. Thank you for thank you for saying that. You said since last year, week six? Yeah, they – it was the mid – I got never a dog. Found a, I mean, he's, he's, he's really good. Plus a nice guy, not that that matters. And he's an he's offensive dead. guy, so if he has success, we still got him. Bingo. We don't have. We don't have. Oh my God, the Colts are w- plus twenty five thousand. Get your fucking five dollar bonus bet from Gronkowski attempting a kick <laughs> mm-hmm. in the middle of the desert last night, and just go ahead and sprinkle it on there. Ty Schmidt has a question for you in Rapport. Yeah, Rap Sheet. We've been seeing that uh, Rex Ryan is interviewing for the Broncos DC job. Is there any chance that that actually happens? And who else might Sean Payton be looking at if that doesn't happen? Uh, so I I do believe that happened, uh, and you know I mean I don't. I would be a little surprised if Rex Bryant ended up as a defensive coordinator. And honestly, I don't know why he would. TV life is good. He's made a ton of money. Like, I don't, I don't know. I, I don't know. I, I, that would be strange to me. Um, you know, as far as who Sean Payton is interviewing, I know Sean Desai had a really, really good interview. And that was the guy that Vic Fangio recommended. He runs the back end for the Seattle defense, a good young coach. Um, the linebackers coach from the Eagles, Rallis is his last name. I uh, would also expect him to get an interview with the Broncos. Now, he's someone who might also be a potential fill-in for Jonathan Gannon 
Gannon. He Gannon. becomes the Cardinals Gannon. head coach. Um, so, you know, I think that there's some possibilities there for the, the Broncos. I thought there was a chance the enemy maybe goes to the Cardinals, and that's what they were waiting for for after the Super Bowl because offensive guy, also known to be a – attention to detail guy, but I assume that the Bidwell character who owns the Cardinals is just looking for the complete opposite of what they had the last time. We, we had offensive <laughs> guru guy last time. That didn't work. Let, defense. Mm -hmm. Let's see what the defensive guy can do for us. Excited to see if it works out. Connor has a question for you, Rap. Yeah, Rap, she former Cardinals guy, Cliff Kingsbury. Is he back? What's he doing? Is he going to be coached next year or what? So he... He interviewed with the Texans. Did not get that offensive coordinator job, uh, oh. or didn't want the offensive coordinator job. Oh, uh, he had no has been talking, according to I think Josino with the Ravens. Would be surprised if he lands there. Uh, I think if, uh, I was always told that Cliff Kingsbury wants to and needs to take a year off. Uh, I know it was not a fun experience this past year. Taking a year off is very helpful. He is rich. He's made a lot of money on and off the field. I would be very surprised if he's really cool. uh, an assistant this yeah, year. Yeah. Um, we'll see. Perhaps he decides to be one of those consultants where you like, like Fangio, where you kind of come in and help a team but don't have the immediate pressure. Oh, and I would still, be surprised. Still win a ring if they win? Mm -hmm. That's a pretty good start. Yeah. I, yeah, I think that's right. So I hope Cliff chooses to do that. I hope he goes to Thailand, uh -huh. does a little of this, mm -hmm. does a little of that, kind of gets himself. A, a little of what? Huh? Does a little what? Fuck it. That's a city in Thailand. Yeah. Also, Bangkok, right? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. we'll What's see. capital of Thailand? Familiar. Bangkok. Bangkok. Boom. Classic. Go ahead, AJ. That was rude. What about Jimmy G, Ian? Where do you see uh, Jimmy G ending up, and when could that happen? Raiders. Huh? He's going to the Raiders? Uh, he's going to have a good market. Because, you know, it's like we, we talk about all these teams that want Rodgers or want Derek Carr. Like, some of these guys are not going to get them. I think Jimmy G, you know, you take a look at where he could land. He's got the Patriots ties and he's got the 49ers ties. And that's that's like a lot of the league, really. I mean, that's that's a lot of different systems he could fit into. So, like, you know, I think the Miami. a team like the Rainbow. Bucks would make some sense if they're going to spend. The Titans, if they uh, move on from Ryan Tannehill, either a trade or a cut. The Raiders obviously make some sense, although, you know, the, oh, the problem with the Raiders – is that Jared Stidham came in and played so well. So, like, what if that was real? You know, like, you know what if that was real and he's not going to make a lot of money and you just oh, have yeah. a great young quarterback for cheap? Connor uh, thought he Jets was the one that was – Hey, Jimmy Garoppolo. Boston Connor thought for a good month and a half that Stidham was Stidham. He's going to take the place of Tom Brady up there in New England. And obviously, he gets hurt, finds his way to the Las Vegas. He looked good out there. Ball. Yeah. He has the moxie, too, it seems like, to be a guy. The king of Friday Night Is that something they're thinking about, Ian? Are they thinking about, do we give Stidham this opportunity or do we move on? That's a real combo happening behind the scenes in Las Vegas? Yeah, that's a real combo. Uh, that's wow. that's a real thing. And, cool and you know, if two months ago, this would have been, like, the stupidest conversation ever. But he looked really good. And I will say this, and I'm not – I don't want to make this about mm. – Oh, no. Stidham and the way he – oh, no. Not on your back. You're back. You don't make over. this. You don't I'm make back. this okay. about what? I don't want to make this about me, but I started him week 16 of uh, fantasy Boom. on a whim. Just kind of took a chance because I needed a quarterback. 50 fantasy points took me to the finals. I will always be indebted to Jared Stidham. He did a great job for me. Do you guys have like a losers bracket for the playoffs? Uh, no. If you lose, you just yeah. You're out, and then you, you want to just sit all your guys so you can get a lower seed or oh. get a you know better draft pick next year. We didn't oh, do yeah. the punishment. I mean, I would never do that. Oh, my God. I forgot. We suck, dude. That was supposed to be you. Yeah, him and AJ. That was supposed to be you. They were supposed to sleep together all Super Bowl week. Bill and what? AJ were supposed to wear a sign around Radio <laughs> Row because they lost fantasy football. That's yeah, right. I'm a jackass. Why? Wow. Mm-hmm. We got last place. Okay. I you did get last place. I got punished more place. than anybody. I just hit myself in a dick with a ball. <laughs> Ten digs says, that's unbelievable. Yeah, you got last Bold. place. Bruce was trying to run a Mickey Mouse league. He was like, well, they're in last place for now, but then we're going to have a loser's bracket, and then whoever's the loser of the loser's bracket, so you guys can still play fantasy football. I'm like, the season's over, bro. We didn't make the playoffs. What are we talking about? Everybody gets a, tro everybody gets a trophy? He's like, well, the season's early. You know, you still want to. I'm like, Bruce. 
These fuckers are last. Okay, yeah. that's it. They lost. That's fine. Because I was in the loser's bracket, obviously, and I didn't want to. I mean, we didn't. I don't even think we did a single. We didn't sub. We didn't trade. We didn't do anything. CFO Phil and I really checked out of that league early. Oh, yeah. But to. we forgot to punish you guys. Did the loser of your. What the loser of your league do, Ian? Uh, we don't do that in our league. I don't oh. know why. But I see. I, I was. Of all the random internet content, I love the, like, this idiot lost and has to stand on the <laughs> cool. you know side of the highway naked with a stupid sign. Like I, those things are really I appreciate those. The Waffle House challenge. Why? Waffle House. Twenty four hours one. in the Waffle House. Every waffle you eat takes yeah. off an hour. How about the beer mile? <laughs> yeah, the sure. Beer mile. That thing. Wait, is, what's that one? Uh, I just we watched Nick yeah. just puke all over the place. Everywhere. Pretty much. He had to drink a beer. Wide. Run a lap. Wide. 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 Drink a beer. Wide. Kick a field goal. Wide. Drink a beer. Wide. Complete a pass. Wide. I think, right? Yeah, it was something like that. Run a 40, throw a ball, pot a ball, kick a ball. I believe there was sucks. also a couple shots of rumple mints at yeah. the start to start it off. Three shots to start it off. <laughs> yeah, he's blacked out, and it took him a long time to complete all the tasks because he didn't know where he was, and he was sick. Mm -hmm. So there was a lot of that. Tone Diggs has a question for Ian as we let you go here. Yeah, Ian, I got a follow up on Lamar because you talked about how okay. just the compensation for Aaron five years ago would have been inconceivable for a trade. Is that not how the league views Lamar? Because, I mean, Russ got traded for two firsts and two seconds and players. Like, wouldn't Lamar go for potentially an inconceivable amount? Because they're not going to uh, use the franchise that's only two firsts because as a franchise, they so would hold get on. killed so, for only So that's first. a question. The non-exclusive franchise tag, Tone okay. is, brings up a great point. So teams just have to pay him more money and then they just get him and they have to give two firsts? Or is that, ne like, negotiated? More than two firsts. We want uh, three firsts. We want four firsts. What? We want two firsts, two twos, and a player. Like, is Baltimore saying that, or are the rules you get to outbid and then you just owe two? Is that how that goes? Well, yeah. So, basically, if it's the uh, non-exclusive tag, do you have me? Okay, I'm, I'm going over a bridge. I don't know if you guys got me. No, you're good. Is a Brooklyn Bridge is for, for sale. <laughs> All good. We hear you. <laughs> Okay, um, so if it's a non-exclusive tag, somebody would sign them to an offer sheet, and then the Ravens would either match or it would they would get two first-round picks. The interesting thing here is it is possible. Like, the, let's say the Ravens don't want to set precedent by doing a fully guaranteed deal. So Lamar Jackson well, is yeah. negotiating with the Colts, um, and they give him a fully guaranteed deal. The Ravens may go, you know what? We'll just match. And that's it. And then the contract's done, then they just match. Because they didn't set the precedent, but they just kept their guy. That is possible. If it's the exclusive... So anyway, two first-round picks for non-exclusive. It's the exclusive tag. It's whatever it is. It's a big price tag. He'll get probably a new deal, but they'll just trade him for whatever compensation the two teams agree to. Probably like Russ got, but more. Okay, got it. So if it's non-exclusive, the two just comes along the side. Like, yep, you just owe two. Right. If you're going to get them from the non-exclusive tag, which Lamar Jackson and Dig said this while you were giving your answer, you would think would be worth a lot more than that to the Baltimore Ravens. So if he puts the exclusive franchise tag, that's the sign and trade thing, right? That's the sign and trade that does happen. He would have to sign that. And then the trade would have to happen afterwards, and that would yes. be negotiated with the Ravens. So they're going to put the exclusive tag on him, yes. do we think, right? Bridge. Um, that is what I think, but I do not know that for sure because it really is it, – it's a really interesting gamble by the Ravens. And I, it's, I do not believe that's been decided. So I think exclusive tag, but I don't know that. Interesting. That's expensive price tag. Top five salaries of this year mm -hmm. at the position yep, of quarterback yeah. as opposed to top five of the salaries of the last five years without bonuses. Vastly different price. Good for Lamar Jackson getting paid regardless. Go ahead, AJ. Ian, do you ever think it was a real possibility that Andy Reid would retire after this and ride off into the sunset? Uh, I, I thought it was a, a somewhat of a possibility. Like going into the Super Bowl, you know, you get your kind of topics ready for the – Super Bowl Sunday, and you check on some things. That was one that I had to check on. Uh, I was told he's coming back, so don't worry about it. And then that was basically it. And, um, you know, said after the game he's coming back. And, and here's the thing, like, why wouldn't he come back? Like, 
he's he's got Mahomes. I don't know how long this thing is going to go, but it's showing no sign of stopping. So it's like it's, I think at some point he described it as like if someone hands you a Ferrari, like why would you not want to keep driving it? Like that's basically he's driving a Ferrari for into the foreseeable future. Well, if you have potholes on all, all over the place, yeah, you would you ha- actually it wouldn't mm-hmm. be worth getting in and right. getting out of it with how slow you have to drive. Right. So I think there would be people that would do that, especially in Indiana. I don't know how it is where you are. Puddles, can't even get on a motorcycle. No. Used to be my favorite hobby. Can't even get on there. They used to call me the bike father. You know what I mean? That's what they used to call me. <laughs> Let's talk about another father, the sod father. What the fuck happened with the grass, Ian? That was an embarrassment. That was an absolute embarrassment. Now there's conspiracies kicking up. The NFL did this on purpose because all the players wanted grass. So he said, be careful what you wish for and put the worst grass of all time in the biggest moment of the Super Bowl. What took place? It seemed to be way too watered. Was that something? And how will this be accounted for going forward by the NFL? Man, I tw- me and Pelissero talked to George Tombo before the game and tweeted about this to be his last Super Bowl. And, you know, what a respected man. And that tweet did not. That tweet did not age well. Happy. Classic. Hell of a run, Val. George Tomo. Love run. you. Anyway, Every once in a while, you lose your so, fastball. Yeah. Even in the grass game. Yeah. That happens. I mean, 94 years old. So here was the explanation I was really? giving. Really? Is that his actual age? That's what he told me, 94. Hang it up, bud. 94 year old. Why is that guy responsible for the field? Come on. What are we? The, I don't want to be an ageist. Father. I don't want to be an ageist or anything like that because I think we do sound like that when we're talking about replay reviews. Sure. Let's get some young eyes that are understand technology and can fast forward slow mo, zoom in quicker than people that maybe didn't grow up with He's this. 94. You got a 94 year old doing the grass? What, dude? Guy can't even drive. Yeah. He's move. in control of the grass? A bad idea. What is the deal? So here was what I was told happened to the grass. So, you know, obviously they play the first half. I think the first half was mostly fine, right? No. And then, well, it wasn't. The second half was worse. Let me say this. Second half was worse. So the, uh, I'm going to screw this up because I'm not a grass expert like George Toma. But basically the halftime show, which basically spanned the entire field, it compressed the grass. It heated it up. And it got it slick. So it basically increased the moisture in the grass because it didn't allow it to breathe because it pressed down on the grass. Classic. And then you you take the halftime show off the grass, and it's kind of a little bit wetter. And in the third quarter, everybody was sliding around. This is what we were talking about whenever we have to deal with the lighting people, the microphone people. You wouldn't understand this because you're not a grass person, but Rihanna does her performance. What do you want us to do? That's literally what they say to you. Yeah. There's been halftime performances every every single year. Mm-hmm. Is this not something we should have accounted for with the sod father and the sod? Hey, maybe this should be able to withstand a fucking halftime performance that everybody's tuning into. And we're marketing six times in the first half. That Rihanna came out with her hair yeah. in a silhouette with the Apple Music thing like five times during the first half. Isn't that something we should think ahead about, Ian? What the, this is the biggest show in the world. Ridiculous. I wish I could go back and ask George some of these things. We had such a lovely conversation. Um, I'm sure he's a delightful man. His grass is... I'll I'll tell you this. I I will tell you this. This has been at various times this year, for for not this reason, but for turf and injury reasons, grass has been actually a big topic. I'm going to go to the owner's meeting in March. The competition committee is going to meet. I would bet they're going to have a real conversation about playing field, surface, grass, like all of these things, because it's probably in focus more than... Oh, I can remember. Really. That's interesting. Sodfather's last game is going to be the one that's going to start the conversation on whether or not the other stadium should have grass or not. Hmm. Sodfather tips his cap and just goes into the abyss, never to be seen again. Yep. I don't like it, Ian. Double agent. We're going to get out of here. All right, Ian. Look out for the. You know anything about these aliens, right. dude? Uh. I read about that. I saw that we may have some, and now they say we don't have any, right? Is that the summation? Yeah, yeah press secretary, I believe, today laughed in the face of an yeah. alien theory. Yep. We've but all just yesterday, we heard from people that are smart saying it had no propulsion. It, it did things that we have no idea of how it did, defied physics. So who knows what's going on? I think there's some real shit going on in the real world right now, Ian. Yeah, I mean, I... Exactly. This told me that aliens don't exist. I'll say that. Who told you? No one has told me that aliens don't exist. Sure. Oh, awesome. well, there's two well, of you right there. Right now. You have two oh, heads. God. This might, they might have got me. They might have uh, got me on that one. Hey, we appreciate you. Great season, pal. Tomorrow, 
I think, you know. Take your medicine. Yeah. Hey, I, w- I trust my source. If my source has led me astray, I will take what is coming. That is part of this business. All Whatever right. Aaron says, I'll accept it. It is okay. Oh, I'm sure you uh, Yeah, that's how it goes. Ladies mm-hmm. and gentlemen. Mm-hmm. Also, what am I going to do? As a friend of the program, <laughs> absolute stallion of a year. We appreciate you so much, Ian Rapp. Yeah, Rapp. G. It's a good mindset for him. I'm excited for tomorrow's Aaron Rodgers Tuesday. Yep. I believe it'll be starting a little bit earlier. 1 p.m. Mm. Eastern time mm. will be tomorrow's Aaron Rodgers Tuesday. And then we will be going on a 10-day break. AJ, what are you going to do? Hang out with the fam? Make another we got game? a little, little soccer trip down to Florida for the whole fam going down there here this weekend. Yeah. What do you got, a Nike tournament? Uh, no, I don't know if it's Nike tournament. It's a big, it's weird because it's not even soccer season and bam, here we go. We got a tournament. Yeah. No, they've been in season though, down there. I've, ha- oh, I've yeah. set up We're a couple not, of those. Mm-hmm. Our expectation level is set. We know, Hey, these teams <laughs> yeah. like to come here and run through these Northern teams. Yeah. Hey, we're going to set up one of these big tournaments in the middle of winter. Uh, we'll see if those doofuses go from playing indoor to 11 <laughs> on 11 full field. We'll see how they handle it. And you're dead. Ga- I'm gassed out there. Oh, yeah. And also I've, I just met this guy that's on the team, just joined the team like two minutes ago, and then this team has been practicing for seven months. A little bit unfair. unfair. Yeah. A little bit unfair, but there's colleges uh, scouting there, so fucking play hard. Okay. (laughs) All right. You got it. Seems like we're getting bamboozled here, but I don't want to be the one to say it. The sod father, 94 years old. Yeah. Not trying to be ageist. Not trying to be ageist at all. Guy's too fucking old to be doing it. What was wrong with the other grass? What was wrong with the original grass? Well, the sod father wanted to take one fucking tractor or another Mm -hmm. run. Yeah. This is it. This is a victory lap. This is it. Give me this grass for two years. It's going to be my final grass. We'll grow it at a sod farm. We'll we'll spend $800,000 on this. Roger Goodell was like, hey, anything for you, sod Sod father. father. Thank you for all your hard work. (laughs) You're 94. Probably should have retired, I don't know, 20 years ago. At least. But (laughs) very proud of you for still doing this, and we appreciate your service. If you want to have the most pristine grass, in the history of Super Bowls in Phoenix, Arizona for your last time, here's 800 grand. Do what you got to do. And then that happens. I was reading. He he said he was blaming it on uh, halftime show rehearsal this week. It was taking a pounding. He should have put more sand in it. They should have had more outside more time, but the stadium added more seats. This dude's done every single Super Bowl. So he he knows that this is going to happen. Yeah, Yeah, what? AJ. You know, there's the – it didn't like. It wasn't like, "Hey, here's a surprise, guys. We have a big halftime show." Well, it's in his way, defense, it's for George he's 94. He may have dementia. Like someone may have mentioned that, and he just completely <laughs> forgot. Allegedly, remember, George. Every one of these Super Bowls that you've ever done has a very dramatic and huge halftime performance. I know. Yeah, get I off know, my I fucking know, ass! Uh, you know, I know. I'm, I'm sod father. I've fucking been there the whole time. <laughs> If he's saying that, though, maybe, you know, young, some young whippersnapper was trying to say, listen, old man, you had your time. I'm, I'm going to do this now. We don't need to listen to what you say. We're going to do it our way. We don't need to worry about the halftime show. And George is back there saying, look, it's going to mess it up. It's going to mess so it up. So why is this guy doing interviews if he ain't fucking doing yeah, nothing? He's taking on the shins. This so is what he gets for George. diving into the deep end of look at me, look at me. Well, going to get blamed for it. 94 years? I didn't even know you could still live that long. Yeah, me great either. run. <laughs> it's amazing. Congrats to him, dude. Hell People are life. living longer. People Thank live you, longer George. these days, man. Are they? Because I, I, I feel like these, yeah. these things are. Well, I mean, but, I'm saying, you know, like how 60 is the new 40. Like a 60-year-old now is like a 40-year-old was 20 years ago. Oh, that's because people are drinking like baby blood and stuff? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Not I guess. Doing something, something right? Bullshit. The, the mills, I think, are a big deal. Mining is dwindling. I think all the professions where you were diving into death quicker mm-hmm. have kind yeah. of fallen off. fallen off a little bit in our country, at least. I, I've heard there's some other yeah, mining. And people are getting checked out earlier, too. They're actually going and like taking care of things before they become big problems. In modern science, right, is better than it's ever been. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Nothing's as good as uh, sensory deprivation meditation. Amen. Holistic approach. So Ian said whether or not he's going in there Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday. Or none of those days, but yeah. <laughs> oh, what are you saying? Yeah, what are you saying? I'm, there's a good chance he's not going to be there Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday. We don't know. Do we know? No, we do. Yeah, I think we do. <laughs> yeah, we might. Yeah, I think we do. I texted Ian when I woke First text yesterday, Super Bowl Sunday, when I wake up and I turn on fucking NFL Network, and they're reporting that Aaron's going in dark. My first thought is, like, super selfish, but, like, oh, I guess we're not doing fucking Aaron Rodgers Tuesday. I was told. 
I was told mm. that we're doing Aaron Rodgers Tuesday. I'm like, this changes a lot of things. Let me tell the boys, boys, free to go on Tuesday regardless. We got nothing. We'll do a break. We don't have, like, a lot of things impacted by mm -hmm. what Ian was reporting. So I sent him a text. I go, Ian, this darkness thing, Monday, question mark? I, that's not what I heard. And he, he gives me a full breakdown. What he heard, how he heard, how long Aaron's going to be in there, when he's getting out, when the Packers Who are. Who is the source? Who is I, the, is it, and did Aaron make like, do the old Kardashian trick where you tell somebody – a, you know, Makes falsehood sense. and see if it leaks out. You tell a couple people and see how it leaks out. I love that. Tell a different day to each person. Mm -hmm. yeah. Which one gets out? Boom. Uh, I don't know who the source was exactly because he wouldn't tell me. He just kept saying, my source says, mm -hmm. and then gave a full breakdown of it all or whatever. And he said, I trust my source. My source has been around a long time. Mm. And I'm like, my source is the one going in there. <laughs> Does he not know what day he's going in? We got a bigger problem. You know what I mean? We got a bigger problem than just sensory deprivation if this guy's got no fucking no idea when he's going in. What type of world, what universe is this dude fucking in? Yeah, it would not have been good. I'm excited to hear what Aaron says. Maybe he delayed it just because Ian reported it. Certainly yeah. a chance. Yeah. You know what Ian said? He might have delayed yeah, yeah. it because mm -hmm. of my he report. Might have delayed mm -hmm. it. But he basically said, like, it was scheduled Monday to Thursday, is what Ian said. Yeah. That's why I was asking him more questions about the details. <sighs> you know what I mean? Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Aaron will be Aaron will be very understanding of that. I'm sure. I'm sure he'll be super pumped that somebody <clears throat> who Ian views as good enough to know gave information that was not accurate. Right. And I think not accurate. Now we don't know how the darkness retreat goes, and we might be doing an Aaron Rodgers Tuesday tomorrow from the darkness retreat. Sweet. But the phone is going to have some sort of light, so I'll, I'll be right. I'll be excited to see how True. we figure that whole thing out. Well, and I don't even think he could bring a phone into the darkness with him, could he? So there's a light switch in that room. There's no way. There's no way you can bring any electronics in there. That would defeat the purpose, right? I Definitely. But I watched this dude do it for – I watched a 20-minute video. He did a – now, granted, it was a lot of 10-second – Skips. Clips. Yeah, yeah. Let's, get him, let's move ahead here. But they filmed him the whole time? Yeah. Infrared things or whatever. There's a switch right on the wall. I mean, your bed is like right here if he's going to the same one. Bed is like right here, then there's a wall, and then there's a switch right on this side of the wall. Door, you go into like some rocks into a hillside down into the mm. side of it. It's not a cement temple or a teepee like we had seen in Thailand or whatever. You're going into a hillside. There's a, a bathtub in there. There's um, obviously a bathroom. And so you can't, you just pee all over the walls? Like, how do you see where to take a leak? You got time. You're feeling dude. It out. If you have to pee, you have time. You it's feel not it out, and then he's going to touch, you get touch all over the toilet mm -hmm. seat and everything. That'd be terrible. Yeah, it is interesting. It. I wonder how that, in the bath, the guy was struggling heavy. He stubbed his toe, which we do uh -oh. know. Oh, yep. Oh. That's bad news. Oh. We do know there's a chance, Aaron. Aaron, take your Crocs in there. Yeah. yeah. Let's yeah. protect those yeah. toesies. That's smart. Because we know what the COVID toe did whenever mm -hmm. you were out of COVID or whatever. But the bathtub was interesting. Them feeling it, turning it on, getting in it, getting out of it. Also, I would not love being in pitch black and being in any kind of water. No. Like up to your neck in cool. water. Eh, I don't know. Well, that's what a sensory deprivation tank well, is. Well, I understand. Done that. But there's that. no salt in there, right? It's just a regular bathtub. Not in that bathtub. bathtub. Yeah, in the, in the tank there's tons of salt and you float. You're right. No, you don't. I could. Well, I couldn't. <laughs> I'm going to set a scrub tank. Oh, no, I was in a fucking thing called the floatarium. Nice. It has as much salt ratio as yeah. the fucking you can get seat. a. You know what I had to do, actually? I had to put a little... They have a little neck pillow I had to put up to keep my face out. On the wall? Uh, no, it was in the water. You just put it right under your neck. It was like what con man travels with a little bit. Sure. Yeah. So I was in this floatatarium, and I was really told everybody could float. I was excited. It's one of the reasons why we went to this place, because mm -hmm. I am not able yeah. to float. I am a... Uh, I go right to the bottom like a Houdini poop. It's good because you, I mean, you have no body fat. That's why. No, I think it's big just, old, Big old disgusting fat people. I don't mean disgusting, but big old fat people. Just, they well, wrong. Size just, is What the hell is wrong disgusting. with you? Big, big floppy fat <laughs> fox. God. I didn't, mean any, I didn't mean any ill will toward <laughs> Big <laughs> old <laughs> disgusting <laughs> fat people. That's sure, how you test body you fat. Threw up You're a piece of body fat. Sure sound like it, but I, they had, okay. I put my head on the side. They had like a little pillow on like a... Yeah. Like a, the suction like cup ledge. to the wall, like the a wall ravine almost, like yeah. a like mm -hmm. a ledge, and yeah. literally I'm just laying there, and my wife pushes my back up, 
she's like, all right, I'm because she can float and whatever. So she pushes my back up and I'm floating for, I don't know, maybe two seconds. And then I'm like, oh, I'm in a pool again. My whole body just starts going. <laughs> and I'm right up against the wall with my head like this. And I'm Where, like, was it in a tank? Or like you were, you, you and Sam were in there together? I've never seen a tandem. Yeah, I was like these, um, what's that? It, it was, uh, it's a foreign thing. Like a bathhouse? Yeah, sick. Sweet. Yeah, and they were, weren't oh. they giving a tour to It was in people? Chicago, yeah. yeah. So this floatatarium is in the yeah. front of the room. And it, it hilariously priced to get in there. <laughs> I was very... Yeah. When my, my wife got it for a gift because it's supposed to be super relaxing, super nice. And then she started, we started looking into it and it was like, you can float, you can do this. There's this, you know, like private salt with like rejuvenation. I mean, it mm -hmm. was like a full thing. I'm like, all right, here we go. The floatatarium is like their bread and butter. So when you go down in there, you walk all the way down into the basement where all these are huge, massive warehouse. It is beautiful. The floatatarium's right in the front. The person that was taking this couple in that just got in there, they go, this is a floatatarium. Everything floats, has the same salt. And my body's going, burp, boom, up against the wall. And I'm like, oh, 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 like waking up everybody in the room. They like kind of hurried the people out of there, obviously. I was embarrassing to everybody. But what I'm saying is not everybody can float. I can't float. Mm -hmm. It's a fucking damn shame. I get into mm -hmm. some sort of boating accident, I'm dead. <laughs> Immediately. I am donezo. And it, uh, you, need to talk, I, you need to try a tank, the tank, the singular tank where you climb in, they close it, and it's complete pitch black. See, go that's back. Not to, a, that's not a. Go that's back to that last one. Though. Go back to the first one that you showed. Yeah, that's the floatatarium float, right there. You need to go that to a real float sweet. tank where it's actually sen sensory deprivation. I've heard about go those, but that's those. completely light, right? You just feel Com like you're complete dark. Yeah, yeah, you're like after a while, you're supposed to not even know like you're floating through space almost after a while. See, that freaks me out. Yeah, it freaks me. It does. That's why you do it. Hell yeah, come out stronger. I'd end up mm -hmm. drowning because I wouldn't know where I was at. Yeah, flip over. I wouldn't know if I was under or above water. I've done that a few times. I actually did that. Aaron was in Columbus, I don't know how many years ago, and we both did it in our separate rooms, separate tanks. It's all right place. if you're in the same, bro. Yeah, it's, yeah, fine. it's okay. It's no, fine. there's no, there's no sens bro, sensory okay. deprivation with somebody we else get in it, there dude. with you. Bro, it's not a deal. Well, you together. went to a spa. This isn't a spa. It's a float lab. Thing. Hey, those who float together, stay together. That's dude. right. Hey, Amen. Oh, yeah. I've never seen a two-person. never saw a two-person tank. I don't know. Oh, okay. All right. Well, I mean, listen, you do what you got to do, pal. That's all That's all in your world. Yeah. Splashing around, getting all that salt in your eyeballs. That'd be terrible. Dude, imagine being in a darkness <laughs> retreat. This is the same as this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Are my eyes open? Is this your eyes, end? If it's completely pitch black, do your eyes ever adjust and give you any kind of sense of but, where you're at? No, right. I think no. Really? I think that's like, it's a complete absence of light. It says light. not even a pinhole of light is allowed in. Yeah. I just yeah. sleep hmm. for like. 18, 19 hours. So the first well. day, I guess your first sleep, this guy, who, the video. Like the best ever. Best sleep you've ever had in your life, yeah. I guess. Like 16 hours you'll sleep for. But then that second sleep, the third sleep, not as easy Tough, to right. pass out. Mm -hmm. But I guess that's when you start like thanking and thinking and all that type of stuff. Mm. So it's a whole process. Like you have to stay in. I did not expect there to be a light switch in there. I thought they were going to force you to be in there right. and can be you, like, can you use this it? is what you signed up for. Yeah, that's how we end it. You end it with turn on the light. Oh, really? so Eric could go like six hours and flip the light on? Yeah. It'll be right there, I think. If he's going to the same place, literally right here. So it's like ringing the bell? I thought it was to like remember yeah. what it's like to turn the light on. So he did a fire, I think, for the, like with a match. And then he... Do you have to slowly like develop your eyes for light again? So when you come out... Yeah, probably. They said it was uh, sensory overload or whatever, mm -hmm. and everything looks beautiful, this guy said, obviously. And you're thankful for everything. Yeah, he just did time in the hole, pal. Yeah, exactly. Getting to breathe again would be great. That first how, often sleep, do they, how often do they slop food through the, the little thing for you, too? He had a couple sandwiches. Nice food. Hey, it was good-looking. Really? Ooh. Yeah, it was. Some baguettes? Good-looking, like, plastic container with a good-looking sandwich in there. Mm. You know, it wasn't like slop. I'd okay. be so pissed yeah. if I could tell that a, put, or a tomato fell out of my sandwich. It was just all the floor, and I had no idea. <laughs> step on it. Oh, shit. Yeah, he'd slide it. <laughs> he was starting to learn the room, though. He was like, mm. if I take four steps this way, there's a wall. And he like, one, two, three, four, wall. He was like, all right. So now he's like starting to learn. And I thought about Aaron in there, like what <laughs> Aaron's going to be trying to figure out and do. Mm -hmm. Guy did a lot of stretching and like push-ups and stuff like he was in hole in the hole and then he lay down in the bed then he was having like full thing you know do they give you a little like voice recorder or something you could kind of speak your thoughts into it it'd be cool to listen from first day to last day how it's all changed yeah here he is this is the butt this is the guy 
There's the food coming through. Isn't that okay. a light? Okay. They look like lights. Yeah. Right. Is, aren't those lights? Those uh, oh. Oh. Because oh, he would. Oh. I think it's infrared. There's the bathtub. Huh. That was a nice little area. Yeah, it's nice. Yeah. yeah. But I would know. I, I thought he was going into a hole. Yeah. yeah. Shit. Dog Wouldn't bed. it be weird knowing they're watching you, though? Well, this guy did it for content. The, oh. His people rigged the. There's the light, and on the other side of that wall is the light switch. Mm. Well, there you go. What, what if you accidentally just hit it? A potato? What is this? Oh, it's a sandwich, he'll say. I don't know. <sighs> he tries to eat it with a fork. Oh, it's just sandwiches. What well, if they mess with you? <laughs> they mess with you and they give you st like sandwich with poop in it or something. That'd be sweet. It'd be pretty funny. Yeah, that's, I think that's our natural first thought. Like when I was thinking about him going into this, I'm like, oh, there's going to be people in masks and get the fuck in there. You paid mm -hmm. for this. I thought there was going to be like cockroaches on the floor. I thought the food was going to be slop, like you're saying. Maybe somebody, we just assume somebody's going to fuck with us all the time, though. That's a, that's a sad thing and a cool thing. Yeah. I think it's sad yeah. and it's good, AJ. <laughs> you know? Yeah, I would assume like, I'm sure you do probably have moments in there where you're like, oh, man, it's like, are my buddies out there? Do they travel? They're messing with me and they're watching me and they're trying to throw snakes in the room or something stupid like that. I'm not claustrophobic, but I think if it was always I dark, am. eyes open, eyes closed, I would think that the. Yeah, I'd lose. Yeah. Like, am I having enough air? Is there enough air in here? That's a good question. Are the walls coming in? Like, I would just start. I think that's where I would start. That's all part of it, I guess. I mean, that's what they want. You got to work through, I guess. But yeah, not for me right now. Right now. No way. Damn Maybe it. in the future. Maybe we'll do it. Probably I'm not. 94 yeah. years old. You don't know what you're going to hear from your friend who you guys I never say never. You're right. Together. You don't know. You I don't never know. say never, but I don't know. For taking, yep, I don't know. Yeah, right now it's not in my future. It's not in my immediate future either, but you don't know when Plank God's going to call you. That's right. You're right. Called when spoken to. <laughs> what if we're down in a TP and the Amazon doing ayahuasca together like three years from now? <laughs> I can't wait for us to think back about this moment. You remember when we were like, Someday we'll do it. Here we are, like, yeah. just puking all over the place, <laughs> and then seeking that. I, I did that Ari guy that I watched. That guy, he never got to the, um, the tripping. Really? Oh. I don't think he ever tripped. I wonder if you're more aware. If they're like you're doing it for content, and there's cameras there, you kind of can't just like let yourself go. locked in. Yeah. yeah. He was doing a lot of. I was born in the dark. Which is yeah, guy. that's awesome. Classic. I thought about Aaron doing that a lot while he's laying in mm -hmm. there. Probably. He's a Batman guy. Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday, Ian Rappaport's reporting now. Yeah. After the Monday report. Mm-hmm. Excited to hear when he's going into darkness. <laughs> he's going to come in. Of course, people who think they know me. Mm-hmm. Blah, 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 Guns blah. Guns blazing. I guess that gets your clicks, though. What day is he going into darkness? Super Bowl Sunday, Ian Rappaport, breaking news. Mm -hmm. It's literally what I woke up to. He's going yeah, in the dark on shit. Monday. Let's go to the fence. Let's go to Bo in Wisconsin. Bo, what's going on, pal? What's up, Pat, boys, everyone behind the scenes? I uh, just want to wish you guys all a happy and healthy break after tomorrow. Thank you, Bo. We appreciate that. You too, pal. We hope you have an incredible couple of weeks. Uh, life, actually. Yeah. 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 Um, I know you guys are a big football show, but holy shit. Volkanovski got robbed on Saturday. Okay, Bo. I was watching... I don't know anything about the fight game I learned because the hometown guy yep. mm -hmm. in Perth, Australia, I thought clearly won the fight against Islam Mahakev. Mah and uh, <laughs> that, that fight started about 1 a.m. I was up, so I got to watch. I was still on Phoenix time, so it's only 11 p.m., so mm -hmm. I was in a good spot there watching it. Volkanovsky is electrifying. Yeah, This dude came in... I come from a land down under. And the nice. whole place Going crazy. is obviously singing it. That Perth crowd was phenomenal. They were, I, I didn't see all the other fights. I only saw the main event. Fucking loud. Like, actually loud through the TV. Had to turn it down because of how loud the crowd was. It was spectacular, the entire setup. Um, Islam took him down a few times. Mm -hmm. But while he was down... Islam had him like trying to get in a rear naked choke on his back and Volk was on top of him. So this guy's laying on mat trying to get his arm or up against cage, trying to get his arm around Volkanovsky's neck. Certainly has his legs wrapped around Volkanovsky. Okay. Certainly has him in a Cobra and Volkanovsky's just arm like hand battling with him and then punching him in the face. So bang, bang. 
bang, turning his head, obviously the whatever technique is to get out of the rear naked show, bang, punching him in the head, bang, punching him in the head. So, like, he punched him, like, I'd say 20 times probably every time he was under. And then he ended around like this while this dude was trying to get him in a – in a fucking rear naked choke. And then he would just jog back to his corner. Then he would hit Islam. Islam would get knocked down. While Islam's knocked down, he would trip up Volkanovski. Yeah, here it is. Look, look, he's beating the fuck out of this dude. Talking, look, boom. Talking shit Bang, too, talking yeah. shit. Volkanovski dropped him right at the end too, didn't he? Right yeah, the and then he had him in full uh, mount or whatever at the end and was just beating the yeah. fuck out of him at the end of the fifth round. It was like, I thought the guy who was less weight at home, who certainly had more moxie and every... Like, I thought he won the fight, and then Islam wins, and obviously I got all the MMA experts tell yeah. me I got no idea what I'm fucking yeah. talking about. Octagon control, dude. You know nothing about it. <laughs> oh, he dominated Volkanovski. A lot of fighters thought, thought Volkanovski won, though. A lot of fighters on the internet did. Oh, yeah. I saw Rogan was watching along alongside Brendan Shaw, Brian Callen, and... Rampage Jackson? Eddie, Eddie Bravo. Eddie Cristalli... Who? Eddie Bravo. Chris D'Elia and Eddie Bravo. Bravo. I think Chris D'Elia D'Elia, yeah, was definitely. potentially a part of that as well, the fight companion. Oh, uh, they were watching along, watching Rogan watch the fight. I saw a couple clips. Awesome. Because mm-hmm. obviously normally he's calling ringside it. calling mm-hmm. it all. They all thought that Volk won. So that made me feel good at least as I was getting buried by the MMA experts. But I don't know. That bald guy, 5'5", five, five, whatever he the is. Beast. He's a dog, dude. Absolute fucking dog, AJ. He's awesome. They're going to rematch, though. They both already said it, right? Yep. I hope so, dude. But, like, that guy trained a long time for that fight Mm -hmm. to become double champ. And on that night, I thought he clearly – now he has to go through the whole fucking process again. Stay healthy through it all. Like, I think he should be the double champ right now. Definitely not going to get to fight in front of his home crowd again. No. That place was electrifying. What a moment. That was supposed to be. Oh, Mm -hmm. yeah. But I guess, you know, I talked to uh, Knockout Radio – which is the yeah. oldest FCC affiliated uh, UFC show of all time? Wow! Was doing this radio show when UFC one happened. Obviously, two eighty four just took place, so that's a long time. And I said, like, the judges need to get figured out to this guy who is an actual judge. So, you know, he said, well, how do you judge it? Like, if a guy controls somebody on the ground, are they not beating that person up? Are they not holding them down? Even if it's not as entertaining as a fight or whatever, he got in that. I'm like, oh, this is how, like, people view it, though. Justify yeah. it. Like, yeah. Islam took down Volk, technically, I guess, took him down, like, three times, maybe every single round. That's a big deal in MMA. In MMA, it's like, well, he was able to get the guy off his feet. So it's like, yeah, but when he got down there, Volk was winning. You know what I mean? Volk was fucking beat. The guy threw 255 total strikes, okay? 255 of them. Landed 164 of them, Volkanovsky. He loses to the guy that throws 135 strikes, connects on 95 of them. It's just like 143 significant strikes thrown, hit 70 of them. Those I, takedowns right there. Four yeah, takedowns yeah, for Islam right. and zero for See, that's a that's lie, probably too. probably with the judges. Because I thought Volk got him down with a leg sweep up against the cage maybe mm-hmm. last round or second to last round. And then they were able to get back up. So Submission attempts, I mean, that's not right either. Zero there. Is tried like a thousand. He literally <laughs> was trying like a, a thousand. I mean, I think Volk had a headlock too. At one point, they both flipped over top of it. It was a great fight, though. Like, that was an electrifying fight that had wrestling involved in it. And it's like, that, that seemed like that's how wrestling fights can be good. You know, because normally yeah. those wrestling fights mm-hmm. are boring. boring tough yeah. to watch. Yeah. Tough to watch. Yeah. It, lived up to, it lived up to the hype. There was a lot of hype leading up to this one. Both these guys are stacked. Best card ever. Islam's a dog, too, obviously. Yeah, he's also oh, yeah. a beast. Go to Volkanovski's weight now. Well, Go down? Yeah. Because yeah. Connor, what? When Connor was double champ, he went up or down? Up, I believe. To, he's fought, man. Connor's fought multiple different weight clubs. Like, you see some point. of his weigh in photos, man, when he is super sucked out and super lean. It's that, crazy. I'm wondering if that was when he. That was, did he do that to I go get a title? He won at 145 and then went up to 155 yes. and won. Got it. Tough to do. Didn't, he, didn't yeah. he fight Nate Diaz at 170? Yes. Yep. Went all the way up for that. Yeah. Only a couple, like only a couple months before that one, right? Too. Yeah. Heads up. Because mm-hmm. it was supposed to be somebody else. I yep. think. I got respect for old Connor, man. Oh yeah. Anybody that can become a billionaire through sport, I got respect. Mm-hmm. He hasn't done necessarily everything right out of the cage. No. No. Him and Chandler, though. That'll be a good fight. It'll be fun. Mm-hmm. See you at the top. Mm-hmm. That's right. They told me Chandler's a heel. No. That's what I was told. Did you know that? Well, I guess, really? Against always or just against Connor? They just said 
he's a heel. Maybe Natural. in the octagon, but he's incredibly likable in interviews. Let's go to Dylan in Pennsylvania on the Five Hour Energy Fan Line. What's going on, Dylan? Hey, Pat. How are you guys doing? Hey, not too shabby. How are you doing, pal? What do you want to talk about? Uh, I just wanted to get your opinion. So when these aliens, when they come back down to Earth, uh, are they going to be able to play in the NFL? Is the NFL going to allow them to do that? And if so, they're going to have to be free agents, so they're going to be eligible for the draft. What's the process going to be for the aliens when they get here? Great. There's going to be an extraterrestrial draft, I assume, just like there's a supplemental draft. Yep. Once new players are founded and uh, able, I think they'll have to make do. Will there be a rule on how many aliens you can have on each team? Like the CFL. And uh, yeah. And UEFA, or mm -hmm. uh, over there in England, you're only allowed a certain amount of Americans on each team. Will that be something that'll do? Because I'll tell you what, with some of the drawings I've seen, probably pretty good football players. Yeah. Probably can get to a quarterback, Yeah, if I had to guess. Mm -hmm. Quickly, they AJ. Can, they can bend. They can bend and dip around that corner. You're right. Yeah, didn't yeah. you say Blue 32 looked like he could catch a seven round like nobody else? Blue 32 couldn't walk, which was a little bit alarming. Oh. Copperfield <laughs> had to carry Blue 32. Yeah, mm -hmm. running back. But remember, Blue 32, we didn't know was going to be there either, so maybe didn't have his Wow, legs. and Bears at first overall. Can't wait to have the first alien. That's the normal NFL draft. Yeah, not wait, the alien not draft. the extraterrestrial draft. You're also draft. in the first in the first alien draft. You're not going to know who's good and who's not. I think we'll be able to judge. There'll be a couple can't miss prospects. Yeah, alien combo. Oh, beep, beep, alien boop, combo. Oh, you think yeah. they're just going to line them up? So what was the deal there with that press secretary? Just what laughing in our faces. I told you. You know how many people? Oh, it's coming from the White House. We can believe it. Don't be a mark. <laughs> Just wait. As time goes on in these next couple of weeks, we'll see more. Let's go to Greg in Idaho. What's going on, Greg? Hey, uh, I just noticed that, uh, you know, the Broncos, the uh, prior to the AFC West uh, game with the Chargers, they replaced their field, and they had the new side quickly trucked in from Arizona. It was late on a Wednesday and painted on a Friday, and everyone slipped around just like they did last night huh. in the Super Bowl. You think it's the, the same thing that sod? I found interesting, though, and I don't know if they bought it from the sod father or not, but they say they did it at a cost of four hundred thousand dollars. So I'm just kind of curious why it would have been eight hundred for the Super Bowl. But a lot anyway, of eyes. Broncos still crown just like that. A lot of eyes, Greg. Are you in the grass business, or are you just uh, observant football fan? No, I'm just an observant football fan, and I, you know, I was had to watch the last game, even though the Broncos sucked so bad this year, uh, oh. against because I'm a Bronco fan. <laughs> But to watch them all skate around on, on what they said was a brand new field just seemed stupid to me. And then watching it last night was like watching it all over again. All right, Greg, we appreciate that. We should look into that. Yeah. We should look into what Greg is recalling. And obviously he recalls it because he's a massive Broncos fan. It happened with the Broncos. What's going on with this Arizona saw it? Hmm. Yeah, it feels as though the NFL has drawn their line in the sand. Grass fields are a thing of the past. We can't do it. It's Matrix, Helix, Turf time. We were out there. Sorry. There's nobody. There's no grass anywhere. Why the fuck we have? Especially having, not slippy grass. It's all turf. Yeah. Yeah. Let's go weather for it. How about a, I chipped a little bit out of the backyard. We had grass. That was actually some was pretty grass nice grass. grass. Good grass. Yeah. It's like Soldier Field grass. It was. And I don't know what type of setup oh, yeah. they got at the Airbnb when it comes to, uh, what are those called? Sprinklers. Fertilizer. Yep. Mm -hmm. yep. Sprinklers. Oh. The thing that, the thing that spray water on the grass. Yeah. Yeah. Sprinklers. You got it. What are they doing? I have no idea. It's they're over. trying. They're, they're trying too over. much. They're getting too like they're they're too involved. Let it happen. That like use what they have there and make it as best as it possibly can. How come all these soccer teams have the ability to have seven different surfaces for every stadium, yeah. and their grass is pristine every single time? You don't think the soccer players need perfect grass? The ball is literally rolling on it. The pitch is a part of the game. Mm -hmm. yeah, they have a good pipeline of sod fathers. They don't have one old fuck. We don't know him, but we do know that his worst game was his last game. Yes. That's right. Well, actually, we don't know what other games he's been a part of in the last decade when he turned 84, now on to 94. Yeah, we yeah. know it was his biggest game. Let's go to Ramon or Ramen in Kansas. What's going on? How's it going? How's everybody doing? Hey, great. What's your name? Ramon, Raymond, Ramen? Oh, Ramon. Yeah, Ramon. Ramon's a great name. Mm -hmm. Very nice to hear from you, Ramon. What do you want to talk about? Uh, I just want to talk about just I'm a big Raiders fan. I'm over here from Kansas. I live about an hour away from Kansas City. And the, yesterday, that was a tough watch. Definitely a tough watch. Why is that? But uh, oh, Say that one again? Why was it a tough watch? Uh, the, just the, the slipping around, the 
just watching everybody celebrate kind of sucks. And the Chiefs but, uh, went in their second yeah. Super Bowl oh, in, in your face. five years, going to five straight AFC <laughs> Championship games, losing right. another Super Bowl in right. there, and another dynasty yep. taking place in your division. Oh, my God. Are you the Jets? Oh, oh my no. God. Are you the Dolphins? Oh, you oh my God, Ramon. Are you the Bills? Oh. Oh. Because that's what the last <laughs> dynasty did to an entire division. Is that what you're talking about, or are you talking about the grass still? No, I just I'm I'm a big Raiders fan, so that kind of just sucked. Yeah. But, um, oh, okay. I used to do appreciate it. what you're doing in the WWE. I love that. You, I, I'm a big WWE fan. Hell I'm yeah, Ramon. Um, are you excited to watch Sammy? Yeah, I am pumped for Sammy at Elimination Chamber up there in Montreal, his hometown. I believe he's getting a shot at the titles. Wow. wow. Hell yeah. yeah. Long overdue. Good against luck, Sammy. Against Roman Reigns. Yeah, that's going to be an easy one. What do you think happens in that, AJ? I don't know. Roman's pretty good, isn't he? <laughs> Greatest of all time. Yeah. From what I can tell, the guy is legit. It's going to be a tough match. Not sure he has a lot of weaknesses. No. He's going to dump Anything him. goes. We have not found any. Chamber, though. Yeah, he's going to, let me just say, if you're Canadian, don't be mad. The Canadian flag gets desecrated during what? that match. It's in Montreal. Bingo. They're going to be chanting that. in French. Yeah. yeah. We, we saw me. We saw me. We saw me. Heyman's going to take a dump on that flag. That would be. I will be excited to hear what Paul Heyman does in the lead up to this. Yeah. What a fucking legend that guy is. <laughs> Last phone call of the day on the Five Energy phone line before we get out of here before Aaron Rodgers Tuesday tomorrow. Remember, Aaron Rodgers will be joining us. We don't know if it's from the darkness, if we're going by Ian Rapport's report. Or if he's delayed it because of Ian Rapport's report. Aaron Rodgers Tuesday tomorrow, 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Then after that, we'll be gone. Ten days. We're going to miss everybody. I'm going to miss you guys. I'm miss you miss too, you, man. I'm, Careful. I'm going to miss you, AJ. I'm going to miss you guys. We just spent a whole week together in the same house. It was awesome. It was. Super Bowl week's always a good time. Oh, Drew Brees, I am so sorry. Oh, jeez. I did not see him. Meant nothing. No I did not see obviously, him. Obviously, you didn't see him. Clearly, did not see him. Yeah. And I had some people talking about me like overlooking Drew or being rude. It was like, yo, I was going to do some show in Arizona. Mm -hmm. And like, that is what Radio Row is for me on Friday. Literally just people saying, Pat, come this way. Pat, come this way. Pat, come this way. It's cool to be in that type of situation and people want me on their show. But like, hey, Pat is literally said to me, 10,000 times while I'm doing that. Yep. I think I did like 20 shows yep. uh, oh, live yeah. from Radio Row after we did it on Friday. And what you saw the video there was me, I think maybe 13, 14 in. And Drew, I did not hear him at all. And I have respect for Drew Brees. I'm happy to see he's alive after the lightning strike yeah. right. that happened. I feel so bad after watching that video back. Like, feel, shoot terrible. So I want Drew Brees to know, I'm sorry, I did not see you. I was just trying to hit all the programs that were being so kind to me, trying to get me on there. And uh, I did some university shows. I did some international podcasts. I did some live radio shows. And there was a lot of, hey, Pat, hey, Pat, hey, Pat, in that particular time frame, because everybody's asking me to come do their thing. I, I, that's my life. I don't understand why it's happening, but that's reality of the situation there. That particular thing that happened there, I was called because we used one of the hosts uh, tweets or two of the host tweets this season. So they said, Hey, you remember Venerables? I believe his name. And I'm like, Yeah, yeah, yeah. You guys used his tweet on the show. He's live right now. Would you like to go chat with him? I'm like, Cool. I'd love to go say thanks or whatever. So that moment's happening live. And then Drew was standing right outside of that. So I feel terrible about it, AJ. I feel fucking terrible about it. Yeah. I mean, it, it sucks that it happened, but you clearly, and Drew would have to know, like, you didn't see him. It's not like you're going to see him and just turn and walk away. But, yeah, there's, there's a huge group of people around you. It would be great. And here they're t explaining to me who he is and what the tweets were. Okay. Yeah, I used it. He's live. PHN. And he's kind of, I would say maybe like, uh, what is that, like 7 o'clock-ish, 8 o'clock-ish? Oh, sure. Oh. So uncomfortable. Then they just asked me, he's live right now, we go join him. I did not see Drew. That was uncomfortable. It's awkward to watch. I'm very, very disappointed in the whole thing. But I wish I would have seen Drew. Guy loves yeah. pickleball. Yeah, he does. Mm -hmm. We were just in the middle of our yeah. pickleball run. Yeah. Crazy. We'd love to chat with him about it. Can't wait to hopefully have him on a program. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So yeah. we can kind of make up for it. Because that would have been one of the cleanest daps of all time. Know how good Drew Brees oh, is. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yep. Oh. You know what I mean, AJ? Oh, it would been awesome. But, yeah. Next time. Him we'll at that get him angle next year. with the hat on, too. He was wearing a Hawaiian shirt, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he was. Like yeah. That blocked your vision. Where I will tell you, a lot of people were wearing things that like Drew was wearing. Yes. He, he, he looked like a perfectly. very basic yeah. Radio Row host. Mm -hmm. 
which he might have been doing. We don't know what he was doing there. True. Was he promoting pickleball? He may have been. I hope so. He turned Purdue around and got a team, out right? of there after. He, yeah, he has a team. Kevin Durant has a team. Tom Brady has a team. What? Gary V has a team. Mm -hmm. what? Oh, Gary V. Cubic Cubes, sir. We didn't ask him about it. That was a miss by us. That was a miss. Brett Mike was on the show, though. That was oh. a hit. Hell yeah. yeah. Does Brett have a pickleball team? Maybe. I bet you he'd be good at He's it. He's a so mean good. forehand. His mm. backhand can't touch ties, but you get up in the front where he's been. Oh, baby. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he threw me a mean seed uh, with a football backstage. Yeah, he plays catch in the bus. Yeah. In the plane. All, all the time. Yeah. Wherever he can. Yeah. Is he the nicest guy of all time, all the time? All the time. I think he is. He Are does sure seem that way. He's playing catch man. on the plane. What? Small plane, small plane. Flying on a small plane. Had a long time. Bus for sure. Mm -hmm. The Rock of Love bus. Mm -hmm. Yep. I'm following Brad Michaels. I'm in his life now. Oh, yeah. Yeah. This Nothing party better. girl tour is going to be awesome. Yeah. I can't wait till we go across the country. Oh, I know. We are in French Lick the other night. Yep. Yeah. You crushed it. <laughs> He's the man. All right. We covered everything. Let's get the fuck out of here. We're back tomorrow, and then we're out of here. Big thanks to Ian Rapport for joining us. Glad. I believe tomorrow we have Orlando Brown on, offense lineman for the Chiefs, and... Oh, wait. Okay. Pretty. Would also be huge. Pretty huge, I guess. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Message has been delivered, not responded to. The fuck? Come on, guy. It was delivered 43 Come seconds on. ago. Yeah. Oh, okay. Still. How you not get right back? What's he doing? I don't know. Who Let's is see it? here who it is. I'm yeah. not going to say. Obama? Shouldn't it be Barack Barack Obama? Obama? Mike, it's not. Don't sleep on Barry O. We aren't right. sleeping on Barry O, but I, President Obama is not going to be on tomorrow. Uh -huh. Potential huge surprise guest tomorrow, and obviously Aaron Rodgers tomorrow. And then we're off for a while. Thank you all so, so much. We announced a bunch of winners earlier today. Tomorrow we'll do a bunch of giveaways to go ahead and sail off, just try to give away as much money as we possibly can before we take 10 days off because I'm going to be itching to give away money those 10 days. Got to get it out now. You know, kind of abuse something so that you don't have to do it for the next 10 sure, days. Sure. Just like whenever I was in the uh, substance of abuse program and the lockout happened and there was no testing, I said, I'm going to go hard for however many days this lockout is so that whenever I get back into it, I don't want to do anything. Mm -hmm. 100 and some days, that lockout went a lot longer than my liver imagined, but I went hard. Yep. And then whenever afterwards, I didn't want to touch anything for two, three years. Smart. It was actually a pretty good little play. Going to do that tomorrow with giveaways. Hell yeah. Hell Move. yeah. Any final thoughts, Tone Diggs? Final thoughts are that we are in the middle of a dynasty. Hell yeah. And it felt a lot like watching those Patriots teams uh, during their dynasty where you didn't want them to win, but somehow they did, and you still don't know how they did the next day. Amen. Ref helps them a little bit too. Mm -hmm. So maybe there's a little bit of an asterisk yeah. so that other fan bases that Just don't have the dynasty can say, yeah, but. Hate's going to build. There's going to be a lot of that over the next 10 years for the sure. Chiefs. Yep. We are in the middle of a dynasty. Yeah. It's great to be here. Ty, any final thoughts here on this overreaction Monday? Yeah, it's just unfortunate that beautiful moment of Sirianni crying during the Ugh. national anthem will be overshadowed and forgotten forever because when I saw that, I said, oh, my God, the Eagles are going to win 50 to nothing. Yeah. Hey, Coach, how come you were crying there during the national anthem? It is the most beautiful moment of my lifetime. You have Chris Stapleton on the axe just absolutely slaying the national anthem. I visualize the entire game. I visualize Jalen scoring multiple touchdowns on the ground. I visualize our defense playing very well. What I didn't visualize, unfortunately, was that old sack of bones fucking turning the field into a water park so that we wouldn't be able to win the football game. That's why I was crying. Was it your bit. tears? A couple of my tears did oh. fall onto the turf, and you saw Jalen slip around a little bit on the first couple of drives. That's why he had to change his cleats. I said, sorry, Jalen, I was crying a little bit during Chris Stapleton's beautiful national anthem. <laughs> when I see Sirianni do this, I fucking fall in love with this guy. Yeah. yeah. Think about the moment and what he's thinking about there. His dad was a football coach, obviously. Mm -hmm. This is the pinnacle. Holy shit, we're yeah. here. Hey, what are your hobbies, Coach Sirianni? Uh, football. I don't really have any high hobbies outside of football. How about your, when you were a kid? Any hobbies? No, pretty much just football. I do love Pizza Hut stuffed crust pizza, too. But outside of those two things, I don't have very many things I love. So him experiencing that like genuine moment 
and us getting to see it, I thought was so cool. Yeah, it's awesome. And to your point, I thought there's no shot the Eagles lose this game. Nope. Then they have that ten point lead at halftime. It's like these dudes are for real. Mm-hmm. And then somehow that Magic Mahomes comes on, and they do their thing in the second half, and Sirianni will be back. He will. Oh, yeah. Sirianni will be back. Connor, big takeaway for the day here, pal? Uh, For the day, probably just Chiefs fans. You know, guess what? They might talk about the hold. They might talk about the grass. You guys get a parade. You get a banner. You get a ring. And no one's going to remember about those little bit plays because – You're talking about the deflated balls? Exactly. You're talking about the – Deflated balls, Foam gate. Deflated mm-hmm. balls gate. AFC yep. Championship, tape gate, exactly. All these things that happen, no one gives a fuck. Guess what? When you walk into Arrowhead and you look up and you see not one or two, but now three banners, nothing's going to take that down. And nothing's going to take these memories away. And be happy you're in it. Appreciate it. Because guess what? Not every dynasty lasts forever. And you just won a Super Bowl. And you're probably going to see at least two or three more. You might see two or three more wins. But you're in it right now, so enjoy it. Hell yeah. From a Patriots fan. Bingo. His best days are certainly behind him Absolutely. when it comes to his NFL fandom. Yep. Absolutely. But and the greatest part about that is my best days beats everyone else's best days. That's right. But you're going to be having our days for the next 40, the rest of your life. 40 50 years. Yeah. But that's fine because I got mine. I, I took a lot of pictures. I did. Mm-hmm. I'd be a greedy son of a bitch if I wanted more. So anything after this is bonus. It's very nice of you. Thank you, Connor. Anytime. AJ, final thoughts on this overreaction Monday, February 13th? I mean, they've all, all the boys have hit it pretty well, but I think we're, we're witnessing the Chiefs' beginning of what the next 10 to 12 years may be a decade of dominance. Buffalo Beals, Cincinnati Bengals. Sean Payton's new Broncos. Indianapolis Colts. Yeah, Chargers. <laughs> A lot of teams. Pittsburgh Steelers with Kenny Pickett. Yeah, maybe mm-hmm. we'll see. And what? Fucking boys might come out and fucking dominate. We don't know. Who? <laughs> oh. Fucking Steelers. That's what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Your they tone might. sounded like you were condescending to me, but you were just yeah. you were exclamation pointing what I was saying. No, I'm saying fucking Steelers are going to fucking compete. Yeah, that's what I'm saying as well. Okay. A lot of teams in the AFC. Mm-hmm. If they were able to continue to do it during this era of teams in the AFC. <laughs> More impressive, I think, than what the Patriots did. I, I don't think so. But yeah, let's do hot take time. Okay. <laughs> with what the, how the AFC is structured currently with talent and quarterback level, Whew. if they're able to accomplish – now, granted, 20 years is a long fucking time. Mm-hmm. If they're able to win five Super Bowls, which is absurd to think about, but not that far away maybe. If they're able to do that, I think you've got to look at it as more impressive run than what the Patriots were able to do. Yeah, maybe. Uh, you know, the most you know, winningest decade in the history of the NFL belongs to the Colts. Now nah, we lost it. Oh, to who? I have no idea. Okay, well, at the time it was. Patriots are the reason they only won one Super Bowl because they got three. You know yeah, what but I'm it saying? was Peyton, Tom Brady. Now it might be Joe, Josh. Sure. Justin. Kenny. Yeah, yeah. Lamar. Mm-hmm. Tua. What? What's up? Why Tua cancel on us? What's that all about? I thought we were nice what to Tua. Something, I mean, did he even know he canceled or his people canceled because they scheduled something else for him? I don't know. He was still there, though, whenever we, when I left yeah. at the end of the day. You remember really? we saw him in the thing, and I'm like, cancel? I thought he was getting out of here. He did a show apart. right before we were on. Yeah. Didn't want to, had yeah. to. He was confirmed locked in for quite some time before the Super Bowl and then the hmm. night before. Canceled? Mm-hmm. What's that all about? Don't I thought we were nice to Tua, weren't yeah. we? I thought so, too. Was it after yeah. Dr. Alan Sills? When was Dr. Alan Sills on? Friday or Thursday? He was on Thursday. Thursday. Two was supposed to be on Friday, right? Yes. I wonder. Maybe it's because we had Stephen A. on Thursday, too, and who, uh, two of was Hawk and Subway subs. True. Subway back. They both knew that, though. Absolutely. Yeah. And also, he didn't have to go anywhere because he was on carry right before, so he was actually in the. What did I say? I said suck it to Subway after I got, we got their trivia question right. You did. Is that why? Was it the Subway? Well, they should have had harder trivia questions. Bingo. They also sent me the answer to all the trivia questions beforehand, so we were never going to get the trivia question wrong. I did not know that. <laughs> yeah. You did not tell us that. No, I didn't because I was just going to make sure that we, you know, 
but we were not getting any of those trivia questions wrong. Okay, thank you, Ty. <laughs> Look at that. Cooked books rigged. Absolutely. Rigged, oh, yeah. even trivia is rigged. Mm -hmm. I, and I didn't even, I was a large participant in it. Mm -hmm. I had no idea it was rigged for us to get the answer right. But, but you nailed good. it. You nailed it. You knew it right away. Whole team did. <laughs> yep. Whole team did. <laughs> Tua canceling on us is something, though. I, what that, that makes me wonder. Not a lot of people cancel on us. Now, granted, we had the Detroit Lions situation where they were so locked in, mm -hmm. and they told us to scram nerds pretty much. And I felt offended by it, but shouldn't have been. Asshole to even think I should take up time MCDC. Biggest week of the Lions. I got over that. To a canceling on us last minute, though. I don't know what that one's all about. Yeah, and it, I mean, who knows? Give him the benefit of the doubt. I doubt he was the one who actually did it, but who knows? To be honest, too, he wasn't the best during the season as well. What's that? He wasn't the best during the season. We put a request in a couple times. Whoa. Yeah, the Dolphins lady does not like us. No. Yeah. We had McDaniel on the one time. Yeah. That and then fun. she it's almost like in her head she was like, Yep, never going back oh, to this place mm -hmm. ever again. Was it the um didn't they That's why I was excited that two was booked. I'm they, like, yo, we're never gonna get a Dolphins player right. on. Which is something that happens with numerous teams. Cardinals. Yep. yep. Rams. 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 Rams mm -hmm. Dolphins. Mm -hmm. I would say the Chiefs not as yeah, do those guys, they don't do a whole lot of media, do they? Well, the PR people definitely don't. Every time yeah. they always say Andy says no media that week. That's every time. Yeah, so they, it might, who knows if that's their thing. There's teams that will never get, the Lions will never get somebody from their team on again. And it's like understood and cool, understandable. Mm -hmm. That's the way you handle it. The Dolphins one, though, was interesting because that, I thought we did good with McDaniel. Were they butthurt because uh, they put out that wobbly pass from Tua that was like 10 yards short of Tyreek Hill? And we said, hey, social media. Social media team. Okay, you can't be oh, so people that are nice. terrible at their jobs Correct. are offended. Correct. Ah, oh, that probably is it. Could be. Got it. Got it. Okay, makes sense. And you know, it yeah. all worked out, you know. Out goes two, in comes Gary V, and he brings the fucking set down. You're right. If Tua doesn't cancel, we can't get Gary V. Bingo. Boom. Hell yeah. Gary B was there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The patient panda was there. That's right. Iguana. The intuitive iguana stopped by. Mm -hmm. The polarizing polar bear. Mm -hmm. Yep. The lumptious Viking. Yeah. Doll. The forever phoenix. Doll. AJ, which one's your favorite? The convicted coyote, I believe. No, I thought you murder said. Murder a guy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He did. Yeah. <laughs> did he really? Yeah, murder he got yeah. convicted. I think yeah. it was a murder suicide. Kind kudu. Oh, oh kudu. yeah. Kind kudu. Sick. Sick. Yeah. He's having that NFT Super Bowl here in Indy. Yeah. yeah. They've already sold like 150 Remember we popped tickets. it up and he just <laughs> said it right away. He just pointed at one of them and was like, oh, it's the iguana. <laughs> yeah, the intuitive iguana. Hey, guy. Good to see you, pal. Mitt's going. <laughs> Absolutely, Mitt's going. Are we allowed to mic up anybody at that thing? I want to ask Gary. Gary would be okay. Yeah, for it? content. He'll be okay. For content. Yeah. He'll yeah. understand. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We have not gotten any NFTs. We don't understand them well enough. But I do know a lot of NFTs. Gary's NFT is still going. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So v you tell me how that goes, AJ. I mean, whatever Gary V touches turns to gold, doesn't it? I said, what are you, Uber, yeah, Facebook? Yeah, all of yeah, them. All Let of, me finish. All, yeah. all Please. <laughs> 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 when he was uh, backstage, he was asked about the Baby Duke. You really wanted a Baby Duke. Did he? Pac-Man took one. I think we lost a bunch. Yeah. I don't know where they all went. Should have let him take one. Yeah. He would have been slinging that thing oh in the receipts God. video. Yeah. Spinning that thing well, so seats, goddamn far. Throws the ball through somebody's face that mm -hmm. said the Jets stink. Yep. Like a dartboard. Mm -hmm. And it blows up and explodes. Out comes Gary B, who obviously <laughs> starts tinkling on top of the yep. person's photo. Yep. Boom. Boom. The intuitive iguana goes, What's going on over there? And then poof. The shit yeah. right on the, Yep. <laughs> we should have let him just take the baby Duke. Should have. Signed him one. <laughs> you and him hugged. He did. Me and. Me and you know, we never really had a beef to begin with. He said, with. I hear everything. He did. And he, he pointed at Ty. He did. I hear everything. He did. But after that <laughs> dap up, yeah, me and Gary, good forever. Hell yeah. He tried to break my hand for sure, but that may have been the kind of. Dr. Alan Sills gave me the. A nice firm one. The alpha. Sturdy. Yeah. Who's going to let go? <laughs> Not me. Me neither. It's uncomfortably long and strong. <laughs> I'm talking about my dick and his <laughs> shit. And then let off. It's big in the doctor community. It was huge. It was a real mm -hmm. boom. Locked it in. Good web to web. Kind of almost dragged me down a little. I think I was stepping on my ear thing. Oh, yeah. At sure. the same time. Oh. So it was almost like I was bowing at him. It was a, quite a scene if you go back and watch it. A little embarrassing, AJ. He's a stud. I like Dr. Allen Stills. Yeah, he crushed. TJ Watt was wide. Wide. Yeah. 
big old fucking great. house. But Andrew Whitworth came through. What were those things called? Little people? Oh, yeah, the Mattel Little Toys uh, football team set. No, I think they were called Little People. Little People Super oh, Bowls. You can yeah. say that. Well, yeah. you can say that, I think. Because <laughs> they're the... I think you're supposed to say Little People. Yeah. But I don't know about... But don't actual, actual little people probably offended by that when they see little Mattel toys. I don't know. That one was something that, as we were talking, I was wondering about the whole time. Whitworth looked amazing. <laughs> he did. Yes, he did. Yeah. Shout out to him. Shout out Whit. Who else stopped by? Fucking Carrot Top was... <sighs> A1. A plus. Is he doing part of the Super Bowl next year? He should be. He leads yeah, off he with some prop, ah, you know, mm-hmm. yeah. and then throws to somebody else. Yep. A little rat, the rat know. trick. Or I don't mice. know if Angel's going to give him the time of day. Chris? Yeah. Chris Angel is definitely part of that halftime trick next Chicago. year. Huh? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I figured he was going to do, like, the rock opening, but for next year's. <laughs> yeah, he's dangling from the yeah. middle of the stadium yep. again. He's spinning 400 miles an hour in a straight jacket. Still has the pounds. With a microphone on, like, pop star microphone. Yep. Welcome to... And then it spins so fast one way it stops. And then this match the other way. (laughs) You know what I mean? And then he gets out of straight jacket, lands on his head. Yep. Everybody's like, oh, he's dead. And he's like, no, I'm Chris Angel. I can't die. Mm -hmm. And then that's when Carrot Top picks him back up. And then that other Vegas uh, Penn and Teller come out. Yep. Yep. Wayne Newton comes out. Same. That'd be sick. So yeah. there's good hey, there's a good chance next year's Super Bowl halftime is oh, like, yeah. bang. Yeah. All the luminaries. That's all allegedly, by the way. We don't we do not have inside no. information no. on the script. No. no. Alright, let's get the hell out of here. Arm sore, not good. Too much pickleball. <laughs> mm-hmm. Got a couple. Listen it up. Oh yeah. Oh, oh. right there. Boom. Yeah, there you go. Ten people, five hundred dollars <laughs> to retweet this video, say something nice to somebody, and put your cash check in the same reply so we can pay you officially on cash app. I feel like that's pretty. I feel good about what just happened. Pretty good. Yeah. From where I was at the first one oh, to yeah. the last one, mm-hmm. a lot of growth there. Let's continue to do that every day. Let's get better. Let's yeah. say nice, nice things to each other. Let's make people smile because there might be aliens taking over the whole fucking world. Mm-hmm. We're mm-hmm. all in this thing together, and if not now, then when? Be a friend. Tell a friend. Goodbye.